Good morning everyone and welcome to Ipswich Cart Raceway for the latest round of the club championships and a very historic moment not only for the Ipswich Cart Club but for karting in Australia the first time that you are seeing a live stream of a club racing event right around Australia and right around the world as we get things underway and your pole sitter has already eliminated himself from our opening race of the day that being Jacob Brook Lenahan got a little a little bit too uh, happy on the right foot there and around he's gone so we've got another one that's gone through there as well so going through the order it was meant to be Jacob Brook Lenahan who would line up on the pole in the 72 however he is off to the side of the race circuit trying to get himself back on Lucas Losco was due to start on the outside front row in the number 92 CRG second row of the grid the 73 of Jet Mathers and then it's Fred Waddy in the number three alongside row number three is the 11 of Oliver Flack then Ricardo Johnson in the number 50. Row 4 will see Luca Rasso line up in the 98 and Scarlett Mitrovic in the number 25. Luke Robinson out of 9 to 57 and Oscar Ray the number 2 out of 10. Row number 6 is Martin Shea and Hudson Kelly in the 4. Row number 7 is 66 of Oscar Kozak. Then we have Jonathan Mathers in the 33. Hugo Jones in the 75, 79. Then we have our three 4 SS competitors, that being Chicago Bailey the 99, Oakland Hocking the 27 and Frankie Majorak in the number 76. A great field here of Cadet 9s and 4 SSs. You are going to be with us right throughout the day here on the Ipswich Cart Club YouTube channel and you'll be able to jump on and catch all the action on demand. Very tricky conditions here this morning. There was plenty of rain overnight so the paddock area is pretty well soaked at this point in time and we've had some light rain here this morning. The sun's out so who'd want to be a crew chief at this point in time as they work their way around the opening race of the day we've had qualifying for our feature classes those being the tag restricted categories we have got a big field here getting set for their opening heat race eight laps on the board for this one it's going to take us a little while for everyone to get comfortable out there on the circuit certainly with these conditions there's Lanahan he's actually taken up his position back on the pole so see if we're ready for a start this time we've got a couple that are due to catch up we'll just see how lenient our officials are this morning they're lenient at all. Great to have your company. Great to have the team bringing you these pictures. Hopefully the sunshine is coming down right now. We'll continue on as we get set for a start here. The lights are out and we are underway. Race number one of the day. Cadet 9 and 4SS Cadet go charging down to turn number one. And through there they go. And it's Losco from the outside who gets the best of it. One's gone around in the middle. There's been a few that have gone around toward the back as they start working their way through. Oh, I think that's Brooke Lanahan. It's gone again. Oh, one was very, very uh, fortunate just to miss him there as they worked their way through the right hand up and into the middle part of the race circuit. The all black colours this weekend for Lucas Losco out of the Bundaberg area. Taking a wide line, it's very much a wet setup kind of line that he took through there, working his way up to the Autobahn corner for the first time. And he's got right behind him the number 66. Machine, that's been a great start. That's Oscar Kozak. He came from well and truly down the order, down in 13th position. And he's now in second spot in that energy course machine. Losco taking the wide line there as they come around to complete their first lap. It's all happening here. A little bit spread out at the moment as we get lap number one in the books. They cross the line. What a start that is from Kozak. To get himself up to second position straight off the back of Johnston into third then it's Robinson Shea Flack Kelly Ray then Hugo Jones and Jonathan Mathers rounding out your top 10 at this point in time there is Losco working his way through those top two getting themselves comfortable so come down to the video pro corner on lap number two here Oscar Kozak gee you'd have to be happy with that start he avoided all of the carnage that was going on and got himself into second position right off the back. Out of the Autobahn corner they go. They've got a fair margin then over Ricardo Johnson in third, who's got Luke Robinson there for company as they follow each other down the back straight away. So a nice battle that has formed up for third position there as they start to work their way back toward the front stretch. 
There's our top two. We'll keep an eye on what's going on for third and fourth here. Side by side across the start finish straight. They go. Johnson holding on from Robinson down through turn number two here. They're still side by side as they work their way through there. So this battle continuing for third, fourth, and then Martin Shea in fifth position trying to close in onto the back of them as well. We're on lap number three at the moment here. To kick things off, Ipswich Kart Club Racing Championships. Great way to get your April underway. Here with us at Ipswich Car Club, of course, the Queensland Championships to be held here a little bit later on this year. And there's the lead that Lost Goes got. The battle's still going for third position here. Coming back around to the start, finish straight. There's your leader. He's your second place man. Then we'll pick up our third place driver, the number 50 of Ricardo Johnson. Who's got, in fact, Robinson's got through on Johnson. So there they are coming through turn number two. Robinson moving into third position in front of Johnson. As Losco continues to open up his lead out the front. We'll try and drop back to that third position battle. Martin Shea still sitting there in fifth position. It's a race within a race out there this weekend. In fact, Frankie Majerek with the P plates on, one of his first ever races with us. He's in 10th spot on the track, but the first of the four SS competitors. And now, your man in third position, Luke Robinson. He is well and truly on the charge. He's on the back of Oscar Kozak as they come across the line, nose to tail, and head down towards turn number one. Kozak under pressure for second position in the number 66 machine. Roscoe's got a bit of lap traffic that he's come on here. He's got to get past these two. And does so. Going through the left-hander at Video Pro. Our fourth camera out on circuit is Kozak with Robinson right on his tail. They've got their own lap traffic to contend with as they hit the back straight away now. Oh, Robinson gets up the inside. One spins at the hairpin there. So three laps to go for your race leader as they come across the start finish line. And the 57 machine of Robinson with a red and white helmet goes down through turn number one. Losco gets past another lapper, of course. The difficult weather conditions and driving, not driving standards, I should say, but the experience between these drivers. Losco, he was the most improved driver in Cadet 9 at the SP Tools Australian Car Championship last year and really come on. He's had support from the Velocity Car Shop out of Sydney despite being a Queenslander and just continues to develop his racing career as he goes down the backstretch. The lap's starting to wind out. Robinson in second spot. He's got a couple of lappers to contend with through the top turn. There he is. Down the back stretch he goes. And that's really opened it up here. And we've got another one involved. That could be Shea that's now up the inside. We're going to go two, three wide nearly down through the hairpin as they try and clear in that part of the race circuit. Back around to the start. Finish straight they come. We'll pick up the order for you. Losco has well and truly cleared out here. Across the line goes the 50 then of Johnson. He gets back to second. Robinson into third, Shea up to fourth, Kozak's up to fifth now. There's that little group, they've cleared the lap traffic and they're into it. Now as they come out of the Global Hub corner, now through the middle part of the race circuit, out of the flip flop, a great camera angle right there. Picking up all of the action, there's Johnson in the blue helmet, the number 50 machine. Out of RHQ they come, down towards, this is one of the key passing areas on this Ipswich Car Club circuit. Through the left hander they go. 
really give us a different perspective, this camera angle that we've got following all the action here. Up toward the Autobahn corner, the hard right corner there. You want to get a good run there, Robinson. He's trying to get into the slipstream of the 50 of... of Johnson as Losco in the 92 is on his final circulation now as he crosses the line. He's only got just over a kilometre left to go as they work their way back around to the front straight away. It's Johnson in second spot with Robinson right behind him. And they never opened a gap up on Kozak and Shea who are having their own battle going on through there. Doesn't look like that... Robinson's close enough at this stage to get with Ricardo Johnson. Bosco works his way up toward the top turn for the final time. He's well and truly on the way home in that all black number 92. He is on the back straight away now. Coming down toward the hairpin is your race leader, soon to be race winner in Lucas Losco. He comes through the final set of turns. There he is. He'll be greeted by the checkered flag as he comes out of the on-site rental group's corner and out of the Capri straight away. He takes the win. Good stuff there for Lucas Losco. Gets his day well and truly underway in the best possible fashion. Ricardo Johnson, he comes home in second spot in the 50. Then it's Luke Robinson, followed by Oscar Kozak, then Shay Hudson Kelly, home in Sixth spot in the number four. Then it's Oliver Flack. A little bit further down the order than Oliver would like to be. You get the feeling. And then just waiting on the next group to come on through. Jonathan Mathers will be the next one to the line. In fact, we've got one of the four SSs further down the order. Coming to the start finishing line. That is Frankie Majorek who actually takes out that category here today. Mathers goes through. And then it was Jones, so the auto. Lucas Losco takes the win by 11 seconds, that's huge. Then Ricardo Johnson, Luke Robinson, Oscar Kozak, Martin Shea, Hudson Kelly, Oliver Flack, Jonathan Mathers and Hugo Jones, Madrek, Mitrovic, Bailey and Hocking. We're going to take a break here at Ipswich. We've got a few to clean up. We'll be back with our next race very soon.
Welcome back to Ipswich as KA3 Junior Heavy hits the circuit for their opening heat race of the day. Zach Hilder in the number 25 will start on the pole position. Buster Bailey in the 6 on the outside front row. Next row of the grid is Jackson Fishley in the 47 and Marcus Leo in the number 15. Row number 3 is the 91 of Cooper Fish and Charlotte Page fresh back from Europe last weekend. We'll touch on that fairly shortly in the 22. Next row of the grid is a 7 of Max Southgate and Zoe Vuchard in the number 16 out of 8. Row number 5 is Tyler Tilmouth in the number 97 and Oliver Aquacenter in the number 25, 29. The 23 of Will Carmichael starts out of 11 with Tyson McGill the number 36 out of 12. Row number 7 is a 66 of Hudson Lippiat and Cooper Friend in the 8. Kyden McMinn in the 88 starts from 15. Hamish Cow in the 75 from 16 and Zane Chapman the number 21 off the back of the bus here Charlotte Page right there in the number 22 is here she was over at the Champions of the Future Academy last weekend we do have graphics on the screen they are incorrect so bear with us on that front Charlotte did a tremendous job over there conditions actually not too dissimilar to what we're facing here today in fact so it was an amazing event over there that champions of the future academy give them another one before we get them underway of course charlotte was one of three ipswich kart club members over there the hanock brothers racing as well charlotte did a tremendous job it's two different race events over there at the academy on a saturday qualifying didn't go her way however she passed more carts than any other driver through the course of that it was quite spectacular to see her name rise up through the order on the totem pole and how many carts that she was at, actually able to get by it was incredible results for the females over there as well luna felicia who is a spanish driver won both of the Okay, in senior categories, Ella Hakkinen, who is the daughter of Mika Hakkinen, won Sunday in the senior set for a start now. We are, no, we're not quite underway just yet. Oh, we are actually. No, that was late. That was late. Down into turn number one. Go. Oh, one spins out in front of the field and nearly takes out everyone. However, they all do a tremendous job to get around and they all continue on as they now work their way in through turn number three. Oh, across the grass. We're going to see plenty of this. We've got a whole grass party going on there. Page goes to the outside in the pink helmet, but your race leader there is a 47 officially out of the Tyler Greenby Racing Stable down towards the Video Pro corner for the first time. It's very tricky conditions out there. Testing everybody, in fact, not just our drivers but certainly our camera crew down there as well as our second place driver goes see you later exit stage left and that race is over and done with as they go down the back straight away pass on for second position through there now working their way back out through the final sector of turns through the Howard's concreting area and onto the front straight away comes your race leader the 47 of Jackson Fishley then it's Tyson McGill Cooper Fish then Charlotte Page Will Carmichael up to fifth then Lippia friend Southgate then it was Aquasana Cowan Bailey Chapman Hilda Leo and Tilmouth and McKinn as they work their way through now Tyson McGill out on the national stage this year. He's starting to show a bit of pace. Watch for Charlotte Page in fourth spot. She is all over the back of Cooper Fish in third spot. Of course, won a scholarship to go over and do that academy program. One of nine drivers, three females, nine female drivers, I should say. Three in each category to get the scholarship program funding as part of the F1 Academy, the all-female Formula One backed series as they come to the line. Officially reels off another one, six to go. They come streaming on through. Fish under the pump now. In through turn number one, the Empire Kart Sport number 22 of Charlotte Page right on the hammer. Oh no, McGill's gone. Fish, I should say, he's gone. McGill's still out there. I should, it's Fish has dropped right down the order. The seven's gone as well further back. But up front, 
Fishley still holds on here. He's got that slight gap over McGill, who's the fastest driver on circuit in the early stages here. There you can see the top five. The gap's pretty well equal distance between them as they hit the back straight away here on lap number three. Through the right hander goes Fishley. And around to the front stretch to complete lap number three now. He's got a 1.7 second advantage over Tyson McGill, who's got a 1.8 second second lead over Charlotte Page in third. Lippia, he's a further 1.5 back. Then it's two seconds back to Hudson, uh, to Cooper Friend, I should say. Hilda has recovered and got himself up to six spot. That's a good recovery after spinning, heading into turn number one off the pole position. Up toward Autobahn Corner goes your race leader. There's the gaps as you can see them. McGill's starting to close the gap, I get the feeling, on this lap. But Fishley looking very comfortable. He's been racing for a few years now, has Jackson Fishley. Across the start finish line they come. It's down to 0.8 of a second, so I thought that McGill had closed in. I didn't realise that he'd actually cut the lead by half on that particular lap. So the last time through it was a 54.971 for Jackson Fishley. A 54.242 for Tyson McGill. And he is on the charge. The race is on for the lead as they come out of RHQ. Down towards Video Pro. And that McGill machine, the energy is looking very, very good. Plenty of energy on board from Tyson McGill as they go up to Autobahn Corner. We're working lap number five now, down the back straight away they go. And officially going, think about it. I don't think that McGill has to think about it. He is already plotting where he is going to make his manoeuvre because he has got so much more pace on board at this stage as they come to the line. They'll cross through to complete lap number five. All these drivers utilising the IAMI KA100 motor. Very much a dry racetrack out there. You just don't want to get offline, certainly. You could just see there, oh, officially, exactly what I just said. There's a little puddle that Fishley picked up, a really wet part of the race circuit. He got a little bit crossed up, and that's really opened it up now for McGill, who should line him up for a move here at Video Pro. He has a look. He goes up the inside. Can he make it stick? Indeed, he can. They pull out of there and go up towards the Autobahn corner now. We're past the halfway mark. Down the back stretch they go. Fishley has a look over his shoulder to see where the third place driver in Charlotte Page is and he has got pretty well the length of the back straight away in his pocket so he doesn't need to worry about that. Just think about a little bit later on when he's got to start down towards the back of the grid for heat number two. Of course in these classes without qualifying they all are a random draw for heat number one then we reverse the order for heat number two. So if you start up the front it becomes a little more difficult come the second heat as officially got over in the grass there just uh, decided to do a bit of victor work but mcgill starting to open the gap out in front now he looks very comfortable and driving a fine race as is charlotte page through there in the pink and black at number 22 she's got an advantage then over lippiat then it's friend hilda bailey leo aquasanta and southgate rounding out your top 10 as they go through McGill comes around. He will complete lap number seven this time. Across the line he goes. And McGill's opened a gap already to 1.4 seconds. Oh, he makes a little mistake there, so that's going to open it up. Fishley. He's got team boss Tyler Greenby down on the fence, keeping a close eye on the timing screen to see what his charge is doing. Tyler racing just a couple of weeks ago over in Europe, took a group of the TGR drivers over there with him to the Rock Cup in Europe. Pretty much a last minute deal for Tyler himself. But extremely well over there, finishing up on the podium. As now they come around, checkered flag is at the ready 
for your race leader and now your race winner Tyson McGill second place will go to Jackson Fishley now coming through for third position is Charlotte Page next one through will be Hudson Lippiat he comes through in position number four waiting on now for our fifth place driver in Cooper Friend in the eight he comes across in P5 then it's Zach Hild up waiting on now for Buster Bailey Marcus Leo Oliver Aquasanta and the final one of our finishers will be Maxwell Southgate. So that was KA3 Junior Heavy. We'll take a slight break here from Ipswich. We've got a couple that spun off to the side of the circuit. We'll be back very shortly. Trust you're enjoying all the action here from Ipswich Kart Raceway.
Welcome back to Ipswich for our April Club Day. You're watching Cadet 12 hit the circuit here for their opening heat race, bringing you the all the action through the Ipswich Kart Club website. Sam McColl, the number 21, will start in this huge 39 kart field on the outside front row with the 40 of Oliver Jones. It and Hobdate has started the three in the 18 with Cruz Smith, the number seven out of four. Round number three is the 30 of Riley Curtis and Xander Watts in the 57. Alice Deflack, the 10 out of seven. Vincent Turhorse, the 66 out of eight. Round number five, no, five is the 43 of Monty Jamison and Shelby Smith in the 23. Round number six is Carter Grother, the number 42, making the step up this year into 12s and Lennox Carson in the 83. Oliver Tresillian in the 77. So from 13th, what? With Mikko Wadi in the two out of 14. Row number eight. This is a juicy one. The 16 of Cooper Folly and Nicholas Kinder in the 54. Row number nine. The 20 of Leighton Thorley and Campbell Dawson, the 73. The Cadet Nine Australian champion starting out a 90 spot from Townsville. It's a 17 of Brock Nolan. Alongside is the number 11 of Aston Mills. Row number 11 to 97 of Carter Lampard and Michael Quintiliani in the number 27. Row number 12 is Alice Leggett the 64 and Cruz Petroni the number 25. Then it is Knox Black in the 90 and Andrew Thompson in the number 96. Row number 14 is Blake Haig and Jack Masico in the number 26. Row number 15 is Paige Flack and April Flack in the 14 and 28 respectively. Then it is Jack Glass in the 35, Archer Bailey, Geordie Butler, then Jeremy Broadbent, Tyler Hoare, Chelsea Flack, then Olivia Walton behind Olivia in this huge field will be Jax Fuller in the number 44. So always big fields of these drivers all the, between the ages of 9 and 12. They put on some terrific racing. We've got eight laps on the board. Watch out down at turn number one. What are we going to see here? We are set for a start. Away. Down to turn one they charge. And look at this. This is where you hold your breath. As they go down through turn number one, can they all get through there cleanly? Oh, it's a good start. It's a very good start, in fact. Look at this pack in the middle there. Down through the flip-flop. Oh, one's gone around. Oh, collects another one. And we've got a couple that have all been involved in that. We've got only got, it would seem like we've eliminated two from the event. And they start working their way through. They've got hands in the air for some reason. We've got a red flag. So drama out on the circuit. We've got a red flag out there. Just trying to work out what has triggered the red flag. Can't see anyone in a great deal of distress from this vantage point, but I may be incorrect in that assumption. So... Ordinarily, in this situation, we'd probably go to full course caution. Just trying to pick up where our issue is as we bring them around. We'll bring them back around to the pit area where they will come to a stop. Now, officials will get them back underway. So we'll take a short break here. We'll work out what's going on and come back to you at Ipswich. So not the way we wanted to get our Cadet 12s underway here this morning. So red flag, we'll take a break. We'll be back very shortly.
<clears throat> Welcome back to Ipswich as 4SS Junior hits the track for their opening hit race of the day. The Cadet 12s will come back out straight after this. The good news is that our driver that was in a little bit of distress, he actually walked off the circuit under his own steam and was seen to by our medics and certainly appeared from my vantage point to uh, be in a fairly healthy condition. It was only a fairly minor incident but of course safety is the of paramount importance for all of our officials here throughout the course of the day. They're trained uh, specifically in those situations through Karting Australia's operations and that's exactly what we get to see as tag as the 4SS Junior is out here at tag restricted titles weekend eight laps on the board Hamish Douglas in the 25 a line up on the pole Dane Norris the number 62 the outside front row Buster Bailey double duty for him this weekend line up in three in the six with Jackson Turner in the 88 from four Jackson Duong one of the front runners in this category the number 13 he will line up in fifth spot Harrison Lippiat the 51 from six and JD Chapman the number 27 will line up in seventh position so if you haven't seen 4SS racing before, it's a four-stroke category. You'll notice through our atmosphere mics the difference in sound. Of course, a four-stroke versus a two-stroke engine. All well, these drivers utilising the Torini engine, an Australian-designed engine. And getting set for a start. Eight on the board, we're away. Down to turn one, they charge. And a pretty even start. The 4SS racing has been really good this year so far. So work their way out of turn number three. Oh, and that's become a very familiar line to take it straight across the grass at the flip-flop throughout the racing so far. Nothing like getting a bit of mud in the airbox and all those sort of things. Down to the video pro corner they go for the first time. But Jackson Turner it might be that's got through to the race lead there as they head up to Autobahn on lap number one. Fantastic shot as they get into the hairpin. Great to see the sun come out, driving out from the Gold Coast this morning. Very light rain in various places on the way to Ipswich. There's plenty of rain here overnight. Very damp conditions if you're off onto the grass. You are going to cop some mud as they cross the line. It's Turner in the 88, leading from Norris in the 62. Then it's Bailey, followed by Duong. Then it's Douglas, Chapman and Lippiat. It's got a good lead here already. Has Jackson Turner. Oh, another one goes off on the grass there. Down towards the video pro corner. We've got a move coming. Well, it wasn't coming, but it was imminent. I believe that would be Jackson Duong in the blue and white, number 13. He looks up the inside. He's always a front runner here. Watch him down the back straightaway. He tries to get as much as he possibly can out of this cart. Oh, no, he's not bouncing. You'll quite often see him bouncing in the seat just to try and get momentum as Norris goes back up the inside into second. And through all of that, he's been able to get right on the back of Jackson Turner here as they work their way out of the final turn. We've got a race in three going on right now. Down the front straightaway they come. The number six machine of Bailey, it is in fact in second spot. Norris has dropped back to fourth position. Oh, your race leader runs wide. Turner runs wide there, and that's opened it up for Buster Bailey, the green and white number six to go to the lead. Turner's dropped back to third. DeWong up to second now. Then it's Norris in fourth position. Speaking of Norris's, Brody Norris is one of our Ipswich Kart Club members. He's over at Frontier Quarter this weekend for the opening round of the WSK Open Series. One of four Australians competing in that event. Be able to see the live stream of all those races tomorrow night. They're covering the Sunday races as now Duong looks up the inside. Oh, Duong sideways. He gets it sideways. Bailey straight back up the inside. They're side by side and Bailey holds onto it. And then Turner's right back in the mix as well. A lap ago, he was in the race lead. Who's the number 88? He goes high as DeWong. He's so improved over the last 12 months as a racer as Jackson DeWong took his first race meeting here in the 4SX category, 4SS category just under 12 months ago. And what a win that was as well. I'll tell you what, if you're Jackson Turner, he is up on the wheel aboard that number 88 Techno machine. The fluorescent orange and white outfit with a white helmet. 
It's getting back to the point that I was making about the WSK Open. That'll be live stream will be carried on speedcafe.com tomorrow night. Usually around 7.30 mark-ish that that goes live. Down the back straight away they go. Bailey leading the way up the inside. Turner comes back at it and he retakes the lead. Oh, Duong deep under brakes. He goes to second, runs a bit wide. And Bailey on the outside here through Howard's Concreting. They're still side by side. This Forest, their style of racing, allows them the ability to be able to do that. Across the start, finish straight they go. Yeah, battle for fourth and fifth. Norris and Lippiat, they're at it. They're starting to close in. Lippiat's just done the quickest lap of the race there on the fourth lap. <coughs> oh, big slideways. He had a tank slapper. Did the 88 of Turner. He's on a yo-yo out there. He's gone from first, back to third, back to first. Now he's voluntarily dropped back to third. Got a little bit of that water offline, and he just got sideways on and dropped back. This is a really entertaining for us, this race here. Up towards the Autobahn corner. What can DeWong do here? Buster Bailey. Is it his day today in the number six? We're still a long way from our finals a bit later on, of course. Down through the hairpin. DeWong just sitting in there. He knows how to drive these things. He's a bit of an expert now in the 4SS racing. He goes to the lead, but look who's back. Up on the wheel, the bright orange, number 88 of Turner. It's actually a BRM chassis, I should say, not Techno. Very similar colours. And now up the inside goes Turner to second on Bailey DeWong. He's got the lead. Oh, he goes wide through the flip-flop. And ba Bailey goes around the outside. Oh, he goes straight ahead. What else can happen in this race? My goodness. Up towards the video pro con. He's got to actually try and redress that. You can see him there, Buster Bailey in the six. He will slot himself back into position once Jackson DeWong gets past him. And now he can get back into third spot. But he's still got a lot of work to do as I come across the line. I have two laps to go. Behind them, Norris and Lippiat still got their little battle going on. No, they haven't. In fact, Lippiat's gone up the inside of Norris at the hairpin into fourth position. Back around to the start, finish straight. DeWong crosses the line. Two to go. Not over and done with yet. You get the feeling. Now look at Turner. He's been involved in everything. There's Jackson Turner here. It's Jackson on Jackson. Now through the right-hander at Electro Industries Corner they go. Out of RHQ and down towards the Video Pro Corner. DeWong having a slide peek over his shoulder. There's Lippiat. He's got too much of a gap between himself and Buster Bailey at this junction. However... We turn right on the tail of DeWong. Anything is possible here. Down towards the hairpin they go. Turner up the inside of DeWong. Can he hold on to it? DeWong's on the outside. Turner holds on to it. Up the inside through the on-site rental group corner. And onto the front stretch. Last lap board on display now. Down to turn number one. DeWong up the inside. Oh, door gets shut in his face. And Bailey. He's starting to close in. Look at DeWong, he hasn't given up here. Look at the attitude on the cart, but watch out for Bailey. He goes up the inside, he steals second position there. DeWong was concerned about Turner and his own racing line, but that opened up for Buster Bailey to say, thank you very much, I'm going second, and if I play my cards right, I might be able to throw a challenge at the end of the back straight away. It's a momentum category, this four-stroke racing. Up towards the Autobahn turn, DeWong's got a fairly, sorry, Turner's got a fairly comfortable margin at the moment. Bailey was very slow through there. Look at Lippiat here. Can he learn up for a move at the hairpin? Around the outside goes DeWong. That's not going to work for him. Meantime, out through the final turn comes your race leader. And what a well-earned race win that is for Turner. Who's going to get second? DeWong bounces and it's going to be Bailey. He punches the air. A double fist pump there for Buster Bailey to come home in second. DeWong home in third spot. Then Lippiat followed by Norris. Then it was Douglas and J.D. Chapman. Well, that was entertaining. And Jackson Turner, after being in first, dropping back to third and coming back again, ends up taking the win by two and a half seconds over Buster Bailey and Jackson Duong only narrowly. We've got Cadet 12 about to come back out for their first heat. Until that point, we're going to take an incredibly short break.
short break. You're watching your Club Day here from Ipswich Car Club. So back here at Ipswich, as we've got Cadet 12 hitting the circuit. This is going to pick up where we left off. Of course, we had the red flag on the opening lap, so it'll be a full race restart here. For our 39 cart field, Sam McCall to start on the pole position. There'll be a few drivers, I think, that'll be quite happy to have that uh, full race restart. Got the field order there on the left-hand side of your screen or we'll keep that up to date for you throughout the course of the race great innovation here from Ipswich Kart Club it's been something they've been working on for a long time to try and get a live stream up and going no other club in Australia does a live stream from their club day events very much a work in progress in a lot of ways and uh, so far, so good. So McCole will start on the pole of the 21. Oliver Jones, the outside front row. Ayrton Hobday will start from three with Cruz Smith in a seven out of four. Riley Curtis out of five in the 30. Xander Watts in the 57. Alice Flack the 10. Turhorst in the 66. And Monty Jamison. Shelby Smith, Carter Grother, Carson, Tresillian, Waddy, Folly, Kinder, Thorley, Dawson. And Nolan out of 19. Aston Mills out of 20. Some very fast drivers at the national level coming from midway through this pack you always get a wonderful roll up of this category we've got drivers out of Gladstone in Carter Grother we've got Townsville in Brocky Nolan and just about everywhere in between here it's a field that you'd potentially see at a national level with many of these drivers we've got one that's uh he was trying to catch up, but he's just managed to make an absolute meal of it. That's for the second time. So they'll, if they can get him underway, or they might just pull him out of the way. He can't get it started here. I'll be pulling him out of the way because the rest of the field wants to get started. So he's done and dusted for this one. So he's out of commission. So hopefully we're good for a start now. So come around, getting set for a start here. Looking for the lights out on the gantry. Lights are out and we're away. Down to turn number one. Let's see if they can make it a bit better this time. Look at that charge through turn two. Three of them have gone around at the back as they work their way through on lap number one now. It's the number seven who's got the best of it, Chris Smith, out of P4. He goes to the race lead. But look at the pack right behind him. He already drops back to second placing. Through the RHQ corner they go. Now down to the Video Pro corner. Everyone just trying to work out how much grip they've got available to them in these Maxis tyres. And one goes off in a fairly dramatic fashion in the mid-pack. Gets a bit of air time and he is out of the way. And, jeez... Old mate that he come together with is not happy in any way, shape or form. Down the back stretch they go to the 57 machine there of Xander Watts. He started in sixth spot. He leads the way now. He comes around to complete his opening circulation of this one. Opening here to Cadet 12 here at Ipswich for April, the number 10 machine. Alistair Flack, it didn't take him long to move his way through from seventh position. He's always strong here is Alistair, one of the 552,000 Flax that race with us right around Australia. Not only in kart racing, but of course in the older Flax, you see them in GT, in Porsche, in Bathurst, 12 hours, 6 hours and everything else. To Video Pro they go now. 
Watson to 57 leading the way. Flack right there with him. Then Curtis, the number 30 machine. He started fifth. He is in the third spot and trying to make his way forward as they work their way onto the back stretch. Flack leads away now in the number 10. Curtis has got a good run going on here. Tony Cart with him. The number 30 machine as they come back to the start, finish straight to complete lap number two. All these drivers utilising the Vortex Mini Rock 60cc motor, an air cooled engine manufactured out of Italy from the team at OTK, brought into Australia by Patrizzi Course. So it's Flack, Watts, Curtis. Carter Grove has got himself up to fourth position at Chupa Chup. Get us a blue Chupa Chup on the helmet this weekend for Carter. He's had a couple of days by the beach about an hour and a half north of where we are right now. Just saw some photos of them, of where they were, and uh, looked quite delightful, it must be said. Onto the back straightaway, Curtis up on the wheel here, right behind Xander Watts as they go down to the hip, and he's going to try and effect a pass up the inside. Can he get by cleanly? Yes, he can. So back to the start straight they come. Behind Grother is Vince Turhorse to 66. Then it's Smith, followed by Jamison Mills. Folly into ninth spot, then Lampard running at your 10. Then it's Trezillian, Kinder. Then Rocky Nolan. Haig up to 14th spot, so Haig on the move. Flack does another fastest lap. He's got the advantage of having nobody in front of him as there's a mistake there from Xander Watts. He's lost ground to Riley Curtis who's trying to close in the gaps half a second between Flack and Curtis at this stage as they work their way through the video pro corner. You can see the gap there as now Grother comes through in the French built soddy cart. He has got a slight gap then back to two horse with Jamison trying to close in. Jamison getting through on Smith the last lap by. Alistair Flack trying to open up the gap here. However, Riley Curtis is having absolutely none of that as they work their way back around to the start finish straight. Well, no surprise there that Curtis has set the new quickest lap of the race at 55. 313. It was three tenths of a second quicker than Flack on that one, and he's closed the gap to two tenths of a second. But you don't need me to tell you that because you can see it on the screen right now. They are right there as they work their way through. That mistake from Xander Watts has really cost him because he is right off the back. There's Watts coming through in third spot through that left hander at Video Pro. Now, what can Curtis do here? Curtis on the tail of your race leader. Oh, gee, you got a little bit sideways there. Did Alistair Flack. He backed it in. And that's given Curtis a bit more momentum. So let's have a look down to turn number one to see if he's close enough. He's not at this stage through the Castle Iron Kink. Now down through the right hander they go. Out of Global Jet. But Curtis is right there with him. He will be close enough to try and set him up for a pass as they come around to the next hard breaking point on this race circuit, but Flax actually responded through here. But Curtis, have a look at him. Gets a nice run through there. He's got to set up nicely at this point in time as Riley Curtis through the top turn. Now let's see if he can get in the slipstream here. Down the back stretch they go. You can see Flack maximizing his aerodynamic effect by getting right down over the steering wheel. The door not opening at all there from Alistair Flack as they come to the line with two laps left remaining. Further back, Grothers drop back to fifth behind Monty Jamison, who's been on a bit of a tear, it must be said. So has Curtis got anything for Flack as they come through? It's a tenth of a second between the two of them. It's absolutely nothing at this point in time. Through the video pro corner, has Curtis got anything for Flack? You've got to be good to get through on Alistair Flack around here. There's that battle that was for fourth coming through the left-hander with Jamison having got through on at Grother, as you could see there. Down the back straightaway, Curtis in the slipstream. What's he like under brakes here, Curtis? He's the one that goes a little bit wide this time. 
They'll get the last lap board when they come through. So Curtis is running out of time here. He's got to try and build it up for a run. Across the line they come now. Down through. Turn number one. They go. Xander Watts still holding down the third position. Could have been a race in three until that slight mistake. Two flax driving a brilliant race here. He has well and truly got this one in his safe keeping. He's picked up the pace a little bit now that we are on the last lap as Alistair Flack. Through the video pro corner. Curtis, he's got to get a good run into the right-hander at Autobahn. What's he like out of there and onto the back stretch? Flack's going to go defensive here, down through the hairpin. Will Curtis do a Hail Mary under brakes? He goes high. He'll aim for the switchback. He can't do it through there. Flax holding on to it as they come out of the final turn. Onto the front straight away. They're side by side as they come to the line. But it's going to be Flack who gets the win over Curtis. Then it's Watts waiting now for the fourth place driver. That's Monty Jamison coming through on the 43. Oh, Grother. He drops a spot to six behind Turhorse. Folly home in seventh. Then Mills. Nolan makes his way up to ninth spot. Petroni rounds out your ten. Then it's Haig. Followed by Smith. Then Lasso. Quintiliani. Kinder Lampert. Then it's Butler, followed by Bailey, Masico. Then it's Jeremy Broadbent. And coming on through is Tyler Hoare, followed by Oliver, Oliver Tresillian, who gets in front of Olivia Walton. Then it's Paige Flack, followed by Andrew Thompson, just waiting on now for Miko Waddy. Knox Black and Jax Fuller to come across the line to complete. Now, Cadet 12 racing here. We are going to take a break from Ipswich. We'll be back with Diddy 2 and Open Performance very soon.
And welcome back to uh, Ipswich here for our April Club Day. We're about to step it up a gear or six with DD2 and Open Performance out on circuit. Getting set for their opening heat race of the weekend. DD2, of course, the Rotex two drive category. We'll start these groups in two separate groups. We'll have the Open Performance crew and then the DDT did it to crew out there as well. Jay Cool, great to have Jay up here with us this weekend. The number 42, he will start on the pole in open performance of Bureau Art Machine. Finlay Derry, the number 37, will start out of P2. And next row of the good will be Cam McLeod, the number 92 machine. Scuderia PCR entry and Bally Sagadak in the number 25. Then it's Dan Hutchinson in the eight. Troy Losco, the multi Australian champion in KZ2. Then it's Hokuto Ide in the number 35. Hampus Varis all the way from Sweden driving the Danilo Rossi number four and Lachlan Murphy in the number 15. In the DD2 category, it's Scotty Howard in the 39, Scott Cleveland the 14, Adam Wood the number 21 and it's great to have Jet Johnson, of course the grandson of the great Dick Johnson, son of Steve Johnson in the number 18. Angus May, there's a lineup in the three and Jason Smith in the number six. Getting set for a start here, not quite happy just at this stage. The Open Performance crew, the majority of them, you'll see them at the SP Tools Australian Car Championship. Hampus Varis making the move out from Sweden. Of course, the Ronnie Peterson scholarship winner over in Sweden last year. That's allowed him to come out and link up with the Daniel Rossi DR Kart Australia outfit. A very quietly spoken young 15-year-old. Now making home just north of the Gold Coast. It's a great addition to the opening round of the Australian Championships last month. Getting set for a start now, Jay Cool. Plenty of experience, not just in Australia, but overseas as well over recent time. Through away, and you can hear them take off as they go down through turn number one. Cool it is, it leads away. Oh, we've got a pile up down there. We've got three or four of them that have come together. Are they all able to get it underway? And yes, they are. There's bits of uh, plastics all over the racetrack. So all happening out there, early stages of this one. Sagadak's got a good start. Up the inside he goes, and he goes to the race lead. Bailey Sagadak, the local here. He made a switch in carts, headed into this season, moved over to a cosmic cart for the IKD race department. He's got John Target on the spanners for him. Down the inside goes Cool versus Sagadak. This is a great race. Into the mix comes Cam McLeod as well. He's in the third spot. Across the start finish straight they come. So it's cool. Sagadak, McLeod, Derry, Murphy, Losco. Problem for Varus. He's out of action. Down through turn number one goes your race leader. Gee, this is tight. Cool looking to lead the way. He's looking to fight back after a fairly unfortunate start to his final at the opening round of the SP Tools Australian Car Championships. The attitude on his body in the cart was quite a sight. Down through the video pro corner they go. Sagadak still getting used to the cosmic machinery underneath him. It was a very last minute decision or deal that was cut to go to the opening round. And McLeod right on his tail as they go down the back stretch. We don't see Cam McLeod here too often. And good to see the PCR brand here as well. Through the Howard's concreting corner they come and on to the front straight away. As cool, just starts to say, see you later, I am O-U-T. Sagadak pulls in problem for the number 25. So he is out of commission. That promotes McLeod up to second spot. So I've had a couple that have dropped out of this one. In third placing then will be Lachlan Murphy in the 15. Then it's Finlay Derry. Cool, starting to open the gap here. Many of these drivers as they made mention of before. It was such a great amount of experience at the national level. Hokuto Ide out there in the number 29. In Dede 2 land, Jet Johnson. Of course, racing in Trans Am and several other different categories right around the country is Jet these days. He is leading the Dede 2 category. He's got an age advantage, you'd have to say, on the more distinguished gentleman in that Dede 2 class. J. Cool now opening the gap to 1.3 seconds over McLeod. McLeod actually looking very good there in second position. 
A good battle going on for fourth on the circuit. That's headed up by E-Day in the red and white barrel art. As they come down through the video pro corner, camera number four. And up towards the Autobahn turn. That's where the main battle is on circuit at the moment. So across the line comes Cool. Then it's McLeod. Next one through is Murphy. Then it's Ide heading up this battle in three down two. Turn number one and two. The battle for fourth continues on. Not over and done with yet. Still only early days in this one. So cool, trying to pull away here. Driving the barrel out, of course, brought into Australia by Patrizia Course. Announced last week that they're bringing out the WSK Supermaster for two categories the next round of the Australian Championships. Down at Pakapunyal, that being Ian Eichmann's. Been in touch with Ian over the last couple of weeks. An interesting young man is Ian. So the order's cool. McLeod, Murphy, Eday. Derry and Losco. Losco in sixth spot, trying to make his way forward. Meantime, Adam Woods got to the head of the DD2 category in front of Jet Johnson. And Smith Howard made this Cleveland and Duffy. We'll try and drop back the order a bit so we can see some of the other competitors out there. Obviously, Cool's got a commanding advantage at the moment. Across the line they come. They're in fourth spot. Is Hokuto Ide in the number 29. He's actually left Derry and Losco well and truly in his tracks there. There's your second place man, McLeod, in the number 29, the 92, I should say, the yellow and black PCR, the Italian chassis. He's got a slight gap then on Lachlan Murphy. He's looking very solid out there at the moment. We are working lap number seven, so when Cool comes back to the start finish straight, he will start his final circulation. But there's Cam McLeod. We don't see him too often here. Cam McLeod. As Cool now starts his final lap here on this 1,088 metre Ipswich Cartway. To tell you what, Murphy's been putting in some good laps here, but it's too little too late. So now your race leader, he comes out of Video Pro, heads up towards the Autobahn corner in the number 42 for the final time. Down the back stretch he comes now. The brilliantly presented number 42 of Jay Cool through the hairpin he runs for the final time, and he'll come back around towards the start finish straight. He comes to the line, check it, flag at the ready. And J. Cool gets it done and sets the fastest lap on the eighth circulation, if you don't mind. He takes the win by 2.1 seconds over McLeod. Murphy, then Ede, then Derry, then Losco. Next one through. We're just waiting on Wood to come through as they come to the line. Who's going to get the best of it? Oh, Scotty Howard comes through and gets the DD2. And he comes from nowhere to the driver of the number 39. Dennis Wood, Johnson home in third. Cleveland, then Mathers. Then it's Steph Duffy. And just waiting on Jason Smith to come through there as well. But that was Jay Cool. He gets open performance win by 2.1 seconds. Howard steals the DD2 win there in that one. We're going to take a break from his switch. Coming up is one of our feature classes over 10 laps. That will be Tag Restricted Medium. Coming up very soon.
Action coming thick and fast here this morning at Ipswich. One of our feature classes of the day. Tag restricted medium hits the circuit. They've got 10 laps against them being one of the three feature classes here this weekend. And after qualifying earlier on this morning before we come on air, it was Geordie Mark on Central Queensland up out of Bundaberg who gets the quickest time. He will start on the pole in the 42. Ryan Silcock, the number 77. He will start on the outside front row. Second row of the grid is the 93 of Trent Harders and Andrew Torty in the number 55. Row number three is the 24 of Jonathan Lillis and Luke Jacobson in the 22. Out of row four is the 56 of Peter Sattler and Julian Beaumont Walsh in the 23. On row number five is the 38 of Carl Wegner and Gavin Whitmore out of P10. Watch out for Gav in the number 35 of Praga. Row number six is the eight of Sam Misson and David Vogel, another one of our generally quick competitors starting out of 12. Row number seven is the nine of Dakota Daniels and Zach King. He is usually incredibly fast. The conditions this morning quite tricky for the 97 out of 14. Justin Voigt to start out of 15, then Brad Cox. Then it's Shizlowski, Velikot, Miller, Jordan, Highland and DeSalvo set for a start. We're away. Ten on the board, down at turn number one, Mark on. Holds on to it down through turn one. How do they all sort themselves out through there? Vastly different conditions to what they faced this morning. There was a shower of rain that came through just before they hit the race circuit. Not getting all sorts of high, wide and handsome through the flip-flop and getting themselves settled down to kick things off here. Through the video pro corner, Mark on leads away. A move there for second position as they work their way up to the Autobahn turn for the first time and on to the back stretch. Mark on a super experienced campaigner at the national level. Seen more twisting the spanners these days rather than racing. So he crosses the line. He leads away over the 93 of Trent Harder, Silcock into third, Torty holds down fourth, then it's Jacobson, Sattler, Lillis, Vogel, Whitmore into ninth, then Cox, Bowman, Ross, Chislowski, Wegner, then it's King, Misson, Daniels, Velikot, Voigt, Jordan, DeSalvo, your top 20. Good battle going on further back in the pack as they start to sort themselves out, still here. The early stages of this one, the willpower cart of... Jordi Marcon leads away from pole. He's already opening advantage over Harders in the number 93 machine. So go down the back stretch. Silcock in third position under pressure here from the 55 of Andrew Torty as they come back to the front straightaway. In fact, I think that may have been a change in position. Yes, it is. And Torty in the 55. Tony Cart can see him there. The green and white machine has moved his way into third position. Then it's a charge of the light brigade behind them, headed up by Luke Jacobson with Pete Sattler right on his tail. There's a battle of about five or six of them there in that mid pack. Marcon's lead relatively comfortable at this stage. He isn't under pressure from Harders at all at the moment. Tordy's pulled clear of Silcock in third position. And quickly catching up at the back of Zilk. Silcock is the 22 of Jacobson. Behind Jacobson in that bright red, red speed is the number 66 machine of Vogel, who's got in front of Whitmore now. So Vogel, our sixth place competitor. He is under pressure from the 35 of Whitmore. Whitmore, of course, knows his way around this circuit. He is starting to put Vogel in the 66 under pressure. Vogel in the all-white helmet with the blue and gold machine of Whitmore with the fl multiple fluoro colours behind him. Now Whitmore makes the move up the inside and goes to another position. 
There's that battle. There's Whitmore goes across the start finishing line. You can see the gaps. Whitmore comes past us in the 35. There he is. He's now set sail. For Luke Jacobson in the 22. David Vogel there, the 66 behind Gavin Whitmore. You can see the blue plate on the 35 machine. That denotes that he is a current state champion. He's been racing this level of competition for so, so many years. As many years as I can recall, Gavin Whitmore. And look at him now. He's starting to close in on the back of that red speed of Jacobson. This is a major fight on circuit. He's got a good run, Gav Whitmore. Up the inside he goes and up another spot. And now he has got Ryan Silcock in front of him. Silcock has, in fact, come back to the pack here as they come across the line. We're halfway home in this one, this 10-lap race. It's Mark on who leads by two seconds over Harders, Tordy, Silcock, then Whitmore, Jacobson, Vogel, Cox. Sattler and Lillis rounding out your top 10. There's your race leader. Doing it fairly comfortably as Jordy Mark on. Set the pole position earlier on today. Got the Tom Williamson Motorsport colours on there. TWM bringing, was bringing the Will Power Cart into Australia. Australia's Indianapolis 500 and IndyCar champion. So further back, Whitmore's moved up another spot. He is now into position four. Tordy's in a very comfortable third position in the 55. Vogel's also moved up a spot into sixth place past Jacobson. Chizowski further back has moved inside the top ten. Here's this group, they've been trying to settle themselves down. Laps starting to wind down in this one. Lead up front's 2.8 seconds. There's a battle going on between Ryan Silcock, the 77, and David Vogel. They're in the middle of your screen at the moment. So down through this part of the race circuit, the 77 of Silcock there, Vogel. He's got the Parallel skirts up and dancing here. He can sniff another position as they cross the line with three laps to go through turn number one. G Vogel's up on the wheel. Have a look at him. The attitude on that number 66 machine. He's all over the 77 like a cheap suit at the moment. Silcock, he is hanging on. David Vogel is throwing everything. But the kitchen sink at those Lecon tyres strapped to that 66 machine. Up through the right hander they go. Then behind them he's got to be careful because Brad Cox is closing in. In the 54, Silcock consents that Vogel's behind him. He actually runs a little wide there in the WPK, so the same cart brand as what's leading the race here as they come to the start finishing line. But just under two laps to go now. There goes Torty, a third place man, then Whitmore. Then it is the 77 of Silcock Vogel right on him. Vogel getting a good run through the flip flop. Let's see if we can wind him up for a pass. They come through RHQ, the right-hander. Down to Video Pro. Not quite at that stage. Gee, you can see the back end of the cart squirreling through there. Still fairly low grip conditions, given the rain that befell the circuit overnight and first thing this morning. Sunshine, thankfully, is all over us was a bit of a concern as to what we might have faced here today. Certainly looking at the uh, weather forecast yesterday, I wasn't confident that we were going to get dry running as Mark on us now on his last lap, the number 42. It's been a commanding lead from the pole position he's trying to convert. Vogel is still chucking everything here. It's Silcock. Silcock holding on. Takes a look over the shoulder as Mark on for the last time. Gets on to the back straight away. He'll head through the hairpin. Just has two corners left to go. Can Vogel have a look here? But your race leader comes to the start, finish straight. 
and becomes your race winner. He gets it done. So good drive from Jordy Marcon. Harder's home in second spot. Torty home in third. Gen Whitmore home in fourth spot. Silcock, he was under all sorts and he held on for fifth placing over Vogel. Then it's Cox, Chislowski, Jacobson, Sattler home in tenth. Misson. Then it's Lillis, followed by Beaumont Walsh. And Daniel Valakot home in 14th spot. King, 15th position. Then Voigt, followed by Jordan DeSalvo. Then Highland. And waiting then on Miller and Vegna to come through and complete our finishes. We've got one that stopped in at the middle of the circuit, but that's tag restricted medium out the way for their opening heat race of the day. KO3 Senior will be up next. You're watching all the action live from Ipswich Car Club right here today. And welcome back to Ipswich as out on circuit now. K3 hits the track and Declan Matthews in the 55 will line up on the pole position. Lucas Lesmes in the 95, the outside front row. Hamilton Ray and Maddie Feather, the 26 on row number two. Ronan Finn in the 28 will line up out of five. Out of six is the 86 of Matt Price. Emily Chicardo in the 54 will line up in seven spot. Paige Jarwood out of eight in the nine. Talia Kittle, the 85, will line up in ninth spot with Brian Moyes out of position 10 in the 75. Row six is Liam Thompson, the 69, and Dominic Penman, the number 70. Watch for him to come through the field. Kai Brennan, the 43, will line up 13th. Then it is Georgie Aiden, Byron Phillips, and Jake Chislowski. A good field here of KA3 Seniors. So they start to line themselves up. Matthews. Oh, new colours for Matthews this weekend. Looks really trick out there, the CXR lead driver.
Lucas Lesme is on the outside front row. What a rise it has been over the last 12 months for this young man. Except for a start this time. Eight on the board. We're away. Matthews gets the best of it. Lesmes didn't get a great start. Down into turn at number one. They all get through there. Oh, one goes sideways and spins it around. It was perpendicular to the race circuit. That was unfortunate. Matthews pulling away already. This is a familiar situation that we have seen. As now Declan starts to open it up through Video Pro Corner. Hamilton Ray's got a good start out there as well. Down the back stretch, they run for the first time. Eight laps on the board. Cross a charge, and it's Matthews that leads away the 55. Then it's the 82 machine, in fact, of Ray, followed by Feather. Then it's Lesmes, followed by Moyes, Price, Penman, Kittle, Shizlowski, and Phillips rounding out your top 10. So while Lesmes dropped down a couple of spots, a second of the Jess Golding Motorsports drivers in Hamilton Ray, quite his first podium finish at this club day. Not that long ago. Last time we were here, he's up into second spot and just continues to build on now. Feather under attack here from Lesmes. Down the back straightaway. Feather in the green and black Empire Cartsport machine. Deep under brakes goes Lesmes, but there's Matthews leading the way. There has been a change in that. Well, there hasn't been a change, in fact. Lesmes ran wide as they come across the line there. Lesmes has in turn left himself vulnerable to Brian Moyes and Dominic Penman three wide, oh we just cut back to your race leader there and missed what happened and Penman's got through Les Mez has dropped two spots through that, they were running three wide there, that was unbelievable so Matthew's comfortable out in front Ray's comfortable in second spot and Feathers had a get out of jail free card there in third spot. Then behind her, it is the purple and black bedshed machine of Dominic Penman, the second of the CXR drivers. He is under a little bit of pressure as they come to the line. There's Matthews, followed by Ray. Then your third place driver is Feather. There's Penman. He has got the 75 of Brown Moyes. He's in the girl race sandwich out there. He is Dominic Penman at the moment. There's Feather on screen at the minute. Penman, super, super experienced as a junior on a national scene. He's right on the tail of Maddie Feather. She has really stepped it up, went through a year of injuries last year, so was well and truly out of the saddle. Got back in at the start of this year. Had a quick chat with the entire family last night. Ethan, her brother, is off to the Toyota 86 Scholarship Series this year. She's seen a sneak peek of the race vehicle, something that Ethan himself hasn't seen. Bit of a banner contention right there as they cross the line. Here comes Penman up the inside, down at turn number one. Fortunately, we didn't catch that. Penman was able to get through into that third position. There's that three, four, and five. So Moyes has closed in. She is well and truly in this fight for the back end of the third spot out there. But expect Penman to start pulling away here in that purple and black machine. Through the left hander they go now. Great action here to kick things off for the April Club Day here at Ipswich. Through the right hander they go. Matthew's lead was 1.6 seconds the last time they came through. Down the back stretch they run now. Feather taking a nice line through there. She's one of the many drivers that have jumped onto the Empire Cartsport team, headed up by Peter Crossingham and the crew. Peter over in Italy at Cremona last weekend with Charlotte Page for that Academy Series event. There's your race lead up, the number 55. He is on lap number six, Declan Matthews. Multiple Australian championships for that CXR team. There's Hamilton Ray, another one of these young drivers that's joined the JGM squad. Set up somewhat as a 
satellite type team by Jess Golding, of course, an Australian champion in her own right. However, it's become a little bit more than that, heading out onto the Australian Car Championships this year with a couple of drivers. And of course, they'll be in action in a couple of weeks' time down at Pakapunyal in Victoria. No doubt they'll be vastly different weather conditions to what we are experiencing here right now. Further back in the pack, James Chiselowski has just done the quickest lap of the race, a 49.859. He started Stone at Motherless last in 16th position, and he's made his way halfway up that order. There's Penman. He's a gritty young racer, is Dominic Penman. Certainly well and truly gets himself in the mix. Always threatening for big results. And now look at Moyes there, right on the tail of Feather as they come down the back stretch. When is she going to set up Maddie for a move? Maddie's been impressive in the early stages of 2024. Moyes right there. Further, she's got the eyes on. She's getting the encouragement from the crew on the fence, on the front straight away. We are on the last lap here for our race leader. Down the back stretch he comes is Declan Matthews. He's got a couple of corners to go. Moyes will try and set up further here for a move. Meantime, and oh, Feather goes defensive, but meantime, to the front stretch comes Declan Matthews. He gets a comfortable win, although it wasn't as comfortable as what he would have liked. Oh, given lap, the lap traffic scenario. And then Hamilton Ray crosses the line in second place. Penman holds on for third. Then it's Feather, followed by Moyes. Then Lesmus, Shislowski. Then it's Price, followed by Kittle, Phillips. Then waiting on now for Chicato and Finn to come to the line. Paige Yarwood came home in 13th position, but Declan Matthews had that one well and truly on a string for Team CXR in the 55. He gets a win in KA3 Senior. We're going to take a break here at Ipswich as we've got a couple to clean up, as you can see. Tag Heavy will hit the track very soon. And back at Ipswich now, tag heavy on circuit. Rudy Farkas, he is looking for a huge result this weekend. Last round didn't necessarily go his way. He will start. He has drawn the pole position in this one. Of course, a random grid being set for these heat races aside from our feature classes. Dan Brown, the number 32nd, seven, the outside front row. Second row of the grid, Brady Barton, the 43, and Brent Redding in the 58. Then it's Andrew Gilliam in the number 78, and Harrison Fox, the number 68, 
from six. Row number four, Will Marshall, the 17, and Brad McNaught. Watch out for him out of eight and the five. Row number five is Riley Lagarde and Josh Dagg in the 39. Brendan Nelson, a multiple Australian champion in this category, will start from 11th in the 70. And Chris Williams, another very fast driver in the 31 from 12. Row number seven is the eight of Jumpy Marita. And then a Sam, Slam and Sammy Houston in the number six out of P14. Out of 15 is the 15 of Brock Plum and Jared Ninet off the back of the bus in the number 18. Gee, the caboose back row of Plum and Ninet. That is a juicy one indeed. Big weekend of motorsport, not just here, but right around the world, of course. Japanese Formula One Grand Prix. Great to have that in our time zone. Cam Waters making his NASCAR trucks debut this weekend. It's actually on Foxtel at the moment. Coming live from Martinsville. Just trying to pick up where the tradey truck is at the moment. But meantime, we do have a field of tag heavies out on circuit. Getting set for a start over eight laps. This will be a great race. Getting set for a start. They're in the starter's hands. They've got to stay between those lines and we are underway down to turn one. They come. Good even start through there. And it's really Farkas who's got the best of the lead. He holds down the race lead out of Electro. Now down to Video Pro. Everyone just trying to get themselves into their position. Brown drops back to third position as Redding goes up to second. The orange and black helmet, that familiar colour of Brent Redding. He heads down the back straight away now. He's got Farkas, the veteran racer, right in front of him. Brent Redding, another one to join this emerging empire. You have to say it is an empire for Empire Kart Sport. He is right on the tail of your race leader now as Redding. Farkas keeping a tight line down through into turn number one. Bit going on further back as well for third. Oh, gee, have a look at this battle for third. This is insane in the early stages of this. The 17 of Will Marshall. He's made his way up to third spot. It's been a good start for him. <coughs> He's got Brendan Nelson, the number 70 machine, the Intrepid, right behind him. See him this weekend for Brendan. Up through the Autobahn corner. Still plenty of battles trying to get into racing rhythm as they come around to the start. Finish straight to complete lap number two. It's Redding starting to pull away from Farkas. In fact, it's actually a Kelly Cart for Brendan Nelson. I beg your pardon. Kelly Cart out of the CRG factory in Italy. Actually making a fairly concerted push through 2024 with that Kelly brand. As Redding started to pull away, so they've closed in on the back of Farkas for second now. You can see that second, third and fourth battle as they run up to the right-hander at a hard stop at Autobahn. And they work their way down the back straight away. We've got a battle for second. So Marshall has now moved into second position. There's that second, third and fourth place battle. Nelson trying to work his way into calculations for the top three. Redding's pull clear, so the battle is on for second, third and fourth. There you can see Marshall. It hasn't taken him long after getting into second place to say, see you later, Rudy. He is well and truly out of there, and I get the feeling that Nelson is about to affect a pass as well, and I'm correct. So the battle's on for the miners out there. The orange and black. Cali Cart in third position is Brendan Nelson. You can see that group there. Nelson, now that he's got through on Farkas, has started to, started to pull away. Riley Lagarde's got through as well.
there you can see so Marshall in second there is Nelson followed by Lagarde he's got through on Farkas as well your pole sit up through the top turn in fact I think that might be Brown in that mix now as well as they go down the back stretch there's been a couple of shuffles in this order as they come to the start finish straight Yes, it is in the 31. That's Chris, Chris Williams in the 31. He's not showing on our timing screen out there. So bad luck for Chris. He's in the race, but he's got an issue. Coming up on to timing. Problem there with a... Uh, Farkas has had a problem there, and... Uh, off a little bit second best up the front there's Brent Redding he is on lap number six he'll have two laps to go as he comes to the line Marshall putting in a fine drive in a number 17 then you've got your third place man Nelson he's got Riley Lagarde keeping him company in the number 98 Sammy Houston in the number six he is there in fifth position so Redding will come around he'll get the last lap board this time there's Lagarde in the middle of that group the blue helmet I've lost count of how many times Brendan Nelson has won an Australian Championship in this category. Because his parents, Larry and Jenny, formerly owners of the Chaos Karting Kart Shop, sold out of that a little bit earlier on. Here's your race lead up. Brent Redding, he's well and truly on the way home now. He's got a 2.3 second advantage over the field. It's been a fine drive. He's got the expertise of the Empire Kart Sport team behind him now. He's always a solid campaigner, is Brent Redding. It's been a long time from memory since he's had a really good run as he works his way through. There's Nelson, but Redding's on the way home, your race leader, on the back straightaway for the final time. He's just got a couple of corners left to go. Here it comes, through how it's concreting. And onto the front straightaway. Redding gets a win. Second place goes to Marshall. Then third place to Nelson after that. Williams crosses the line in fourth. Then it was Lagarde, Houston, Plummer, Brown, Ninet, Fox, Marita. Then Josh Dagg, Andrew Gilliam and Rudy Farkas. He gets across the line in the end of it. Brad McNaught, the last one through. So that completes Tag Heavy's heat race there. They've got their... Ledger marked for the first time. A capacity field of KA3 Junior Light coming up after we catch our breath and have a short break here at Ipswich.
Welcome back to Ipswich and a Fort Ticart field of K3 Junior Light enters the racetrack. Boy, oh boy, strap yourselves in, ladies and gentlemen. This race would hold its own on the national level. Luke Nolan, a Townsville racer in the 94. You saw his brother Brock in action a bit earlier on in Cadet 12. He will start on the pole in the 94. Mia Yarwood, the family number 69 on the outside front row. Next row of the grid, the 21 of Chloe Lane and the 81 of Quade Powers. Jai Flynn, the number 10. He is always fast. He will start out of P5. Levi Dosell, the number 11, out of six. Run number four is the 26 of Brock Helm and Sebastian Bennett, the 55. Jet Saragi, the 38, and Charlie Stratford lines up on row five. Row six is Ryan Reed and Bryce Leo. Charlotte Page back out again out of P13, the 22. Sebastian Simonelli, the 40. Xavier Rasso, the 88. Then it's Chad Risman, Luke Downs, August Soward, Matt Clark, Xavier Knight. Charlie Cronin, Lana Flack from P22. Then Poppy Rule, Tim and Hoskin, Lucas Cito, Tyson McGill, Matt Dixon, Johnny Wright, Jack Schwezek from 29th spot. Watch out for him. Jackson Duong, Jack Jensen, Ashton Smith, Dylan Katmalocker. Sebastian Tander making the move up this weekend. Isaac McNeil, McCarley, Kennedy, Stratford, McLeod, McLaughlin. Here we go down to turn number one, and we are not ready. Gave it the biggest build up in history, and nothing happened. But uh, out they are. Great to see Sebastian Tander up, up here from Victoria. And moving into juniors, Isaac McNeil. Been doing some Formula 4 racing under the Volante Rosso banner in the Formula Open category. He will come through from 35th on the grid, so a lot of work to do. Another one of the Empire drivers in Isaac McNeil. Tander down there in 34th spot. Lana Flack, of course, a round winner last year of the Australian Car Championship. Coming the first multi-round winner since Leanne Tander, of course. Sebastian's mum. Down to turn number one they go. What's going to happen through here? Hold on to your hats. One goes high, wide and handsome through there. And we've lost a couple down there at the back. But they're all through, mainly. And Luke Nolan, the Lando Norris cart. He leads the way. Through the electro corner they go. Now they come around to Video Pro for the first time. Look at the absolute freight train of carts come through there to kick things off. Now to the back stretch they go for the first time. Nolan leads them around. Down through the hairpin they run. Jai Flynn's made a reasonable start out there in the number 10. Now back around to the start finish straight. We'll pick up the order for you as they cross the line. Nolan leads them across in the 94, followed by Yale with a great start for her. It's the 81 of Craig Powers, who's right in there. He is under the pump deluxe from Flynn, who in turn is under the pump from the 55 of Bennett. They work their way through. That top five have got themselves sorted out. As for behind that, then it's anyone's guess. Lane in there, so to sell. Helm, Stratford and Page inside the top ten now. We've lost a couple about three quarters away down through the order. And they're starting to fall a little bit like flies out there. So we'll have a look at where some of our drivers would normally be quick. They drew a deep pill for the start of this one. And down the back stretch. One trying to safely re-enter the racing lineup as Flynn goes up the inside and moves into third position, but it's all Nolan up the front. Take a wider shot and we'll see the action as they come through. As you can see, plenty of these drivers are regulars on the national scene. Great to have them with us here this weekend. Jack Schwezek up to 22nd spot. He started 29th. McNeil's up to 24th, having started in 35th spot. Risman down in 12th place, thinks at the quickest lap the last time through. Now we've got a race for the lead on here. Bennett looking up the inside. The 55 takes the lead and takes Flynn with him. Flynn, he's going to go with him in the number 10 for CXR. He wants to try and throw a challenge here as they come to the line. Bennett wants to pull away in the 55. Down through turn number one. It's on at the front. Nolan's dropped back to third position. 
He'd be looking for a good result here, Luke Nolan, this weekend. They make the trip down from Townsville for every club event. So watch out for Jai Flynn, the number 10. He is the quickest driver on circuit. He is right there with Sebastian Bennett. Down the back straight away they go. Is he close enough this time? You don't need to ask Jai Flynn if he's close enough because he will give it a go. And give it a go he does and takes the race lead over Bennett in the 55. They work their way back around to the start, finish straight to cross the line. Flynn leading by just over a tenth of a second after getting through. They've got a slight advantage then over Nolan in third to sell. He was half a second quicker than Nolan the last time by. He's still some distance behind him though. Charlotte Page up to sixth spot. We're working lap number five. So your orders Flynn from Bennett, Nolan to sell. Yarwood then Page, Simonelli, Stratford, Helm, Lane down to 10th, then McGill, followed by Flack, Jensen, Rissman. Then it's Cronin, Powers, Saragi, Schwezek up to 18th, great drive. McNeil up to 19th, greater drive. Henry Stratford, Basilio, McCarley. Then it's Smith, Kennedy, Clark and Wright. That rounds up your top 25. Johnny the Jet in 25th position. Across the line they go now. Flynn, new quickest lap, opens the gap to 2.23. They've pulled well clear of this battle for third spot. Have your top two. Bennett hasn't given up on trying to get himself back to the race lead. A problem for the 23 further back. In fifth spot, Charlotte Page. She's got her eyes on the battle between Nolan and Decel. Should something befall them? There's Nolan holding down third spot. Oh, Decel in the Cart Republic gets a wheel off on the dirt. Down the back straight and look at Giselle sideways on and he just held on to it and gets past Nolan. I think that the uh, sidebar or the side plastic of Nolan there assisted Docell through the corner. Pages into fifth. Simonelli up to six. Good drive for Sebastian. He's taken Charlie Stratford with him. Of course, those two have come through the four SS ranks. Isaac McNeil has got himself up into 18th spot, having started 35th, and has just done the quickest lap of the race. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, did you see that? It was just off screen, I think. My God, we had a driver that got out onto the grass and spun out, and Docell missed him by the narrowest of margins. It would have been a foot, if not less, that Docell would not have expected a cart to come spearing across the racetrack. No doubt that the driver that was involved there, I can't pick up the number from my vantage point, was taking some time to try and get his breath back. Well, he's got the breath back and got the cart refired and is going to try and rejoin. Wow. It's all happening here in KO3 Junior Light, as it always does. And we are on the way home, though, folks. This is a final lap. Jai Flynn in the number 10. He leads away down through the video pro corner for the final time. Up to the top turn at Autobahn. Goes your race leader with a green helmet. And there he is. What a drive it's been by Jai. He started in fifth spot, worked his way forward. Bennett was momentarily in the lead. But he got through on him and has taken the lead and will come around and take out the opening heat race win. Will Jai Flynn, a brilliant drive. He gets it done. Another win for CXR. They are in such a purple patch at the moment, the Sunshine Coast team. Ben at home in second spot. Then it was Docell. Was that Simonelli, the driver, that was involved in that incident? No, it wasn't. Nolan home in fourth. Then Page, followed by Stratford. Then McGill. Then it was Lane. Lana Flack up to position number nine. She came from 22nd on the grid. Then it was Mia Yard, Brockhelm, Rissman and Jensen. Followed by McNeil getting up to 14th spot. Schwezek up to position number 15 from 29th on the grid. Simonelli, Cronin, Stratford, Powers, Kennedy, then McCarley home in 21st. Ashton Smith, then Johnny Wright, another couple of spots for him. Then Poppy Rule, Matthew Clark. And as they come on through, it's Lucas Sito. Tim and Hoskin, then Duong, Tander, Knight, Saud, McLaughlin,
Downs, Dixon, Leo and Saragi. So that ends KA3 Junior Light. We're going to take a break here. We need to go and catch our breath. Tag Light will be coming up very shortly here on what's become a beautiful day here at Ipswich. So Tag Light hits the track for their opening heat race here today. There's the results from our previous race on the left-hand side. Trent Newton will line up on the pole in this one. Jordi Costa will line up on the outside front row in the 77. Bryce Lane will line up out of P3 to 45. Troy Losco, double duty this weekend in the 12. Have that... Rock GP motor strapped on, no doubt. Jack Wells out of five in a 26. Josh Fu, the 22. Geordie Slater will line up out of position number seven to 73. With Jack Stimson, a 71 out of eight. Row five, Jack Goodman in a 50. And Josh Miller in a 13. Lachlan Cowie, the 21. Will Gallagher, the 33. Ryan Allman in the number 98. Ron McConnell, the number seven. Mikula Missouria out of P15 in the 29. James Chitlin, the 49. Jack Kabelka from North New South Wales in the 54. Blyton Preston, Vincent Sagadak and Kajewski. We're down into turn number one for Tag Light. A good even start through there and everyone's away. Newton's dropped back to second spot. Wells it is who's got the lead. So a good start there for Jack Wells. Down to Video Pro Corner they run. Jordy Costa has dropped back into third spot there. So the Costa brothers back. Saw Dave actually on the Broad Beach Walk the other night. Going for a bit of a wander. Down the back straight away they go. So already we're starting to see a bit of defensive driving. The 36 machine up the inside and to the race lead of Trent Newton. But Jack Wells having absolutely none of it. What a race this is turning out to be already. End of lap number one here in Tag Light. Side by side, action to the line. Across the line they go. Wells, Newton, Costa, Losco up to fourth. Goodman, a good start for Shark. Then Slater, Stimson, Fru, Cowie, Gallagher rounding out your top ten as we are getting underway here. The action is absolutely frenetic at the moment. And Losco back in fourth is pushing Young Costa here down to the video pro corner up the inside and Losco goes through and takes Jacques Goodman with him. Jeez, Jacques had his wheat picks this morning. Look at Trent Newton all over the back of Jack Wells here as they go down the back straight away. Still early stages of this one. 
Wells trying to get another win for CXR to kick the morning off. Couple of really good battles. Oh, you can see some side-by-side -side action. The elbows are well and truly up. Actually, one's been spat out further back in the pack. So there's the gaps here. First to second, Wells to Newton. Then Losco's pull clear of Jacques Goodman. Slater, the next one in the line. Newton's got a good run down the back stretch. What's he like under brakes? He goes deep. Wells is always super fast around here. Stepped up out of juniors earlier on this year. Onto the front stretch they come now. The yeah, silly two tenths of a second, Troy Losco. He sets the quickest lap of the race. Will Gallagher, Bailey Sagadak, and William and Jordy Costa have struck trouble out there as they go down the order. So pretty much an equal gap from first to second. Then there's a slight gap back to Losco. It's about the same between Losco and Goodman. Goodman having started in ninth spot. This is a good run for the youngster. He's part of his university's Formula SAE program, which is a program to design and build a former race car. Battle for fifth and sixth going on between Slater and Stimson as well. You can see those three distinct battles as they come across the start finishing line here to complete lap number four. So we're halfway through the racing in this one. Wells it is, leading by three tenths of a second over Newton, Losco, then Goodman. Slater, then Stimson, Ryan Allman in seventh, just does the quickest lap of the race. Lemazuri has moved his way up to eighth spot, then Preston. He's up to nine, so good run there for Jack. Then it's Fru, Lane, Cowie, Kabelka, McConnell, and your top 15 is Braden Vincent. So look at this now. Wells under attack from Newton, down the back stretch. Wells has got the pace. Oh, that Craig Matthews built CXR, number 26. The onus is on Newton to try and catch up. Obviously, the energy cart driver seems to have the best of the pace through the corners as they work their way down into turn number one again to start lap number six. We've only got three remaining in this one. Goodman has well and truly kept Troy Losco for company in this one. They've got the setup in the Demon Tweaks cart. Absolutely beautiful out there, that red machine of Goodman. Up through the top turn goes our top two now. It's still not over and done with here. Down the back stretch they go. There's Goodman at the top of your screen. Troy Losco, the three-time KZ2 Australian champion. Of course, a KF champion in his own right as well. Driving the Ricardo cart. You're used to seeing him in Beryl Art colours these days at KZ2 at the national level. The Levian Eichmann's joined the team at Paka Punyal in a couple of weeks' time. The Belgian. He'll be driving in both X30 and TAG. Of course, utilising the rock engine in that TAG category is now Wells. Do I tell you what? I wouldn't back against a Trent Newton challenge here at some point in the back stages of this race. He's only got one and a third laps to go to be able to do that, however... Jack Wells, this is where he's got the pace on this long back straightaway. As he sharpens back into view. But Newton, he is pushing on here, the number 36 machine. They come around, I'll get the last lap board this time. One lap to go, 1,088 metres here. Down through turn number one. There you can see Goodman's keeping. Bosco, very honest. But Wells, he's decided... He might have been under the pump a little bit, but forget it. You are not going to have a go at me, Trent Newton. I got to the lead. I worked hard to get to the lead from fifth position, and I'm going to hold on to it to get another heat race victory and get my account underway in the best possible fashion up to Autobahn Corner for the final time they go. Jeez, I don't think there's been many heat races at a CXR cart. Hasn't won here this morning so far. Through... The hairpin for the final time. Then to Howard's concreting. Out of the final set of turns. And onto the front straightaway. Checkered flag at the ready. And it is Jack Wells who gets the win over Trent Newton. Troy Losco came in third spot. Then Chuck Goodman followed by Slater. 
Then it was Stimson, Ullman, Lamazuria home in eighth. Preston, he sets the quickest lap on lap number eight. Josh Frew. Then it's Bryce Lane, Lachlan Cowie, Jet Kabelka in the 54. Rowan McConnell and Braden Vincent rounds out your finishes. There was a few there that didn't come to the line, but Wells gets it done by nearly four tenths of a second. There's the number 77 of Costa. They will not be happy with that. They will have some work to do between races. We're going to take a break while we pick up Geordie and get him off the track. We are going to bring Tag Restricted Light out for their 10 lap heat race very soon. We're back at Ipswich for the tag restricted titles this weekend and out on circuit comes our tag restricted light category one of the three feature categories here. This weekend Darcy Briggs, he set the pole time out of the Sunshine Coast in qualifying early on. He'll start on the pole, the beautifully named Billy James Whitaker stands, starts on the outside front row on the 24. Next row of the grid, Jack Desell, the 54 and Nathaniel Harrison, the number 70. Row number three, the 72 of Charlie Falonga and Connor O'Reilly. Then it's Cody Anderson, the 22. Isabella McDonald, the eight, in the 50 out of eight. Georgie Aiden starting from nine. Out of 10, it's the 44 of Kyle Musson. Out of row number six is 17 of Robert Mortensen and Jack Munro out of P12 in the 18. Callan Mullins in the nine will start from position 13, the two of Derek Jones from 14. Jack Chislowski and Cody Scott will run up on the eighth row of the grid. Mark Lees and Riley Vanderbroek in the 78 off of row nine. The 35 of Thomas Williams and Emily Cowell from row 10. On row 11 at Zimmerman and Beaumont Walsh. And it's Aquasana Lane, Lenahan, Duncan, Zimmerman and the rest as they go. No, they don't. Ten laps on the board. Back to where we were, Rollo Vanderbroek in 18th spot. 19th is Thomas Williams. Emily Cowell from 20 in the 38. Row 11 will be Dale Zimmerman, Julian Beaumont Walsh, the 28. Max Aquasana, the 77. Jaden Lane, the 23. Ned Lemina, the 81. Jack Duncan and Nick Zimmerman. That is your order. The three there that didn't set a time. We'll just have a look and see if they're on track. No, they are not. So it's Briggs and Billy James off the front. Problem for Isabella McDonald. We will get them underway, I think, this time. Lights are out and we're underway for 10 here. Tag restricted light. Down to turn number one they go. Nice start. Nice start through there. Oh, one's gone around big time toward the back. And he's off into the middle of the race circuit. But gee, it's nice and tight at the front. The titles are up for grabs. Oh, three wide if you don't mind. That's not a place you usually see. Carts go three wide. And certainly if they do go three wide, it's not often that it comes off. Oh, no, we've got one up and over in big, big style. 
He's up on his feet, thankfully. Not quite sure what condition the cart's going to be in. But they work their way back around. Our driver seems to be in good condition. He's pushing the cart out of the way. Briggs leads away over Billy James Whitaker. Then it's Harrison, followed by Morton's and Chislowski. Then it's Furlonger, Jones, Lees, Yade and Scott. Then William Zimmerman, Aquasana, Munro, Mullins. That's your top 15 as they sit at the moment. It could have been. I don't want to actually speculate on who it may may not have been. Could have been Jack Desell. Interesting day if it has been Jack Desell. But they work their way up towards the top G. Already your race leader has opened up a huge lead. Darcy Briggs. Now the battle's on for second. Harrison. He has a look up the inside and he gets into second just off screen there. So the number 70 machine into second in front of Billy James. And Robert Mortensen wants to get involved in that one too. Look at those three come to the line. And right behind them is Jack Chislowski. Chislowski got a good start. Where did he start? He started a lot further back, didn't he? He started back in 15th spot to Jake Chislowski. And already is up to P5 at the end of lap number one. So Jake Chislowski passed 10 carts in that opening circulation. No doubt plenty of action in front of G. One of our lappers just goes around and is able to rejoin. Oh, no, he doesn't. I don't know what's going on there. But either way, Darcy Briggs, your 21. Nathaniel Harrison, he's up on the wheel in the 70 machine. Down the back stretch, the battle's on for third between Billy James and Mortensen. Now there's the 17 machine of Mortensen up on the back of Billy James Whitaker. Across the, no, in fact, he's in second now. Here's Mortensen chasing down your race leader, Harrison. Harrison did the quickest lap of the race, so he must have been starting to feel the pressure and he has been able to open that gap. Chislowski starting to close in. He's up to third now. What a drive this is from the number 16 of Jake Chislowski. There he is, the third driver on screen. Bit of a shattered driver's society sitting on the inside of the race circuit at the moment. So a driver that was involved in that rollover with our medics and communicating certainly was straight on his feet and A-OK, -okay, which is good news. But that was, a, that was one of the best I've seen for a while, that's for sure. Did a couple of flips, went over twice, is what I was counting anyway, as they come on through now. The end of lap number four. Gee, it's been quick. Next time by will be there. Halfway point of this race. It's Harrison leading by seven tenths. There he is. In the 70, he's got it comfortably now over Mortensen, who's about to come under attack from Chislowski, the youngster in the number 16. The Dap cart, as they work their way up to the top, you can see that battle for a second. Chislowski thinking about a move at Autobahn. Door shut, not there. Will he have a look down the back stretch? He's close enough here to be inside the slipstream. But he's not close enough to get the real estate that he requires to effect a pass down through the hairpin as they come back around to the start finish line. We're at the halfway point now. Harrison's lead, nine tenths of a second over Mortens and Chislowski in third. Then there's a slight gap back to Billy James, who's got Derek Jones on his tail in the two machine. Then Scott, followed by Zimmerman, Munro, Aquasana and Lees. That's your top ten. But what about this drive from that man in that maroon and yellow machine, the Dap Cart, from position number 15 on the grid, now challenging for second spot. He seems like he's a little bit closer this time to Jack Chislowski to the rear of Robert Mortensen. As they go through the Autobahn corner, forget about the Nathaniel Harrison. He's comfortable as you can see. He's got it well and truly under control as they go down the back straight away. Just catches us. He's cart handling very nicely behind the brightly coloured Mortensen machine. Jones has got through on Billy James Whitaker. Your race leader Harrison's got nine tenths of a second over this pair. This is not over and done with. They will fight it out, I've got no doubt. Chisowski just can't get the purchase that he needs at the moment to open a gap. Or to open a door, I should say. 
He's a very experienced driver, is Jack Chazowski. So too, Robert Mortensen. Both have been around for a long time and certainly know this circuit like the back of their hands. Around they come. This will be the end of lap number seven, so only three to go now. Sam Mortensen's picked up the pace. He's just done the quickest lap of the race of 49. 708, he's taken a tenth of a second out of Harrison, but that's academic. Chizowski did a 49771. It's a hundredth of a second between our second and third place competitors, but I tell you what, Chizowski looks like he's had a good run on the first half of this lap. He looks a little bit closer than what he has been for some time. Does Jake Chizowski? Can he open it up here? Back in fourth spot are still Derek Jones and Whitaker Scott. Munro up to seventh now in front of Zimmerman, Aquasana and Lees. Back straightaway time. This battle continues on. They'll have two to go. There's a gap then. There's your fourth place driver in Derek Jones, a 2EB. Scott's now got through on Billy James Whitaker for fifth. Aquasana's up to eighth spot now. We've got a lap and a half left to go in at this one. If Jake Chislowski is going to make it, 13 positions gained, he's going to have to pull the finger out fairly shortly. Do have a slower competitor, our race leader, coming up towards. However, I doubt that they are going to catch him with just over a lap to go. Back straight away. There's your race leader, Harrison, bottom of screen. Mortensen looks to have this one in his safekeeping. I get the feeling with one to go now. They're on the last lap. Oh, Chislowski here. Will he have a last good gasp? He looked good through turn number one. What's he going to throw here at Mortensen? They are absolutely on a limiter out there. Oh, we do have a lap of getting involved. Oh, he goes off onto the grass. Oh, boy. More dramas here. And that's unsettled Harrison a little bit. So will Chislowski have a look here? That top three in frame together. Down the back straight away they go. This is Chislowski's final shot. Never go at Mortensen. Harrison's gathered his thoughts back up again. Down through the heap in they go for the final time. Around. Out of the onside rental group corner and onto the Capri straight away. And it's Harrison who gets the job done second place. Mortensen hangs on by his fingernails over Chislowski. Jones is the next one through. Then it was Scott, followed by Munro, Whitaker, Aquasanta. Then it's Zimmerman, followed by Lees, Calwell. Then Mullins for longer. Riley Vandenbroek home in 14th spot, O'Reilly. Then it's Duncan, followed by Zimmerman. Then it's Julian Beaumont, Walsh, Jaden Lane and Isabella. McDonald rounds out your 20th and final race finisher. We do have a few to pick up after that, but that was a great drive by Nathaniel Harrison. Controlled it well and truly from the start. He takes a win. We have got one more race to go in this opening round of heats, that being tag restricted masters. We're going to take a breath and be back with that very soon here at Ipswich.
So welcome back to Ipswich and the more distinguished drivers, you might say, in tag restricted masters hit the circuit for their opening heat race here. Ten laps as our feature category here this weekend. The 28 of Gavin Sow to line up on the pole after qualifying this morning. The only driver to get into the 59s. Then it's Alan Mays, the six on the outside front row. Scott Hisco, the number five, will line up on the second row with Michael Robinson, the 23. Row number three is Carl Davison, the 33, and Aaron Rope Jones, the 22. Row number four is the 60 of Matt Donnelly and Ben Spalding in the 35. Scotty Gray, the 74, and Chris Board in the 43 will line up on row number five. Then row six is Mark Robinson, the 18, and Tim Lemon in the 40. Row number seven is Anthony Murphy and Evan Broughton, the 91. Then it's Jeffrey Bolton and Adrian Ferguson in the 
25. Mark Brogan to 79. Linus Brown to 44. In row 10, it's the 17 of Adrian Godfrey and Scotty Campbell to 55. The 10 of Brad Garrity will line up 21st position. And Matt Meyer in the 76 out of 22. Chris Briggs to 16. Stephen Johns to 47. Kevin Field to 26. Then Fletcher and Darcy. So, judging by the lap times versus the other restricteds, very much on a drying surface when they were established. So, around they come. <coughs> Set for a start now. Soward and Mays were away. Down to the first turn they charge. Just because they're over the age of 35 doesn't necessarily mean that the racing is any less frantic. In some cases, it's even more frantic. There's got a bit going on down to the back there. But anyway, up the front. Been a nice start in our top two. Have opened up the gap. Sound leading the way up to the top turn. <laughs> Through Autobahn for the first time they come. Through the hairpin corner. Oh, geez. Tell you what, the number six of Mays, he's keen to get on it in this cosmic cart. He doesn't want to hang around because he knows that there's a group right behind, headed up by the five of Scott Hisco that he's charging on. He's got Michael Robinson on his tail as Hisco, who in turn has been spalding right there with him in fifth. To Sauer is your lead up. The end of the first lap of our 10 here. What a battle pack that is from third backwards. There's about 10 of them involved in that. That's huge in the early stages of this one, and it's a massive lead that Soward and Mays have been able to produce. This category is based on... Oh, one's gone a little bit sideways out of that second group. Uh... This category is based on paratisation as there are a number of different engines that are available for use in tag racing. They undergo a rigorous testing situation from Karting Australia. So they will change the minimum driver and cart weight depending on how that works out in that testing. Then to add another element to it, being restricted means that it restricts the amount of power you've got underneath your right foot. So if this was an open tag, you'd be looking at about 28, 29 horsepower. This is a lot less than that. So through the left-hander of Video Pro goes this group. Have a look at it, would you? What a terrific group that is of drivers up to the top turn. Move coming from within that pack. And now the number five is under attack there. Fisco. A man in the 23 of Robinson, he said, thank you very much. You can have a squabble. I'm going to rack up third position and pull away. As they come to the line, the five of Hisco has got the 43 of Chris Board. Gee, it's good to see Chris with us here this weekend. Haven't seen him behind the wheel for some time, Chris Board. And the number 43, DR Carter, familiar chassis for him. He is up on the wheel and well and truly in the mix in this one. He qualified down in 10th position. And there he is in the middle of that trio that you could see on your on the track there. But there's the top two. They go through. No change there. Soward and Mays. Mays the quickest one at the moment. Board getting defensive through the video pro corner as they work their way up towards the top part of the race circuit. Over the back part, you can see at the top of the circuit, that is Willow Bank Raceway, the famed dragway here at... Ipswich, or we are about 15 minutes outside the city of Ipswich, about an hour or a little bit less from the city of Brisbane, the capital of Queensland. So at the end of lap number four, Gavin Soward leads away over Alan Mays, Michael Robinson, then Hisco. Gray up to fifth spot, then board into six. Spalding, Rab Jones, then Murphy and Bolton rounding out your top ten. Evan Broughton's lost a few places on that level. Oh, it's starting to get a bit willing here. There's the five. He's under attack now from the 74 of Gray. So Gray, he's moved up a spot. He's now pushing on for fourth position. They go through the left-hander. 
Tell you what, the fifth of Hisco didn't get a good run there in the Cart Republic, and he got a terrible run because the door opens and Gray goes up the inside and moves up a spot as they go down the back stretch. That could open up another manoeuvre here. Down through the left hander they run, and certainly it does open up another manoeuvre just off screen. So Alan May is at the halfway point in second spot. He's decided he wants to get a bit racy. Just does the quickest lap of the race of 51.711. And he's right there with your race leader. There's the battle for the race lead. Soward in the tennis ball coloured helmet. He leads away down to the video pro corner. Not quite close enough at this stage. Through the left hander they go. They have got a massive advantage here over Robinson. And Sowards responded to the pressure that he was feeling from Mays. So it's the ebb and flow of this race. It's fascinating to see how this plays out. Last time through, Mays did the quickest lap of the race. I wouldn't be surprised if Sowards responded this time by. We'll wait for them to come to the line. That traffic, traffic of the 76 gets out of the way. And indeed, Sowards responded a 51.763, not the quickest. However, he has pulled four tenths of a second on Mays that time. Gray in fourth. Just does a new best lap out there, a 51.638. So good stuff. There's a way this continues to work its way out. We are on lap number seven now. So they're starting to wind down. This will be the end of our opening round of heats. Down the back stretch they go. There's a gap there from Mays back to Robinson. Gray still pushing on in the fourth position. Spalding's got through on board out there for P5. So Board made all the early running there, but has dropped back to the sixth position. Rap Jones trying to make some ground out there as well. He started six, and in fact, he's running seventh. Battle for third and fourth between Robinson and Gray. It's on. They're nose to tail as they go through Video Pro. Then you can see the gap there. There's the 74 machine. Of Gray goes to the move up the inside. Nice move. And Scott Gray goes up to P3. The man in the black helmet down the back stretch and he'll try and pull out on Robinson. Robinson had all the early running but clearly the number 74 has been set up for the late stages of this race as they come back around. Soward has just done the quickest lap of the race. He is on top of this one as he is on lap number nine. He's only got two to go. No change between our race leader and second spot. The gap is, in fact, at just over six tenths of a second. There you can see it. Soward leading the way now. There he is, the number 28. He set the pole time by six tenths of a second in qualifying earlier on today. Picked the time beautifully to set that time. And he has just continued on up the front. He will come around. He'll get the last lap board this time when he comes to the start finish line on the Capri straight away. And he's got seven tenths of a second over Mays there. What's a bit going on here in this little battle that was on screen. They haven't uh, given up the chase just yet. Meantime, checkered flag begins to get unfurled for Gavin Sauer. He goes through the top part of the race circuit. Here he is for the final time. He'll head up to the Autobahn corner. It's been a fine drive from Gavin Soward here. Alan Mays had the early pressure, but he's had to yield. He knows that he's got a huge gap between himself and the third place campaigner. So just protect that for later on this afternoon. He will again start up toward the front, of course, as a result of qualifying. As they come to the line, check it flag at the ready. And Soward gets it done. Second place goes to Mays. Then a 74 of Gray comes home third, followed by Robinson home in fourth spot, waiting now for Spalding in fifth placing. They got a bit spread out towards the back there. Aaron Red Jones, he's in sixth. 
The seventh spot was Murphy. Darcy rounding into eighth spot. That's a great drive from Darcy to come from 27th on the grid. Hisco. Then it was Bolton, Mark Robinson. Then Board dropped back to 12th. Then Brogan, Campbell, Ferguson. Then a Stephen Johns, followed by Godfrey Briggs. Then Linus Brown. What are you on now for? Carl Davison, Peter Fletcher, Kevin Field and Brad Garrity to round out your finishes here. That's the end of Tag Restricted Masters Heat number one. That's the end of round number one of heats. We are going to go and clean up what's out on the circuit. Catch our breath, have a drink and be back with round number two. You're watching the Ipswich Kart Club April Club Day here, live and exclusive. Welcome back to Ipswich. Round number two of heats coming your way as they hit the circuit. It's Cadet 9 and 4SS Cadet out on circuit at the moment. So through they come. So we'll flip them from where they were in the opening heat race in terms of their grid positions. Oscar Kozak, he didn't need a second invitation off the start in heat number one. He will actually start on the pole this time in a 66. Hudson Kelly, the four, will line up out of position two. Martin Shea, the 78, out of three. Oscar Ray, the two out of four. Row three is Luke Robinson, the 57. Scarlett Mitrovic in the 25. Luca Rasso will line up on row four in the 98 with Ricardo Johnson in the number 50 on row five. It's Oliver Flack, the 11. Fred Waddy in the number three. Then it's Jet May. There's Lucas Losco, the 92, our opening heat race winner. Then on row seven, it's Jacob Brook Lanahan, Hugo James, Jonathan Mathers, and of the four assessors, it's Bailey, Majorak, and Hocking. And we're going to give them one more before we let them loose for eight laps around this one. So we saw the dominance of Lucas Losco from toward the front of the field the last time. He now has all the work to do. How we set the grids for this one, if you are just tuning in for all but our feature categories, is that they are randomly drawn. They are lined up for heat number one. Then we flip them for heat number two. For heat three, we then combine their finishing positions and that will set us our grid and the same for the final so Kozak looking pretty good in the early stages of this one. As I said before, watch for the all-black sticker kit of the 92 from Losca out of 12. Set for a start. Racing. Down to turn number one they go. Oh, one's gone around. Oh, they all are able to get back. Only one's facing the wrong way. However, 
The rest of them get through. It could have got a little messy there as they work their way through to start this one. It's a 66 machine. On screen, that is Oscar Kozak. He had the pace in our earlier heat race, and there he is up the front in the, out of the RHQ corner, and he wants to establish a lead fairly quickly in this one. Where's Losco? He's already up to P5. So... The cousin of Troy Losco, who we've seen a couple of times today, started his national racing just last year in this cadet class. Of course, the youngest age of drivers in Australian karting competition from the age of seven through to the age of nine. You can start practicing from the age of six. There's also the SP Tools Junior Sprocket Program. That's our school holiday uh, program in Karting Australia. Jump on to karting.net.au for all the information on that. And what a beautiful move that is down through turn number one from Oscar Ray with Lucas Losco right on his tail. And they move their way past Martin Shea into second and third position, respectively. And all over the tail there of... Oscar Ray is Lucas Losco. They bump drafted their way into second and third position out of RHQ. They go. They are going to try and work together to catch up to your race leader, Oscar Kozak. As up the inside goes Losco, the All Black number 92. So he has wasted little time to come from 12th on the grid into P2. There he is. Right. In fact, that was the number 11 of Oliver Flack that went with him. So Flack is right there in the Tony Cart machine. Down the back straight away they go. In through the hairpin. Oh, he went in a little bit wide. Right there did Lucas. He's got the blue plates on. That denotes that he is a state champion in this category. Good afternoon to everyone tuning in through speedcafe.com slash karting this afternoon as well. Trust you're enjoying all the action that we are bringing you from Ipswich here this weekend. Gee, a bit going on down through turn number one there. Further back in the pack, but Here's Losco. He's all over the back of your race leader. It's taken in no time at all up the inside at Electro. You don't often see a move there, but Lucas Losco, he has got this machine absolutely on rails here this weekend. Down through the video pro corner they go, and Lucas Losco, he gets straight back to the race lead and says, forget about it, I am O-U-T. And he certainly wants to set himself up with a second round of the Australian Championships. Coming up in a couple of weeks' time, he would consider himself the absolute favourite or one of the absolute favourites for Cadet 9 in this year's championship. I can see his mentor Joshua Carr down on the fence, an Australian champion in his own right out of the Velocity Race Department. He is watching the youngster absolutely pull away here. He not only got to the race lead but he pulled a 1.1 second lead over Oliver Flack who's also got past Oscar Kozak on that lap. So the, le the order after three laps is Losco, Flack, Kozak, Brook Lenahan having a much happier race this time around. Johnston, then Ray Mathers, then a Shea, Kelly and Majorak rounding out your 10 the first of the four SS drivers. Look at this battle for third here. Coming through the left hand up. And a big a move coming there from Ricardo Johnson to move up to fourth spot. Up to the top turn they go. There's the 66 of Kozak. He's about to come under pressure from Brooke Lanahan. He's in the slipstream. In fact, that's Johnson, I should say. Correction. Down in through the hairpin. So Ricardo Johnson has got speed to burn with that blue helmet. The second on screen here at the moment. And look at this around the outside. I think that was Brooke Lanahan trying to make an outside manoeuvre. No, it was a 72. Yes, well, yeah, that is Brooke Lanahan. I beg your pardon. Down in turn number one, it's all happening out there. This is the battle for third spot that you're watching. Remember, these kids are under the age of nine. Brilliant racecraft and brilliant respect shown between them. As I say that, that may soon all blow up in my face for making that assumption. Down to Video Pro, they go a five cart battle now for position number three. Through Autobahn they go now. It's a high speed freight train. These kids will be getting upwards of 90 kilometres an hour out on this circuit. Oh, geez. Bit of a wide run there. Lenahan trying to make his way through. The door was shut. He had nowhere to go as they come to the line. The 66 of Kozak holding on to it. Brooke Lanahan chucking everything at him. Here he up the inside. Oh, the door gets shut. They both continue on. There was millimetres between them through turn number one. And Kozak hung tough. Brooke Lenahan threw everything at him. Ricardo Johnson still there. 
in fourth in in fact, that is Ricardo Johnson in fourth spot. Then Brooke Lenahan behind. I beg your pardon. Oh, big move there from Johnson. He gets up the inside to third. That's really closed them up in this style of racing. It comes back to momentum, particularly with these mini rock motors. Six laps in the books for your race leader. There's been a couple of shuffles. We'll have to wait till they come back to the start finish loss line. There's no mistake about Losco on Flack 1 and 2 at the moment. Who's third? It's a 50 of Johnson. Followed by Kozak, then Brook Lenahan, Ray, then Mathers in seventh. He is up and about is Jonathan Mathers. He's still got the P-plates on. Has Jonathan, he's been incredibly impressive over the last couple of rounds. Angus will no doubt be down there cheering him on. Keeping an eye on what the youngster is up to. Losco's lead already up to 2.6 seconds. This is huge. He certainly made his claim in the early stages of this one. You can see that Johnson in third spot. He and Kozak have decided just to go away from Brooke Lenahan, who's under the pump now from Oscar Ray down the back straight away. One to go for Losco to make it two from two. Here's the next group coming across the line. There's the 50 of Johnson. Kozak behind him. Then now it's on. The number two machine up the inside of Oscar Ray. Oop. Ray goes through. Not over and done with just yet for those minor spots. Johnson looks fairly comfortable in third with half a lap to go the blue helmet. As Losco goes through the top turn at Auto Barn. He's down the back stretch for the final time. He's got a commanding lead over Oliver Flack. Onto the front straight away comes your race leader, soon to become the race winner. And there he is. Lucas Losco, two from two. Flack into second. Then waiting now on Ricardo Johnson to come to the line. Then it was the 66 of Kozak, followed by Ray, Brooke Lanahan, Mathers in seventh. Good drive. Then we're waiting on now for Shay. Oh, Kelly, in fact, got through on Shay on the last lap. Then Majorek will be the first of the four SS to come to the line, followed by Waddy. Then it was Bailey and Hawking. We're going to take a break here at Ipswich. You're watching our April Club Day. Coming to you live here today.
on what dawned as a pretty bleak day here in Ipswich, just west of Brisbane. It's become absolutely beautiful out there as the temperature starts to rise. The rubber starts to go down. You don't necessarily want to get off into the grass, otherwise you may get a face full of mud. KO3 Junior Heavy out on circuit. Matt Payne bringing you all the action from this April event here at Ipswich. An unprecedented event to be covered on live stream. Great effort, great initiative by the Ipswich Car Club. Something that's been in the planning for a long time, but something that was brought to life this weekend. Trusting that you are enjoying the action wherever you're watching us from, whether in Australia or around the world. We'll check the messages a little bit later just to see where we might have some people tuning in from. Cooper Friend's going to start this one. K3 Junior Heavy Heat number two off the pole in the eight. Hudson Lippiat, the 66 outside front row. Tyson McGill, he'll be tough from P3 in the 36 with Will Carmichael. The 23 from four. Oliver Aquasena out of five in the 29 with Tyler Tilmouth alongside the 97. Zoe Vilchard, the 16 and the seven of Max Southgate on row four. Row five, Charlotte Page and Cooper Fish. The 91 then is Leo Fishley, Bailey Hilda. Chapman, Cowan, McKinn with Green. Down to turn number one they go. What's the start looking like through there? And it looks all pretty reasonable. Everyone's got away and behaved themselves off the start. It's unusual. So <laughs> through they go. Eight laps on the board. Oh, no, our second place driver's been spat out. I think that was McGill. Certainly looked like the colours. We'll have to pick it up for you. Moved fairly quickly there, and I couldn't quite pick up the precise number on that one, but it was an energy course machine, that is for sure. Indeed, it does look like it is the 36 rejoining the action with the 66, I think, of Hudson Lippiat. So two of our top contenders striking trouble on lap number one as they come to the line to complete lap number one. Look at the lead that our race leader's got already in this one. What about the battle already for a second? It's going absolutely butcher out there. The Charlotte Page makes it up to P4 into turn number one. Your leader's Cooper Friend. He's given him a clean set of wheels and said, I'm out of here. Tyler Tillmouth into second spot. The 66 of Lippiat pulls out of commission. Tillmouth into second. Aquasena, Carmichael and Page or Page in front of Carmichael now. And Charlotte Fresh from the Champions of the Future Academy in Italy just last weekend. No doubt wouldn't even be over the jet lag just then yet. Up through the Autobahn corner they go. She's into P3 and already showing that the challenge of European racing is translating back to a club racing here. She is on the charge. Is the Empire Cart Sport number 22. Onto the front straightaway goes friend your leader. Then in second spot, it's Tillmouth, followed by the 22 of Page as they come charging on. Down the front stretch, Vilchard's in sixth spot, Bailey down in seventh, then Southgate, Fishley, Fish, Leo, Hilda, Chapman, Cowan, McKinn, McMinn, I should say, and McGill. Fastest lap after spinning out in the early phases of lap number one. Oh, one's just gone uh, high, wide and handsome. You can see at the bottom of your screen there at Video Pro. So down the back straight away, friend. He's got 1.3 seconds advantage over Tyler Tillmouth. Then they're bat bottling up behind Charlotte Page as she tries to pull away. She's got Oliver Akasana and Will Carmichael for company as they come across the start finish line right there in your shot. Then they've got to get back to Buster Bailey in the six machine. There's Page in third placing. The pink and black Empire Kart Sports Machine. Has that F1 Academy scholarship, of course, F1 Academy. Managing director of that is Susie Wolf, partner of Mercedes AMG Petronas Formula One team boss in Toto Wolf. Back in the headlines as Toto for another disparaging comment about 
Australian official Michael Massey in a new book that's just been released. I'm actually really looking forward to reading that book, even though Toto was wildly wrong as they work their way back to the start-finish straight. The battle's on for the race lead now between Cooper Friend and Tyler Tillmouth. Tillmouth's just done the quickest lap of the race, and it have Cooper Fish further down the order set a near quickest lap. Here it is. Now, look at Tillmouth in the number 97 machine, all over the back of Cooper Friend. Through the RHQ corner, he's got the speed, the number 97 in second spot. Where's it going to try and affect a pass? Up toward the Autobahn corner they run. Through there they go. Now, is Tillmouth in the slipstream here? He certainly is. Will he have the opportunity to have a look at the hairpin? A little bit of sideways action you could see there from the eight of friend. Oh, Tillmouth just touches the rear, just tries to unsettle the number eight arrow cart of Cooper Friend, of course, Arrow, the Australian-built chassis, built down there in uh, Melbourne by DPE Cart Engineering. They've had a resurgence of late. The focus has purely gone back into the Arrow carts, disbanding their importation of other chassis. But look at Tyler Tilmouth. He is right there with him. However, we're working lap number six. These two have to be quite careful because in this form of racing, it doesn't take long for others to try and catch up. Those others being Charlotte Page, Will Carmichael and Oliver Aquasana as further back, Zach Hilda makes up a spot and sets a new quickest lap of the race. I tell you what, Tilmouth's cart is handling much nicer at the moment than what Cooper Friends is, as you can see on screen as they come to the staff finishing line with two laps to go down the straightaway they go for or the Capri straightaway, that is. Now yeah, look at Tyler Tillmouth. Here he is up the inside. Can he hold on here? He gets to the lead. A great move there from Tyler Tillmouth. He had to try and make the move on Cooper Friend. He forced the issue. He didn't touch him, of course. You could see that very clearly. Nice and tightly captured by our team here at Ipswich. Through the left hander they run. Well, they've squabbled. Charlotte Page has got close up. The last lap, they were very similar lap times. However, the momentum shift has allowed Charlotte to get closer. Problem for Charlotte is though, they get the last lap board when they come to the line this time and she's under attack now from Carmichael. Onto the start finish line they come. One lap to go for Tyler Tilmouth out there. Then it's Cooper Friend, Paige holding down third. Will Carmichael right in behind her. And wow, Tillmouth, since getting into the lead a lap ago, has just put the glasses down and said, I am O-U-T. He's out of there, man. And Charlotte, a good drive from her. She's sitting there in third, trying to close down on the back of Friend. But that'll certainly position her nicely for heat number three, coming up a bit later on. Through the Autobahn corner and onto the back straightaway goes your race leader. It's been a fine drive from the driver of the number 97, Para Lynn, in at Tyler Tillmouth. He set it up nicely. He comes out of the Howard's Concreting corner, then through on-site rentals, onto the Capri straightaway, and he will get the chequered flag. And Tyler Tillmouth, he celebrates that because... That was a great drive and a confidence-boosting drive there for Tyler Tillmouth. He gets a win by nine tenths of a second from Cooper Friend, then Charlotte Page, Will Carmichael, Oliver Aquasana, then Cooper Fish, Buster Bailey, Zach Hilda home in eighth, then Tyson McGill waiting now on Caden McGinn, McMinn I should say, and the remainder of the field to come through. There is Zane Chapman. Then it is Hamish McCowan, Jack, Hamish Cowan, I should say, Jackson Fishley and Marcus Leo and Maxwell Southgate running out our finishes. So that completes heat number two for KA3 Junior Heavy. Cadet 12, this huge field will take to the circuit once we come back from a very short break.
So out they come for Cadet 12 and their second heat race of the day. So again, we flipped them from where they started heat number one so this is going to be very interesting off the front of the row front row the grid two of the lady races the 59 of olivia walton chelsea flack the 60 next row of the grid tyler hall the 22 jeremy broadman he's always quick in the 32 row number three is geordie butler the 12 the 88 of archer bailey alongside row number four jack larson the 35 and april flack out of position eight row fives page flack in the 14 and jack masico in the 26 blake haig in the 75 he's been a bit off the pace this this year has Blake Haig, then Andrew Thompson, then it's Knox Black, and then it will be Cruz Petroni, Alistair Leggett, Michael Quintiliani. As my screen decides to have a little bit of a flurry. Carter Lampard, then Aston Mills, Brocky Nolan. Again, gee, he didn't get a good draw, did Brock Nolan. He'll start down in 21st. Campbell Dawson, then it's Leighton Thorley back in 23rd spot. Nicholas Kinder out of 24. Cooper Folly, then it's Mikko Waddy, Oliver Tresillian, then it's Carson. Carter Grow there out of 29th. Then Shelby Smith, Monty Jamison, Vince Turhorse, Flack, Watts, Curtis Smith, Hobday Jones, McColl and Fuller. A huge field, as always, of these youngsters. The future of Australian motorsport out on circuit. We are getting set for a start here in Cadet 12. Heat number two. Watch out. Down at turn number one. We are away. No, we're not. Our starter wasn't happy. We've got a couple that have struck trouble on their way around. But one that's stuck on the circuit. I don't know what he's trying to do there. I would say he... We should be trying to get it restarted, but obviously it's not cooperating, so probably needs to extricate himself from the cart because the full field's coming around, and that's going to cause some drama fairly shortly. Push him out of the way, so that's the end of that. So we're two down from our 39 a cart field. So we'll get them underway this time. One of our drivers there, you can see him as they come by, dusted, busted, and disgusted. Set for a start this time, eight on the board. We're away this time, down to turn number one. Hold on to your hats, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. How do they go? There's only one that's gone backwards. We'll get one who gets some air time. And a couple that have gone off to the left-hand side there and out of a commission. All are A-OK -okay at this point of proceedings. Down to the Video Pro Corner. Here comes all the big moves in the early stages of the race. This is where it gets interesting. Up towards the top part of the race circuit they go. Everyone getting themselves into their racing orders. We've been able to clear the track down at turn number one. Oh no, we're going full course caution. So, our first full course caution of the day. Basically what's happened is right around the race circuit, the yellow lights are flashing. We've got a drama for a competitor down at turn number one. If you're familiar with other forms of motorsport, this is our version of a safety car. So basically the pace is controlled by a race leader. This is an initiative that was inaugurated in Australia. It has been adopted in Europe, I've noticed, this year as well. So it's taken up until this year for Europe to adopt this procedure. Was brought in by Australia, as I said. So what this gives us the opportunity to do, if we do have a blockage of the race circuit or a driver in distress, which is the case that we have in front of us right now, it allows our officials and medical team, if required, to get over and assess that driver. Should further attention be required, we then will go red flag. However, we are under the full course caution for the time being until we assess what the situation is. We've got our officials and medical team, Johnny, on the spot down there at turn number one. Said before, a terrific weekend of racing right around the world this weekend. I just had the 
NASCAR Truck Series up. It was on with Cameron Waters racing down there. So uh, over there at Martinsville, I did see a headline as well that uh, he has earned himself a second Truck Series start. So that was before the Martinsville race got underway. I'm sure that you'll be able to catch that on demand throughout the course of the weekend. Shane Van Gisbergen uh, up and running tomorrow, of course, in the in the uh, next NASCAR Xfinity Series, and hasn't he had an incredible impact? There's the 44 off to the side of the race circuit. So that's the sorry side. Of course, the 44 being Jack's full up. Got a couple of flax out of commission. Carter Grother's out of commission as well, the number 42 machine. So not the start that the Gladstone racer was after at in Hob Day. Oliver Jones and Jax Fuller, they are the drivers that aren't with us at the moment. Looks as though Thompson Petroni. In fact, Hoare, Thompson, Petroni, Leggett and Folly aren't on circuit at the moment. And we are going to go full red flag. So as you can see on your screen, we are going to go full red flag. So we will bring them in. Our medical team is down there. We are going to take a break here at Ipswich. We'll assess the situation and bring out our next race as soon as we can. You're watching our April race meeting from here at Ipswich.
And welcome back to Ipswich. After that brief red flag period, the driver that was in distress has been assessed by our paramedics and uh, is communicating with them and is in not too much difficulty. So that's good news. And we've been given permission to get back underway with racing. So Cadet 12, they've certainly been in the thick of it here this weekend, as you'd expect from a 39 cart grid. So we have got them in a nose to tail formation, a single file formation, and we will pick up at the beginning of lap number three with Jeremy Broadbent on top in the number 32 machine. So basically we are gonna go racing for five laps here in this Cadet 12 heat number two here this afternoon, the Power Republic machine of Jeremy Broadbent leads them around. We're racing yet again. No, we're not, are we? No, we're going to give them one more, sorry. Missed the memo. So we'll give them a full lap to be ready to go racing yet again. such a good field a lot of these drivers you'd see at national championship level but well, we say cadet 12 the ages of 9 to 12 a lot of these drivers have been involved in the sport for many many years already so we've got the green flag in the hand of our starter on the start finish line Let's see who's been watching a bit of NASCAR or IndyCar here. It gets the best of the restart. They bunch up behind Broadbent in the 32. Larson's in second. Chelsea Flack, she's in third. Geordie Butler, Paige Flack back in fifth. Bailey, Walton, Haig, Mills, April Flack, Alistair Flack. It's a Flackathon. Mazzico, Curtis, Nolan in 14th. Set for us, restart. Around they come, green flag in the air. We're racing once again. Down to turn number one they go. Broadbent leads away the 35. Of Larson has a go already down to turn number one. Larson taking no prisoners. Says thanks very much. I'm going to grab it off the restart. And he goes straight to the race lead. Does it. Jack Larson in the 35. Through the left hander they go and towards Electro. Everyone right in there to restart things. Oh, one's just gone wide and you can see him off to the right hand side there. He's just gone through a mud patch and he is stuck. Stuck in the mud. Up the top turn they go with Auto Barn. Couple of wild moves going into that passing area through there. Down the back stretch they go. There is one of our drivers. It looked like the 90 I think that was that was off and out of commission, that being the Birrell Art through the final set of turns. And Larson's already started to open up a lead. Over the 32 of Broadbent, then behind them, it's Butler, Flack, Haig, Mills. Jim Mills has had a good run, so too. Bailey, so is Blake, Blake Haig up in the mix there. So a top two starting to open a gap, but have a look what's going on behind. It's all starting to fire up there. Working their way through... This middle twisty part of the circuit, the most technical part of this Ipswich Kart Raceway. Whoa, another one gets out in the mud. You can see there, rejoins back into it, but has lost a whole heap of positions and those Maxis tyres will be utterly filthy up to the top turn at Autobahn they run now. They're going three wide into that area. They all work their way out down the back stretch. We've got a new third place competitor in Paige Flack who's got past Butler. Out of the bottom turn they come and around to the start finish straight. Broadbent going with Larson. In fact, that's Blake Haig who's been making the ground. The number 75 driver, Blake Haig. He has now moved himself into third position and he's starting to pull away. So we haven't seen much of Blake for a while. And there he is now in P3 in front of Geordie Butler. Then a little gap then back to Flack, Curtis and Bailey with Xander Watts. Down in eighth spot, the quickest driver on circuit in the 57. Up towards the Autobahn corner they go. 
Look at the pace that Haig's got, that yellow cart in third position. He's trying to close in on these two. If Broadbent, if he picks it up and starts to mount a challenge on Larson, then Blake Haig will be right amongst it. Working their way out of on-site, Ronald Group's corner, Haig's got his own trouble. That being... The number 12 machine, the 10 machine of Flack, I should say. He is the quickest on circuit now as Alistair in that fourth spot. Down through turn number one, Flack up the inside. Great move there for third. Can he hang onto it? Yes, he can. And now Alistair Flack, he has his eyes on this battle for the race league lead. If you're Blake Haig, you just hang on to the crash bar of the number 10 and go with him. Stick in the slipstream and then make it a race in four for the lead here. He may not need to worry about sticking with the crash bar of Haig because if Broadbent decides to throw the haymaker at Larson as they come out of the... Onto the back straightaway, it's really closed up here. Here comes Broadbent, he's gonna be on the high line at the hairpin. He'll be aiming for a switch back here. Oh no, it hasn't worked out for him. But he's got the inside line into the Howard's concreting corner and onto the staff finish straight they go. It's all bottled up and Hague's back in the mix. He's up the inside there of the number 10 of Flack. Flack holds on to it through turn one. Nice and tight. Then right behind them, it's Hyde O'Reilly Curtis. He's the fastest driver on the track at the moment. He's trying to get up onto racing terms with Blake Haig. Meantime, while this lot has been battling it out, Jack Larson said, thanks very much. I am out of here. He's opened up his gap to about five cart lengths as they come to Video Pro Corner. They get down on the hard-breaking area and working their way up to Auto Barn again. The battle's on for second. Is there a move coming? Indeed, there is. Is, and Flack goes up the inside of Broadbent and into second spot. So can he now start to close the gap up to Jack Larson? Meantime, Haig under attack there from Curtis who goes up the inside and he moves, but that's all academic because the chequered flag is out in this one for Jack Larson. He comes to the line and he takes a win. Second place goes to Flack after all of that. Then it was Broadbent, Curtis. Then it was Haig, Watts, Bailey, Mills, Turhorse and Butler. Nolan home in 11 spot, then Jamison, Kinder, Masico, Quintiliani, then it was April Flack, Paige Flack, Waddy, then Olivia Walton down to 19th, Lennox Carson, then after that was Leighton Sawley, Carter Lampard, Campbell Dawson, then Tresillian, and following from Tresillian, uh, Tresillian was actually our last driver across the finish line. There was quite a few there that didn't finish that one. We've got a couple to try and pack up. We're going to take a break here at Ipswich and we'll be back with 4SS Junior not too far away.
back with for SS Junior on Circuit. Trust that you are enjoying all the action here from Ipswich and a big g'day to all of our friends in Sydney and New South Wales who are tuning in. Trust that everyone is going okay with the horrendous weather that has struck overnight down there. Of course, just seeing that the Greater Sydney Cart Club has been struck by some flooding down there. So thinking of those guys and hopefully they can get that cleared uh, safely and well without too much damage. Harrison Lippiet will start on the pole in this one in the 51. Jackson DeWong, the 13, on the outside front row. Jackson Turner, he had an eventful heat number one. He'll start from three in the 88. Buster Bailey out of four in the six. Dane Norris is 62 from 5 and Hamish Douglas is 25 with J.D. Chapman starting out of position number 7 in the 27. This was a cool race in heat number 1. Turner got the job done in the BRM after all sorts of action. He was on elastic. We'll see what he can do this time. The green, 8 on the board, down to turn number 1. The four strikers kick it off. Lippiat has got the best of the start aboard the number 51. You want to try and start to pull a gap already on Jackson DeWong, but as we know, Jackson DeWong in this category is having absolutely none of it. And he will throw literally anything that he possibly can to be right there among the front runners. Up through the right hander at Autobahn they go. And G. Duong's got a good run already as they hit the back straight away. You can hear that sound, that distinctive four-stroke sound of the Torini engines. And now Duong takes the race lead. Onto the front stretch they come. So Duong leads away over the 51 Olympiad. Then Bailey's got his own battle going on. With our man from heat number one, Jackson Turner, can see the Kodak Racing team down there keeping a close eye on what Turner is up to. Oh, and he goes wide. <laughs> so that's what he's up to while he was trying to battle it out for a third spot finish. Buster Bailey, he's on the move. That green cart starting to close in on the back of Lippy at the CRG as they go up toward the Autobahn corner. It's a little bit tame compared to what we saw the last time out. Of course, these drivers utilising that Torini engine out of the same stable as SP Tools. It's a an Australian devised engine built overseas and then brought back to Australia. A bit going on between Lippiat and Dewong, but Dewong reassumes the lead. Bailey says, I'm going to catch in here and try and capitalise as they go across the line. They're a very low maintenance engine, these ones. Makes for a cheap way to go racing and certainly a great way to get involved in racing if you are new to the sport. Not a huge amount of horsepower get yourself into trouble although I have seen some 4SS races over my time get into some trouble Buster Bailey the quickest out there aboard the 6 at the moment he's doing everything he can to get under the tail of Lippiat and then try and resume hostilities with Jackson DeWong as well but DeWong wants none of it he just wants to get away but Lippiat's running with him watch out because here comes Turner for fourth for third from fourth and up at the inside he goes with the arrow of DeWong there, the number 13. It's a regular podium visitor in this one. There you can see the 88 machine of Turner, the BRM, up to third spot. Now he's got his eye on the two in front of him. So can Turner use any pace that he might have to close that gap that's in front of him? This stage, it's only early, but this stage I'm tipping that he's going to have to require Lippiat to throw a challenge out on Jackson DeWong and maybe a little bit of argy-bargy before it all closes up. Trust that you're enjoying the action coming to you live today. If Switch Car Club have put the deal together to bring you all the action. So Lippiat's picked up the pace here. He's right on the tail of DeWong, but DeWong goes, I'm just going to do the quickest lap of the race, so you're going to have to try a bit harder, son.
We're on lap number five now, so we're past the halfway point. Your order's De Wong, followed by Lipiat, then it's Turner, Bailey, Norris, Douglas and Chapman. It's our team from Calling All Sports Brisbane, bringing you every lap all day long here at Ipswich. Great to have John Devine and his team working overtime since the early hours of this morning. A lot of research and work into getting this up and running and doing a fine job so far. So Duong and Lipiat, very evenly matched. It's just a couple of hundredths of a second between them in terms of their lap time. Turner's actually pulled clear of Buster Bailey and that one behind them. Norris and Douglas are going at it and then they've got a gap back to J.D. Chapman in the 27. J.D., one of his first race meetings, got the P-plates on. Of course, if you are new to karting, you wear P-plates. It's much like driving on the road. You're assessed by our officials as to your performance and they'll tick off your licence. Once you've got enough signatures, you are then free to join the rest of the fray. As they work their way back around, this is the end of lap Number six, two to go for Jackson DeWall. Can he hold on here? For Turner in third, a new quickest lap of the race. He's got a fair gap, as you can see there, going down through turn number one between himself and Lipiat. I think Lipiat's picked up the pace here. He was slower than DeWong last time through, but he realises now that it, he has got just a bit over a lap to go, a lap and a third. As they go down into the left hander, he knows that he's going to get the last lap board the next time. So he's got to try and keep racing terms with Jackson DeWong. DeWong's the man of the category. He's the one that they need to catch. <clears throat> down through the hairpin. Lipiat looks a bit closer this time. They get the last lap board, so there's only one remaining behind them. There's no change in the order. Jackson Turner in a very comfortable third spot. In fact, Duong, I thought that Lipiat might have thrown one here at Duong, but Duong was three tenths of a second faster that time. Geez, pulled out well and truly. So I took my eyes off the ball a little bit there just to look at my times and the racing order, and Lipiat dropped right off the back of Duong, so there may have been a small mistake there. There he is, DeWong in the 13. It's lucky for him. Down the back stretch he goes for the final time. The chequered flag is being unfurled as we speak. And this has been another terrific drive for Jackson DeWong. He wasn't flustered despite having Lipiat push him the whole entire way. And DeWong gets a heat race win from Harrison Lipiat. Turner comes home in third spot. Then it's Buster Bailey and waiting now for this next group to come through. Norris and Douglas going at it still. And who's going to get the best of this one? It is Norris over Douglas and now waiting on J.D. Chapman to come through. And that is the end of 4SS Juniors and their second heat race of the weekend. We are going to go a lot quicker very soon with Open Performance and DD2. Coming up after we take a short break right here at Ipswich.
back here, the fastest category of racing in Australian kart competition. You got open performance. All of our drivers in open performance using a KZ2 setup. Of course, the six-speed gearbox machines out there. Actually, got the WSK Open Series this weekend. There's something like 82 competitors in KZ2 over there, including Australian Xavier Avramides, who's jumped into that category. This weekend, on a four Australians competing in that WSK Open Series at Frontier Quarter. Lockie Murphy will be on the pole in this one in the 15. He was quick last time through. Hampus Farris out of Sweden. He is looking to make amends in this one aboard the number four. Hokuto Ide in the 35. He had a great run last time out. Troy Losco the 17. Dan Hutchison the 8. Bally Sagadak didn't finish heat number one the 25. Cam McLeod, Finlay Derry and Jay Cool. That's your order in Open performance in Deddy 2, Duffy Smith, Mathers, Johnson, Wood, Cleveland and Howard. Set for a start this time. Pluck a gear and go. Down to turn one they run. <clears throat> Varus, he's had the short back and sides. And the elbows are up early in this one. <coughs> Three of them have come together. Finlay Derry, I think that might be involved in that. Jay Cool might have got shuffled backwards. Jay on the outside, looks like a very unflustered type of character. But I can tell you, the red mist behind that visor will be as red as the barrel art sticker on his machine right now. As they work their way up through the top part of the race circuit to kick things off. Down the back stretch, it's Murphy off the pole in the 15. Look at the style of the guy. Working his way back around. Good start there from Troy Losco in the 17. The Bundaberg Bullet. He is into second position as they cross the line now. The 29 machine there. He's in third spot as they work their way through. For Murphy it is over Losco. <clears throat> Battles on for third spot here. Sagadak having a better run in a cosmic cart. He goes to the high side this time. Bonide, the door gets shut on him. Down the back stretch they run. A pass for first, a pass for second in the offings here. So Murphy in the 15. He brings them around across the line. He has got the multi Australian champion right on his tail. Sagadak gets through on Ide. The Japanese driver. Just eight laps, but eight laps of absolute fury. Look at Zagadak. He's got some pace on board now. There in third position. JT would have no doubt been down there and tuned her up between races up at the Autobahn corner. And now Zagadak right on the tail now. As they go down the back straight away of Troy Losco. Losco up the inside of Murphy. He takes the lead. Look at Murphy trying to fight back here in the 15. And now Sagadak, he's involved. Oh, Losco gets shuffled out. So he drops back to third. So Sagadak on the charge. Oh boy, now McLeod's on the tail of the 17 of Losco. Through turn number one. It's all going on here. Remember these guys have got six gears to play with. They're doing probably 30 gear changes a lap, getting up to about 150 kilometers an hour. Front brakes and other drivers around them to try and contend with as well. Big move there from Sagadak. He was taking no prisoners on Murphy that time. He just licked it and sent it through Video Pro and took the race lead down the back straight away. And Sagadak, the IKD Cosmic, pulls away here. On the second place man, Lachlan Murphy. Then in third position, McLeod now in the PCR. Fourth, I should say. Ide, so, sorry, Loss goes back to third. And punching on, he's got McLeod there in fourth. Then Hokuto Ide in fifth. Hampus Vara still going. The young Swede, the 15-year-old in the DR number four in six. Then it's Stan Hutchinson, Jay Cool, Finlay Derry, then Howard leads the DD2s. Looking for two in a row. Scotty Cleveland, El Presidente. They're in 11th uh, spot on the track. Mathers, Wood, Duffy and Jet Johnson. He's at the back of the DD2 field as they sit at the moment. The third generation racer making his DD2 debut here.
and that out all of these dead each races setting up for the Rotax National Cup coming up here at Ipswich a little bit later on this year which will then lead to Team Australia going over to the famed Sarno circuit in Italy for the world finals at the end of the year new quickest lap of the race for Bailey Sagadak as they enter lap number six of this race here They've got five in the book so far. Oh, big move there. Three of them have gone off the track all together. You've got all the action live and there's water all over the tyres of Troy Losco. And he loses it as he's trying to get back into the action. It gets into Hampus Varus. Facing the wrong way is McLeod. I'm wondering if there, somebody had dropped some water on the track. And oh, one's just driven into them for... I think that's Cleveland that's just ploughed into them. Yes, it is in the 14. Not quite sure what happened there. Cleveland must have just got a little bit unsighted and it's just ploughed into them so that's just changed the complexion of this race what hasn't changed is Sagadak as I try and work out exactly what's going on here Sagadak leads away by three seconds over Murphy Hokuto Ide in third spot Jay Cool out of the Warnable Car Club he had an absolute shocker he is up to fourth spot yeah Cool got caught up in that turn number one disaster so he's now up to four. So he's been a big benefactor. Dan Hutchinson, we haven't spoken much of him. He's now into fifth placing. Then Finlay Derry. Scotty Howard still leads a dead E2. So he survived. Angus Mathers into second. Then Wood, then Johnson. He's the next one through. So working their way around. Now, so Hampus Farris is back in the fray. He continues on there in the number four machine. We've got the chequered flag at the ready. This is insanity at its absolute finest. So the 25 of Sagadak. I'm glad our cameramen are keeping with it. Another one's gone for a spin on his own accord. I'm not quite sure who that is, but Kart's in a fairly precarious position. However, it's the end of the race, so it doesn't matter. And your race leader, Bailey Sagadak. He works his way through the middle part of the race circuit and up through the top turn for the final time. Here comes a change of colours for him this year. It was a very unhappy run at the opening round of the SP Tools Australian Championships for Bailey, but he's trying to get it back on track here. In the IKD, number 25, he gets a heat race victory here in heat number two. That was crazy. Lachlan Murphy home in second. Pocketo Ide, he's home in third place. Then it's Jay Cool. Dan Hutchison, the next one through in fifth spot. Then it's Derry. Scotty Howard, uh, just wanting Scotty Howard, there he is, the 39. He gets the job done. Both he and Scott Cleveland have been doing some racing over in Asia as part of the Dead Air Masters over in the uh, Asian Rotax series. Mathers, the next one through, a second in the Dead Air 2. Wood Johnson, home in 10th spot on the track, fourth in Dead Air 2s. And just waiting on the rest of them to come through. So we'll just go and...
One of our feature categories, tag restricted medium. Hits the circuit for heat number two, this grid order based on qualifying earlier on this morning. Jordi Marcon will line up on the pole looking for two from two in the 42 machine. Ryan Silcock, the 77. He will line up on the outside front row out of Toowoomba. The next row of the grids, Trent Hardis, the 93, and Andrew Torty, the 55. Then on row number three, it's the 24, Jonathan Lillis and Luke Jacobson, the 22. Row four is the 56 of Peter Sattler and Gillian Beaumont Walsh in the 23. Row number five is Carl Wigner and Gavin Whitmore, the 35. Watch for Gav to come through. Sam Misson, the eight, gave David Vogel, the 66. Dakota Daniels in the nine, and the 97 of Zach King out of row number seven. Row eight is the 14 of Justin Voigt and Brad Cox, the 54. Alan Chislowski the 25 and a 21 of Daniel Vellacott. Round number 10 is the 16 of Nathan Miller and the 41 of Scott Jordan. Then it is Scott Highland and Sebastian De Salvo. What a sight that is. The sun beaming down on this Ipswich Kart Raceway. 1,088 metres here. 10 laps on the board. Mark Conn and Silcock on the front row. We're green. Down into turn number one. We're going three wide, further back in the pack. However, everyone gets through very cleanly to start things off. Jordi Marcon, been a while since we've seen him up the front here at Ipswich, so he will be looking for an absolute huge result here this weekend. The man out of Bundaberg, Tomato Farmers out of Bundaberg, in fact, and through the left-hander of Video Pro, does have a mean wardrobe of Tommy Hilfiger gear. Does Jordi Marcon, nicknamed Hillfigs. Down the back stretch they come for the first time. Everyone is getting themselves sorted out and it's all very leisurely out there at the moment in this feature category. Of course, three heat races before we get into the finals a little bit later on as Marcon comes to the line to reel off lap number one, the 93 machine of Harders. Hit a second over Silcock. Tordy's still fourth and the 56 pulls out of commission and has had enough. Torty, fourth as I said, Jacobson and Lawson Whitmore. Already up to P7. Vogel King had a good start there. He is up to ninth. Didn't qualify where he would have liked it, Zach King. And heat number one. It didn't go his way either. Pete Sattler inside the top ten also. As everyone just keeps on winding around there, you can see fairly evenly matched. At the top of the screen there, you can see just above the video pro. That's the timing board for the Willow Bank International Dragway. Had a few dramas in that part of the world of the Willowbank Dragway trying to get it resurfaced and what have you to be ready, of course, for the Winter Nationals. A big Nitro event down at the Bend at Motorsport Park, or Shell V-Power Motorsport Park, I should say, this weekend in Tail and Bend. So work their way through. Marcon's lead already out over a second. There he is, Geordie. Got the long flowing locks locked into that helmet. He's got a decent lead there over Trent Harders in second. So they're starting to close up behind Ryan Silcock in third. It's a heavily experienced Andrew Torty, the green and white Tony Cart in fourth spot. He's on the tail of Silcock. So there's Mark on the back stretch. It's three, nearly four cart freight train for third position. Battling it out as they come back around. King with the new quickest lap of the race. So it's back to Zach King doing it. what Zach King does and sets some very quick lap times. Across the line they come. There's your battle for third. Headed up by Silcock. Torty right in behind him. We'll pick up that battle for you shortly. There they are. Silcock followed by Torty. And then right behind them is Luke Jacobson in the 22, that bright red machine. The red speed chassis. There's Silcock, the 77. Torty pushing on. It's been around for quite some time as Andrew Torty. Go back to the late 90s and so on. He's starting to have a look at Ryan Silcock in third. Jacobson. Holding and watching brief there. He's got an IR. Torty got through, but it wasn't real flash. Silcock drops a few positions. They all bottle up, and he's going slow on the front straightaway. Not what you want to do, but there's four carts coming at you. We've got a new race order after that, as you saw right there. Mark on leads from Harders, and it's Torty, followed by Jacobson. Whitmore in fifth spot. 
There's Whitmore on the back of Jacobson. Jacobson in the red speed, the red coloured cart. It's a brand that we haven't seen too much over recent years, Red Speed. But it come with a flurry some years ago. Did that brand of chassis. There's Tordy now on a comfortable third in the famed Tony Cart, the lead brand out of the OTK factory in Italy. Plenty of Australians overseas racing for Team Green this year as well. So Whitmore's made up another spot. Qualified in 10th spot and is now up to P4. Of course, he's been an absolute stalwart of that Praga brand over so many years. Oh, jeez. Oh, we went three wide and oh, no. Who was that? That was King that went deep on Whitmore and it's knocked the front bumper on Gavin Whitmore's cart. He got a little bit spooked, I think, did King when Jacobson went bush. And then it went three wide and it just got really all sorts of ugly. So I'll have a look at that when they come around. This will be the end of lap number six now. Down the back straight away, there's the 22. He's been able to go across the dirt and hold on to or get back into fourth spot. As they come back around, we'll have a look. See if there's any damage here. This Tordy goes through in third. Everything looking pretty well, so remarkably. Gavin Whitmore's been able to hang on to everything there. I thought for sure he may have had some plastics hanging off that machine. Meantime, at the front, it's really closed up between Mark Conhardas and Torty. Bit going on out here to try and get your head around. In fact, no, Mark on's well and truly clear. I was getting uh, my order mixed up with a lapper. He's pulling himself out of harm's way. Where did King end up in all of that? He dropped back to 10th, so he went for the big Hail Mary and it didn't pay off. We're on lap number seven. So this will be three laps to go as they come through there. You can see that NASA panel, which is the panel carrying the number plate of the number 35, looking a little bit sore and sorry as they come to the line. And now he goes for the move there. The door gets shut. Oh, geez, I'll tell you what. Jacobson in the 22. He is hanging tough. Gavin Whitmore will not be happy. He's going to give him the short back and sides, and he does so. So Whitmore... He pushed on through there to get himself up into position. There may be a discussion or two take place after this race. And then David Vogel says, if you guys are going to go at it, I'm going to join the party too in a 66. He's up the inside then of Jacobson. Down the back stretch they come. We've still got a couple of laps, laps left to go, folks. Easy for some to say, not for me right at the moment. So, Geordie Markman, he has got no idea what's going on behind him. It's just absolute lunacy in this battle for fourth as they come to the line at NASA panel, 45 degrees, to where it should be on the Gavin Whitmore cart. Officials have deemed it's not in danger of flying away. Oh, Jacobson. He got a sideways and he's then lost his spot to Brad Cox. So I think a lot of these guys at the back end of this top five, especially the group that you've been watching for a couple of laps now, they're going to be thankful to see that last lap board. What can Vogel do about Whitmore here as they go down the back straight away? Meantime, Marklon starts his last lap. Whitmore hanging on. He's battling not just some errant plastic, but some hard charges right behind him as they come to the line. They've got one to go. Work their way down through. Whitmore will be loving every moment of it. You've got to be said, he doesn't mind getting the elbows up. He loves some tough racing out there. Maybe a bit tougher in some places than what he would like. As now your race leader, he is in sight of home. There he is at the top of your screen, going through the Autobahn corner and onto the back straightaway. Down the back stretch for the final time comes. Jordy Mark on easy as you like aboard the number 42 here today. He comes out of the final turn and he gets the checkered flag. Mark on, he gets a win. Second place will go to the 93 of Hardest. Then it's Tordy 
Their next one through Whitmore. He survives for fourth spot. He'll be getting the cable ties out once he gets back to the pit area. Vogel, he gets through into fifth spot. Luke Jacobson, he was in the wars as well. He holds on for six, and it's missing. King back up to eighth spot. Dakota Daniels in that. Ninth, then it's De Salvo from the back of the bus. Jonathan Lewis at 24 in 11. Then Voigt, Beaumont Walsh, Highland. Then it's Jordan Wegner, Miller and Brad Cox coming across the line. So a bit to unpack from that one. That was Tag Restricted Medium coming up after we take a short break. KA3 Senior, if you thought that the action hadn't stopped, it's going to continue on and continue to be frantic right here at Ipswich. You're watching live.
Good afternoon and welcome back to Ipswich. Trust that you are enjoying the action. If you're doing a bit of double screening at home, there's of course Japanese Grand Prix. There was Craftsman Truck Series on a little bit earlier on, but all the action is happening right here at Willow Bank this afternoon. K3 Senior hits the track for heat number two. It'll be Jake Chislowski off the pole position in the 15. Byron Phillips, the 46 front row. Second row of the grid is the 7 of Georgie Aiden and Kai Brennan in the 43. Row number 3 is strong in heat number 1. Dominic Penman in the 70 should be good out of P5. Liam Thompson, the 69 out of P6. Brian Moyes out of 7, the 75. Then Talia Kittle in the 85 out of 8. Row number five is Emily Chicardo, the 54, Matthew Price, the 86. Then off row six, it's the 28 of Ronan Finn and Matty Feather with some work to do in the Empire Car Sport 26. Row number seven is the 82 of Hamilton Ray, Lucas Lesmer is the JGM number 95. Off the back of the bus, it is the 55 of Declan Matthews, a Heat 1 winner, and Paige Yarwood in the nine. So watch out for the green and gold metallic 55 of Matthews to come through the field. Watch out for Penryn from P5. Cheslowski will be tough from the front row of the grid. Of course, we've reversed the grid from heat number one with these being taken on a random draw with no qualifying in this category. No qualifying in any category aside from <clears throat> our three featured tag restricted Competitors, eight laps on the board, getting set for a start, and we're away. Chislowski and Phillips down to turn number one, they charge. <clears throat> nice even start through there. Oh, just a couple got together. I think one of those was Feather involved, and then now they work their way into the early part of the race circuit. Penman's already got himself into third position aboard the bedshed, number 70. Out of RHQ they go. Chislowski it is who leads the way. Penman, he was on the outside coming through Video Pro and gets himself into second position as they work their way onto the back stretch. <clears throat> Slight gap there already from Chislowski. It's a CXR12 at the moment as they work their way out onto the front straightaway, the number 15. I do like a little bit of bling this team at CXR. Have a look at the, fo the foils glinting in this beautiful Willowbank sunlight. Down into turn one. Chizowski leads from Penman and Phillips. Moyes into fourth, then Thompson Price. Matthews up to seventh already. Brennan Kittle. Lesmer's rounding out your ten. Oop, a couple have had drama there. So that's going to change the order a little bit. One's facing the wrong way. I think that could be Lesmer's. We'll pick it up for you next time. Bye. But Byron Phillips, he's going with Dom Penman here for second and third. There as they go through the video pro corner and onto the back stretch. <clears throat> Matthews up to fourth position already in the number 55. As Chislowski leads them through, he opens the lead up. Moyes up to third now. Then she sets the quickest lap in the race, the 69 machine. He pulls out of the race. It was at 86 in price. Oh, geez, further back. I don't know what happened there. He was meant to turn left, but he turned right. That was insane. I don't know how that happened, to be quite honest. One of our drivers further back in the pack went completely the wrong way and decided to... Go do a bit of victor work for good measure. Everything's pretty well settled down out there. Brianne Moy, she's on the gas there in third spot in the 75. She's right there with Penman. So we've got a battle forming for second here. Look at Brianne Moyes. She's the quickest driver on circuit. There they go across the line. Just ask you to respond to the quickest lap. I need to have Declan Matthews come across the line and say, no, 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 I'm going to go quicker. I'll go three tenths of a second quicker than you and four tenths of a second quicker than the two drivers in front of me. So he has got pace to burn at the moment as Declan Matthews. He has these things well and truly hooked up. They know how to win big championships and big titles, do the Matthews family. 
I think they're up to three national titles between Declan and Jace alone, let alone all of their team drivers. They've had a massive crack on the national scene over the last couple of years. Craig and Du Bois as now Brian. There she is, the white helmet, number 75. She's all over the back of the 70 of Penman. This is a spirited drive here from Brian Moyes. She is right on the GAS as they go down through turn at number one. Then you can see the gap then back to Matthews and he is just working overtime at the moment. He's went two tenths of a second quicker than both Moyes and Penman that last time through. And in fact, they're starting to close the gap to Chislowski as well. It was a 50.5 for Chislowski the last time by, a 50.3 for both Penman and Moyes, a 50.1 for Declan Matthews. The only one close to that was Matty Feather with a 50.7 back there in seventh position. Here's Penman. He's a great little racer, is Dom Penman. But he is under the pump at the moment from the 75 as she works her way through Brian Moyes. Matthews goes quicker again. First driver into the 49. The 49.973. He has taken four tenths of a second out of Brian. The gap between them is one and a half seconds with. They're working lap number six. There'll be three to go when they cross the line the next time. Two to go, I should say. My lap counter in front of me might have been a little bit out of whack. Having a bit of a Tosca down there in the corner as they hit the back straight away once again. Penman doing a great job down this long back straight away into this infamous hairpin. It's been some incredible moments through that heaping over the years with the big events that have been held at this Ipswich Kart Club at Willowbank, part of the Queensland Motorsport Complex. Two to go now for Joe Chislowski. It's been a fine drive off the pole and he'll be happy with the result. It'll set him up nicely for heat number three. Matthews hasn't given up. Still in the 49s and takes another four tenths out of Moyes. But the biggest problem for Matthews is he's out of time because they will get the last lap board when they come to the start-finish line the next time by. They'll only have 1,088 metres left remaining. But Brianne, she's punching on here. Down the back stretch they go. <clears throat> Brianne Moyes' cart looks like it's handling a lot better than Dominic Penman's at this stage of proceedings as well. Across the start line goes your race leader in Jake Chislowski. The 49.924 that time for Matthews. Penman and Moyes have picked up the pace, but we are on the way home here. We're on the final circulation. Through Electro goes your race leader. There he is, Jake Chislowski, at the top of your screen. Then it's Penman. He looks like he's broken the back of the challenge from Brian Moyes. Matthews, he can't do any more to try and make up any further positions. He is still nicely placed. Come heat number three a bit later on as Chislowski winds down the back straight away. It's been a fine drive. Dom Penman, he's put up with a little bit of pressure from Brian Moyes. And I've got to say, I am super impressed with Brian's performance in this one. Meantime, check it flag at the ready. Jack Chislowski, he gets the job done. Second place will go to Dominic Penman. Then it's Brian Moyes, Declan Matthews home in fourth spot. Coming home in fifth place will be Kai Brennan. Matty Feather gets home in sixth. Byron Phillips in seventh spot. Then it's Lesmers in the eighth. Hamilton Ray in ninth spot. The two JGMs. Matty Price home in tenth position. Then it's Emily Chicardo, Talia Kittle, Ronan Finn, and waiting now for Paige Yarwood to complete your finishes in that one. K3 Senior. Heat number two is in the books. So that is that done and dusted. Coming up very shortly will be Tag Heavy and their second heat race over eight laps. We're going to take a break here at Ipswich.
So a little downtime here at Ipswich as we charge through the order. Great to have your company if you're tuning in on YouTube through speedcafe.com or you are here with us at the race circuit as Tag Heavy hits the track for heat number two. Good field of Tag Heavy here this weekend. Jared and I will line up on the pole in the 18. Alongside him will be Brock Plum. That's a Cracker Jack front row. Sam Houston and Jumpe Morita off row number two in the six and eight respectively. Chris Williams in the 31 and Brendan Nelson in the 70 off the next row. Then it is Josh Dagg and Riley Lagarde in the 98. The five of Brad McNaught and Will Marshall in the 17. And it's Harrison Fox in the 68 and Andrew Gilliam in the 78. Brent Redding who took out the first heat and Brent Brady Barton with some work to do, and Dan Brown and Rudy Farkas off the back of the bus. So Brock Plum, that red race suit, a familiar colour. So much experience on the national scene over the years. Certainly years ago, Brock Plum. Sammy Houston. He's been a regular in KZ2 Gearbox competition. Dropped back to the single speed categories. Joint Team Paralin. Set for a start now. They're away. Down to turn one they go. And it was Nine who got the best of the start in the 18. Oh, gee, that was Sammy Houston. He was a rocket through turn number one. I thought he might have missed it a little bit, but he went bang straight up the inside of Nine it and slamming Sam. He leads the way through Electro here on the first lap down towards Video Pro for the first time. Plum up the inside for second. Nine it didn't really offer too much of an argument right through there. Up to Autobahn corner they go for the first time. Oh, Nine it fights back here. The elbows are out here on lap number one. Down the back straight away they go. Who's that involved as well there? In fourth position at the moment, Nelson makes up a spot or two in the Cali cart. Plum's been dropped back to fourth spot here. Onto the front straight away. Sammy Houston says, I'm out of here, guys. You go and sort it out as Chris Williams in the 31. Who's in the mix there? Gee, a frantic lap number one here in a Rotax Heavy. Down through the flip-flop they go. Houston leads away. Oh, look at this. The battle for second. They're all bottled up there behind nine at the 18. Plum's back to third now. Nelson. The tag tornado out of Toowoomba. Well, formerly out of Toowoomba, now the Gold Coast. He's in the mix, and here comes Brent Redding. Well, they've been elbowing each other UFC style around the circuit. Brent Redding's gone. I'm going to make up a couple of spots. I started back down the order. You can get battling. I'm just going to make my way through. I won the first heat. I need to be up as far as I can get so I can start at the front for heat number three. Back around a complete lap number two. Houston comfortably leading the way. Problem there for the five in Brad McNaught. Bad luck for Brad. He hasn't had a happy day. Generally very, very quick as Brad McNaught as Houston leads by 1.4 seconds. But the charge of the light brigade is on for third. Nine, it's pulled clear of that battle. Plums under the pump from his fellow veteran in Brendan Nelson. As I say that, Redding, he wasn't worried about what they were doing in front of him. He just went, sorry, Brendan, I'm going up a spot. Brent Redding, always very, very solid races on the national scene as well. Part of the crack empire. Not a crack empire, I should say. The crack empire kart sport outfit. Let's rephrase that, shall we? Down across the start finish line they come to complete lap number three here. Redding, no surprise, the quickest driver on circuit. Actually got that fastest lap of the race, the purple light, while making a positional move. So he's not here to make friends, not here to make prisoners. But he's here to take prisoners. In fact, he's Brent Redding here today as he's got the man in red, Brock Plum, in front of him as they go through Video Pro. Nelson slotted back there into fourth position. Down the back stretch. Redding's got a good run here on Plum. Will he have a look? Yes, he will. Up the inside. Oh, gee, Plum didn't really want to let him through. 
and didn't have a choice. Redding just sent it up the inside there and took over the spot. Now Plum's under pressure from Nelson as they go down to turn number one. And Williams is involved in the 31 as well. Through the right-hander then. High speed freight train this group. Right behind Williams is Josh Dagg. He wants to be part of the fat party as well. In the number 39, Will Marshall just off the back of them. Holding a watching brief as your race leader, Sam Houston. He is just gone. He didn't want to know about any of what's going on behind. And Jared Nynett, once he's now got himself into a rhythm, he's pulled clear of that group as well as now Nelson. He's going to have a look here. Up the inside of the 15 of Plum. Plum fights back here. They will give each other respect in racing room, these two. They've been around the blocks quite a bit. They know every trick in the book, especially around here with Plum. He went deep into the first turn, the kink. The door was shut on him. Then Williams now behind Plum. Then Dag, he's pushing on. Right there, as well as Marshall has caught the back of that group. You can see them coming out of the RHQ corner towards Video Pro. This has been a great race. Like everyone willing to go at it. Sometimes tag racing can get a bit follow the leader, but not today. Of course, with this random grid draw, it's not based on qualifying. So you are going to have drivers of different levels of speed at various places in the order. As Dag makes a move on Williams and further back, they come to the start finishing line. I tell you who's up on the wheel. It's Jared Nynan. He has just taken four tenths of a second out of your race leader, Sammy Houston. So by that calculation, they'll be on racing terms the next time through. We are on lap number seven here. They'll get the last lap board the next time, but Nynan, he is mounting a challenge for the race lead. There was four tenths of a second difference in their last lap times and there was only four tenths of a second between them as they crossed the line. So there is the battle for the race lead coming through Video Pro. Nine at there in the number 18. Up through the right-hander at Autobahn they come. Down the back straight away. Brent Redding sitting there in third. He is watching what's going on. He'll get the feeling as to what Nine at is going to do. He knows these two Guys racing lines, their racing characteristics better than most. Across the line they come. Last lap board, nine on the gas. He's all over the back of the governor, Sammy Houston. Down through turn one. Can Houston hold on here? Sam, a drafter by trade. Loves getting out and having a race. An absolute Red Bull freak. Down through Video Pro Corner they go. There's nothing in it. Can nine it line him up for a manoeuvre? Down the back straight away. You can see Brent Redding just nipping at their heels. He has just closed an enormous amount of ground there as they hit the back straight away for the final time. Checkered flag is being unfurled. Who is going to make a move at the hairpin? Nobody is the answer at that point. Not much change going on behind either. Houston, he comes out of the final turn and he will hold on. Slamming semi Houston. He gets the job done. Second place goes to nine and Redding. He closed at a rapid rate of knocks. Then it was Nelson followed by Plum. Then Williams, Philip O'Marshall, then Dag, Lagarde, Brown, Marita, then Gilliam, Fox, Farkas, and that rounds out your finishes in Tag Heavy. That was an entertaining race, it must be said, for Tag Heavy. And speaking of entertainment, if you weren't with us before, KA3 Junior Light, all 40 of them are set for dispatch once we take a break, and we'll be back soon here at Ipswich. So out they come for second heat of KA3 Junior Light. We'll of course reverse them from where they were the last time out. There's Annabelle Kennedy in the Energy Course number 16. 
She will start on the front row, the outside front row, with Henry Stratford to assume the pole in a 42. Basilio McCarley, the sub junior star, will start at a P3. Watch for Isaac McNeil. This will work in Isaac's favour out of P number four in a 71. Next row of the grid, Sebastian Tander. We didn't see much of Seb the last time out, of course, the son of Garth and Leanne Tander. He will start at a five in the 87. And Dylan Kamalaka. He will start from position number 6 in the 41. Row number 4, Aston Smith, the 14, and Jack Jensen, in the 97. Row number 5, it's Jackson DeWong and Jack Schwazik in the number, Schusick, I should say, in the number 39. Row number 6 is the 30 of Johnny Wright for JGM and Matt Dixon, the 75. Tyson McGill, the 36, Lucasito in the number 8 machine. Row number 8, Tierman, Hoskin, and Poppy Rule from... Position number 16, 19, Lana Flack, the 4, then Charlie Cronin, the 79, Xavier Knight, the 28. At a 20th spot will be Matt Clark in the 33. August Seward, the 58, Luke Downs, the 23. Then it's Chad Rissman, followed by Xavier Rasso, Simonelli, Page, Leo, Reed, Stratford, Saragi, Bennett, Helm, DeSell, Flynn, Powers Lane, Yarwood, Nolan... McLaughlin and McLeod, there are so many female races in this field. It is wonderful to see. <clears throat> Getting set for a start, all 40 of them down to turn number one. This is going to be worth watching. Stratford and Kennedy lead them to the line. McCarley and McNeil watch them from row two. Tender in there as well. Eight on the board. The green. And down they go. Just watching to see what happens through this opening turn. Funny, had one off on the grass, remarkably. Had a couple that have sort of bottled through there. One's got all sorts of problems and comes to a screaming halt. But that was incredibly tame. Great start from all of our drivers there. You often wonder what you are going to get off the start finishing line as McNeil's got himself into third position there. Up through the Autobahn corner they go. Down the back stretch they run. Look at Kennedy here, going for a move for the lead at the hairpin. Pulls it up and she goes to the race lead. McNeil says, thank you, I'm gonna go to second as well. Back to the start, finishing straight. McCarley at the back end of this group with the 42 of your pole sitter, Henry Stratford. Go okay, rummaging through turn number one and speaking of rummaging, we have got a problem in the final sector of turns. We've got about five or six of them that have decided to come together and come to a screaming halt together. And there it is. What a mess. That is an absolute debacle of G. I tell you, there's a very ordinary looking Fernando Alonso, uh, sorry, Lando Norris cart down there. It looks rough as we are going to go full course caution. So let's hope that the competitors can see that before they get to that part of the race circuit we've still got bits and pieces of go-kart all over the racetrack our officials and uh, volunteers down there making sure that everyone is across board we've got a bit of a limp happening down there with one of our competitors the medical team johnny on the spot so we're just going to go full course caution we'll go and assess that situation i would hazard a guess that we'll just go down to make sure that those drivers are okay. I, certainly there's some movement, but some very ginger movement, one might say. So of course, if you weren't with us earlier, this is our version of a safety car or a full course caution. So if we look down through the order, there is the number 69, that looks very ordinary, no nose cone. The 14, also looking very ordinary. If we have a look at this, Tanda, Sita and Stratford are those that have been involved there. I thought there was more. I think we've got a few of them underway. There goes Flack through. She's going to join the back end of this freight train. So not the way that we want to get things run. There you go. There's the 87 of Tanda down there, the 44 machine of Charlie Stratford. And we've got our team down there just making sure that they are a okay. We'll cross back to our race leader as our medical team are on the spot. 
mentioned that the uh, there was a number of uh, female races, or a huge number of female races in this. Keep an eye out for the Girls Race 2 program that's coming up at the Greater Sydney Car Track in Windsor if you are in New South Wales. Once they get all of the floodwaters cleared that have befell that area, that's later on this month. So if you are in Sydney or within a driving distance of Sydney and a have a female that's interested in getting involved in karting, make sure that you get along to that event. There are still a few places available. It's the third Girls Race 2 event. Been inaugurated by Karting Australia. And we go red on the racetrack. So red light is on here at Ipswich. That means that we are going to take a short break and we'll be back once we have everything in safe conditions. Trust you're enjoying all the action from Ipswich Cartway today.
Welcome back to Ipswich. I can give you the update that we did have two drivers that were taken to the medical centre. They're in communication. They do have some uh, minor concerns, but nothing too major to be worried about at this stage, which is the good news. We are back here for the continuation of this KA3 Junior Light category. Annabelle Kennedy was leading the way when the red flag came out. Isaac McNeil, he will line up right behind her. And then it'll be Henry Stratford, Basilio McCarley, Jack Jensen, Jack Shuzik in six spot. Then Matty Dixon, Jackson Duong out of eight. Johnny Wright in nine and Tyson McGill from P10. So we'll give them one more at their sighting lap. Now this will be the warm-up lap. Then we'll get the green flag on the gantry. And we'll be back underway with four laps remaining in this heat race. Been plenty of action here today. Trust you've enjoyed it. If you've jumped on through the Ipswich Kart Club YouTube page or you found us on speedcafe.com, hope that you are enjoying all of the action from our April race meeting here at Ipswich Kart Raceway at Willowbank. Around 250 competitors entered throughout the course of today. This is the biggest field that you're watching at the moment. Has had a few knocked down out of it. A massive weekend here, massive weekend of motorsport. Not just here, but right around the world, of course. So Annabelle Kennedy in the 16. She controls the pace. So Travis McNeil, he's, we referenced before, he's been dabbling this year in some open wheel competition in a Formula 4 car in the Formula Open Championship. It's part of the Speed Series. Driving with the Valencia Rosso Motorsport team. So set for a restart. Green flag is in the air. There's Kennedy with the Empire Car Sport 71 on the tail. You cannot pass until you're beyond the control line. We're green. Down to turn number one they go. Through the first turn and Kennedy gets the best of the start. We are back racing. Our timing screen there hasn't ticked over to remove the red flag. However, we are back underway and Kennedy, she's leading the way. McNeil on her tail. Third spot, Stratford. He's nipping at the heels as well. Then McCarley. Little fella, he doesn't need a second invitation if an opportunity presents itself. Down the back stretch they go. Now McNeil's in the slipstream. Under brakes. Oh, Stratford went deep. He had the wiggles going. Did Charlie Henry Stratford. A bit going on behind them as well as they come to the start finishing line. And McNeil's been able to get through into the race lead. Down into turn number one. Kennedy's gone back to second spot. Then Stratford looking to try and make amends as well. McCarley there in fourth position. And Jensen on the back of this. So we've got a five-car freight train battling it out here. What's Annabelle Kennedy got for Isaac McNeil? Can Isaac pull away in the number 71 here? Or can Annabelle push her way back into the race lead. Working her way up to the Autobahn corner. Now we'll see what Stratford's got down the back straight away. This is where McNeil got to the lead the last time and Kennedy's got the inside line. Under brakes and she goes back to the race lead. So good drive there from Kennedy. But McNeil's having none of it and he switches back to the lead. So two lead changes in the space of as many corners and here comes now to Henry Stratford. He's right there with a McCarley on the tail as well. And it is high stakes stuff here. McCarley in fourth, even though he's been in this gridlock, he's the quickest driver on surface circuit as McNeil leads her way through. They've got a very small gap over Jensen who's then got a very big gap over Shuzik who has been the form driver in this category over the last six months not just here but certainly in other parts of Australia as well as now up into third position goes McCarley in the number 27. He's moved up from the cadet categories and he's making a fist of it here in this massive field the biggest of the weekend as I referenced before. Down into the heap and they go again. McCarley, as you can see there, he's a shorter driver. He sits lower in the cart in that number 27 arrow as they come to the line. 
Oh, look at Kennedy all over the tail of McNeil. Up the inside and a new race leader again. So, there goes Annabelle Kennedy back to the lead. McNeil's going to have to rethink it. We are on the way home. This is the last lap. This has been a terrific fight since they went back to green flag racing out of electro they go has mcneil got anything over the next half a lap what about mccarley will he have a look he has a peek over his shoulder to see where stratford was he wasn't too worried about the two in front of him but come the end of the back straight away he may be oh mcneil got all sorts of sideways there he's got the run kennedy didn't get a great run onto the back stretch she goes defensive mcneil goes high mccarley goes in tight Kennedy leads away. She's just got to hang on for another corner. Out of the final turn, onto the front straight away. Check it, flag at the ready. And Annabelle Kennedy gets it done. Good drive for Annabelle Kennedy. She takes the win by 0.145. You could have wrapped a cigarette paper between the two of them. McNeil in second, McCarley, then Stratford. Jensen, McGill, then Schwazek. Then Cronin, Dwong, Rule, Flynn, Simonelli, Wright, Helm, Ryan Reed sets the quickest lap of the race in 15th. Then Hoskin, Xavier Knight, then Page, Flack in 19th spot, Decel, then it's Dixon, Rissman, Powers, Clark, Downs, and Nolan. So 40 came down to 26 at the end there. We won't have too much to clean up before we get our next category out on circuit. There's one of the great viewing spots here at the Willow Bank Cartway. We'll take a break here. We'll be back very shortly with a continuation of our racing. So out they come for tag light, heat number two, at least one, two, five, CC. Water-cooled engines out there. Good field this weekend, too, of tag light. Felix Jeski in the number six to lead them away in this one. Valley Sagadak doubling up this weekend. Dennis Braden, Vincent, the 83, Jack Preston. Didn't see much of him in heat number one. He did make some ground. He'll start on the second row on the 43. Fraser Blight in the 24. Jack Kabelka, the number 54, the next one out there. 
Then we've got James Chitlin and Mikola Missouri in the next row of the grid. Rowan McConnell, the 7. Ryan Allman, the 98. Will Gallagher, the 33. And Lockie Cowie on the next row of the grid in the 21. Josh Miller and Jack Goodman. What a race Jack Goodman had in the previous hit out in the 50. And then it's Jack Stimson, Geordie Slater, Josh Frew, Jack Wells, Troy Losco, Bryce Lane, Jordan Costa, and Trent Newton. Quick drivers at the top. Quick drivers at the back. Quick drivers in the middle. We're in for a race. Over eight here. We're away. Sagadak off the front there. And through turn number one they go. There's a problem for Costa in the 77. And there's a bit going on on the exit of turn number one. And it's Sagadak who leads away in the 25. Got a good start there, so had a good race in the open performance a bit earlier on. Jack Preston's gone with him. Through the Autobahn corner for the first time, the top two have a slight gap there as they work their way down the back stretch on lap number one. Oh, there goes Jack Goodman. So a problem for the 50. That's unfortunate. He had such a great run going, and now it's turned a little bit sour for him, which is really unfortunate. It's Sagadak, Preston, and Ullman, and Lemissouri are into fourth. Followed by Blyton and Gallagher. Kabelka down to seventh, and Frew, McConnell, Losco into tenth spot. Jack Wells into 11th placing. Bryce Lane, Slater. Then it's Newton, Stimson, Costa. Then Cowie, and that's where your runners are at the moment. Sagadak pulling away from Preston. They've got a handy advantage over Ullman. Lemizuria trying to close in the young star, driving the Patrizzi course, Birrell Art. Because made the step up at the end of last year from the KO2 junior category into the single drive water cooled in seniors. As now we've got a new fifth place driver in Will Gallagher who's made his way past Fraser Blyton as they come to the line. There's that little group and they're followed by the number 54 of Jet Kabelka. Jet just had his birthday through the week out of the Lismore Kart Club, turned 16 years of age and he's just made a move so he's up another spot as young Jet. So he's on the move and we will be knocking on the door of the top five as you can see them coming towards us on the video pro corner camera angle he's now chasing down William Gallagher in the number 33 our top four have pulled well clear and here's this battle for fifth that's Gallagher in the 33 at the top of your order right there Kabelka in the all black 54 And it's a 22 machine of Fru, who's now got in front of Blyton as well. So Blyton's lost a couple of spots in that exchange over the last lap. As they work their way through, Gallagher's got a slight gap in the Cart Republic now over Kabelka. He's picked up the pace a bit as they come towards us. There's your race leader, second, third, fourth, fifth. As you can see there, Gallagher's got a very small gap over Kabelka, who's still got Fru for company in the number 22. Fru pushing on here as they go up through the auto barn corner and onto the back stretch one more time. Gallagher takes a peek over his shoulder in that orange and white Cart Republic machine. Cart Republic, the Denakiesa led chassis company, has really kicked on over the last couple of years. Or Kabelka, he cops the short back and sides at turn number one. So Sagadak leads away over Preston. Mikola Missouri are up to third now. And he just sets the quickest lap of the race. It's very low in the cart. The little fella, he's got past Ryan Ullman. Now got his eyes on Jack Preston up in front. Preston is in second, but having a pretty lonely race, you've got to say for Jack Preston out there. And had his dad Mike down there keeping an eye on things as always. Keep going on further back in the pack. There's a lot happening out there in fact. <coughs> New quickest lap for the Missouri up. He's got the gap between himself and Preston down to nine tenths of a second. That's five laps in the book. There's only three to go. So 
Our order at the moment is Sagadak from Preston and Lamazuria. Ullman and Gallagher through Cabelka to seventh. Then it's Blyton, Lane, Wells, McConnell. Then Slater, Newton, Stimson and Costa in 15th position. There's Sagadak. He'll be looking for a couple of good results here this weekend. Still getting used to the new chassis setups. The gap's out to seven tenths of a second. Lemazuri is still holding down third. He's backed it off a little bit as Mika. Couple of tenths off the pace of Preston that time around. Preston about a tenth up on Sagadak that time through. The man in fourth is still Ryan Ullman. He's just putting in a solid performance. Gallagher holding down fifth. He's pulled well and truly away from the battle pack that he was involved in a little bit earlier on. Josh Frew still there in sixth. Cabelka still seventh. Then Blyton and Lane. Wells rounding out your top ten. So Wells hasn't made much of an impression on the field, having started further down. So Lemazuria, he had a quiet lap, then he's just gone bang with a quick time lap of 48.051. He has dragged three tenths of a second out of Jack Preston. However, it won't be enough because they are on the last lap. And Bailey Sagadak, he is on the way home here aboard the number 25 IKD Cosmic. Out of Video Pro they go and up to the Autobahn turn for the final time. These are the sort of wins that build confidence when you join a brand new outfit, a brand new team for Bailey Sagadak, getting the factory support after being a privateer for so long. Out of the final turn and onto the front straight away. He gets a win. I'll tell you what, I said Lemazuri was going to run out of time. He gave Preston a big push there towards the end. And Preston holds on to second, only just over Lemazuri. Then it was Orman, followed by Gallagher. Then through Lane, Kabelka. Wells rolls rounding out your nine. Then it was Blyton. Geordie Slater home in 11th. Then Newton, Stimson, McConnell and Costa. He rounds out your finishes in 15th spot. So that was Tag Light, uh, feature category Tag Restricted Light, coming up after we take a short break. So out on track, one of our feature categories, tag restricted light, 10 laps on the board. Darcy Briggs on the pole after qualifying. Billy James Whitaker, the outside front row. Jack Giselle has been involved in everything today so far. Nathaniel Harris alongside him in the 70. Then it's Charlie Furlonger, Connor O'Reilly, Cody Anderson, a full grid of 27. We're green. Down to turn number one they go. No, we're not. 
I thought they'd given it to them then. Saw a couple of hands in the air, so they will have to go around again. Where did I get up to on the grid? Down to six with Conor O'Reilly. Cody Anderson and Isabella McDonald on row four. Georgie Aiden on row five in the seven with Kyle Musson in the 44. Robert Mortensen, the 17, out of 11. He had a good run the last time out. Jack Munro, the 18 from 12. Then it's Callan Mullins and Derek Jones in the two. Kislowski. Then Scott, Lees, Vandenbroek, Williams, Cowell, Zimmerman, Bowman, Walsh, Aquazanta, Lane, Lenahan, Duncan, Zimmerman, away this time, 10 on the board. Good start there from your pole sit up as they go down into turn one. Everyone away cleanly, so that's a nice start there. 10 laps on the board, as we said. <clears throat> All a very even start so far. That means it'll probably fire up as we get towards the back end of the opening lap. No dramas like we saw last time out. Up through Autobahn corner they go for the first time. The top five have a slight advantage at the moment. Down the back straight away. New battle for third going on here. Bang. And inside gets it done. Nice. That was Harrison in the 70 moving up into third position as they come to the line. 21 machine of Briggs leads away from DeSalle. Then it was Harrison over Billy James. Then it's Furlonger, Mortensen up to six already. Munro, Jones, O'Reilly and Scott, your 10. Darcy Briggs trying to open up a gap already here. He's got Jack DeSell right there with him. Jack looking for a strong performance here. Nathaniel Harrison, oh, he is punching on here. Oh, that race leader has lost it. Our race leader loses it. Gets a wheel off onto the dirt. Gets it sideways. He managed to hang on to it. Great driving, but he's dropped back to fourth. He's just thrown one down the road there. The 50's got a problem. He's done and dusted. So a new race leader, Harrison, says thank you and goes to the lead here. He gets past DeSalle. Across the star finishing line they come. A dramatic lap number two. Three lead changes through the course of that lap. Munro, quickest lap of the race down in six. He is on the move as you'd anticipate. So Harrison and Docell working together here. Billy James Whitaker in third spot. He's got Briggs recovering right on his tail. Briggs doesn't want to do what he did in that spot last time. He goes for a move on third. Couldn't get it done. Billy James shut the door. Up to Autobahn they go. Darcy Briggs will be absolutely seething underneath that helmet right now. Goes up the inside at, turn at the hairpin and says thank you. And he takes... Robert Mortensen, I think Jack Munro as well with him as they come back to the start finishing line. In fact, Mortensen was a big winner. He was able to open a door on all of them and he takes over third spot. Briggs crosses fourth. It was Whitaker who dropped back to fifth. So we're on lap number four now. Harrison's lead, 0.548. He is the quickest on circuit. Derek Jones trying to push on in the two. Back there in the seventh position. Now, here's a move at the top part of the race circuit. That being for fourth spot. Down the back straight away they go. That's Munro making up another spot there. Billy James Whitaker under attack from Jones now also. The laps are coming thick and fast here today. That's the end of lap number four. Mortensen the quickest on circuit. Where's Briggs gone? He's dropping down the order. Didn't see what happened to Darcy Briggs. Try and pick up if I can see the cart somewhere. There is a cart on the exit of the hairpin. Took my eyes off it and not quite sure what has happened to Darcy Briggs, but it has definitely gone from chocolates to boiled lollies from him after leading the first lap from pole, working their way around. Your race leader, Nathaniel Harrison, doing it nicely out in front. He's comfortable as they come at the moment to sell in second. Robbie Mortensen in the 17. He's the quickest on circuit at the moment in third spot. Munro, he's closing in in fourth as they cross the line. That's a halfway point. 
Munro. He just does a 49, 8 0 1. He took 9 tenths of a second out of Mortensen the last time through. So Jack Munro in the number 18. He's the man on the move. And he'll be looking for a P3 positional change fairly shortly. You get the feeling. Because there's Harrison. That's the lead that he's got. That's what 1.1 seconds looks like around here through Video Pro over Jack Desell. Then there's Mortensen and right behind him is the 18 of Munro. Munro, he is charging. He is one driver that will smell water in the blood and absolutely go for it, which he's doing at the moment. So Mortensen. He's got over his wits about him here because look at Munro. You can actually see the real estate that he is gaining on that number 17 as they charge the line again. Munro's going to be in position to go for a move very shortly. He's on the tail of the 17. Now he gets to the flip-flop with four to go. So what can Mortensen do to hold on here from a charging Jack Munro? There's Mortensen in the brightly coloured number 17. Munro in the 18. Munro's there with him. He goes high. He's going to go around the outside. What a beautiful move that was from Jack Munro to go to third spot. He sniffed an opportunity, went right around the outside at Autobahn. That's not a place that you generally see someone do that. He got the momentum and used it massively to his advantage in his tag-restricted light heat number two. Of course, all these drivers utilising 125cc water-cooled motors, various motors available for utilisation in this category. They've got a restrictor on them to knock some of the power out of them but certainly none of the thrill as we've seen in this event so far. Through they come. We've got three laps to go. Your race leader is Nathaniel Harrison by 1.6 seconds over Jocel, then Munro, Mortensen, Jones, Whitaker, then it is Scott for longer. Then it's Thomas Williams and Callan Mullins rounds out your top ten as they come through the top turn. There is Munro and he has closed down now on Docell. So Jack Munro, he is not done and dusted. He wants second spot here. He started further down the order. Did Munro in 12th spot. He's up to third but still has designs with two laps to go on getting himself into second position. He was seven tenths of a second quicker than Docell the last time through. There's only four tenths of a second that gapped them with just under Two laps remaining here. So Jack Munro driving out of his skin in our second cart that you can see on screen. The number 18 now. He is pushing on something deluxe here. Trying to close on to the rear of Jack Dussel. Up to the Autobahn corner they go. Harrison leads by a considerable margin here. Let's have a look and see what run that Munro gets down the back straight away. Oh, he's got pace. He's definitely got pace here. So the 54 of Docell holding on. Munro getting closer with every single corner that goes by. Harrison gets the last lap board. Munro on racing terms, side by side into one. Oh, yes. They were side by side. Munro again on the outside. It switched back to the inside and he just held on. And that was a brilliant move there. A brilliant drive by Munro. And great respect from Jack Docell to give him the racing room as they go up to Video Pro. Docell not done with yet. Through there they go. Can Docell get the run here? He takes a look over his shoulder to see where Mortensen is. Through the left hander they go and onto the back straight away. And now Munro's just left him. As Nathaniel Harrison comes back to the star finishing straight. He will take the victory in the number 70. He gets it done. Second place goes to Jack Munro. Then it was Docell, followed by Mortensen. Derek Jones in fifth. A big gap back then to Cody Scott in sixth position. Then it was Billy James Whitaker, Thomas Williams, Furlonger, Callan Mullins, then Aquasanta, Calwell, Vandenbroek, then Lees, Connor O'Reilly, Ned Lanahan, then Shislowski, 17th, Beaumont Walsh, 18th, then Zimmerman, Duncan, then Madison McNeil. Then it was Lane, followed by Briggs, and now Musson comes across the line and completes your 24 cart finishes in what was a very entertaining tag-restricted light heat race at number two. We've got a couple that have come to grief out on circuit, so we'll clean them up, take a break, and we'll finish off round number two with our tag-restricted masters. We'll be back soon.
So out on circuit now comes Tag Restricted Masters for their heat two. No prisoners being taken up in race control today. We just want to get as much racing in as we possibly can here this afternoon. That's exactly how we like it as Gavin Sowart brings them around in the tennis ball. Helmet at number 28, Alan Mays on the outside front row in the six. Scott Isco, the five. Start from three with Michael Robertson, the 23 out of four. Row number three is Carl Davison, the 33. Aaron Rape Jones, the 22. Row number four is the 60 of Matt Donnelly and Ben Spalding, the 35. Scotty Gray, the 74 from nine. Chris Board, the 43 from 10. Row six, Mark Robertson. In the 18, the 40 is Tim Lemon. Round number seven is Anthony Murphy, the 50 and the 91 of Evan Broughton. Jeff Bolton, the 31, and Adrian Ferguson, the 25. The next row of the grid, then it's Mark Brogan, Lunas Brown in the 44. Round number 10 is Adrian Godfrey, the 17, and Scott Campbell, the 55. Brad Garrity, the 10, Matt Meyer, the 76. Chris Briggs is 16, Stephen Jones, John's the 47, and Kevin Field is the 26th and last runner. Ten laps on the board, set for a start away. Better start this time from Mays. However, he slots himself into second position by Soward. Behind Soward, I should say. Nice start there from the Masters. Out of RHQ for the first time. Everyone just getting themselves into their rhythm to start things off. A couple of manoeuvres coming out through Video Pro to get it all underway. <coughs> so Soward and Mays have already opened a gap here. <laughs> Soward was a man to beat in the previous heat race. A little bit tame for the early stages of this one for the Masters. Cross the line they come. Soward, Mays. Hisco into third spot. Michael Robinson to fourth. Then Rap Jones, Gray, Davidson. Then it's Robinson, followed by Murphy. Broughton running out your 10. Spalding, Bolton, Brogan, Lemon and Ferguson. Your top 15 as they sit at the moment. Oh, one's gone around your third place man there, Scott Hisco. He's had a shocker. He just went around in front of a fairly solid group that was battling it out for third. So he drops himself well and truly down the order. In fact, he's stone motherless last. So that's not the way that Scott Hisco would have liked his race to continue on here in heat number two as they work their way around. Here's the battle. That's the 23 machine. Board makes up a spot in the 43. That was a 74, I should say, of Scott Gray. So it's Robinson, Gray and Rape Jones in this battle down through turn number one. Third, fourth and fifth. Through the flip-flop they go. Amazing second, the quickest driver out there. Big battles are one for third. Now move comes from the 74. Can he make it stick? Not quite at that stage for Scott Gray. He's going to have to rethink it. He'll try and do a switch back here down the back stretch. Got a good run, but Robinson has got the number 23 planted in the middle of the circuit. Now, Gray goes up the inside and gets third spot. Doesn't run it too wide that it leaves himself open, but it's also given Rap Jones a bit of a sniff in the 22 as they come across the line. They've got a slight gap then back to Anthony Murphy who's got past Carl Davison as we're now on lap number four of our ten. Pace is a cracker out there at the moment. Gray already opening up an advantage over Robinson and Rab Jones. Rab Jones in the bright green helmet at the bottom of your screen there trying to Move himself into fourth position past Robinson. Oh, we've got one that's stopped on the back stretch. He gets it restarted. The back end of it was looking a little bit worse from where for the one second that I got to see it on screen. Out of the final turn comes this group. There's your top two. Your third place man then is Scott Gray. With a slight gap back then to Robinson and Rab Jones. So Sauer, the quickest driver on circuit. Him and Mays in second. Those two that you're watching right now. 
a trading fast slap. The purple lights flickering between the two of them. Purple light, of course, denoting, denoting I should say, that they have set the quickest lap of the race thus far. <coughs> Mays looks like he might be a bit close to this lap. Everything else has settled down. The battle that we were watching before has strung out. That's the end of lap number five. So we are halfway there. Soward leads from Mays. Coming across the line in third is Gray. Then it's Michael Robinson, Rab Jones. A big gap back then to Anthony Murphy in fifth. Oh, no problem for Rab Jones in a 22. So Rab Jones had a drama and he's rejoined, but he is voluntarily down the order. Aaron Rab Jones is just at the back end of the top 10. Plenty going on further back in the pack as we work lap number six. And Sauer just does a 51-513. The quickest lap of the race, out by nearly half a second here. Plenty going on further back, as you can see, as the whole field streams on through a big field of tag restricted masters across the tag restricted titles this weekend. To set from the start, this is incredibly tame for the masters. Normally, there's a bit more doing than this from this lot. Maybe they're just saving it up for heat three and a final coming up a little bit later on. There's first and second go through. Gray, 74. He's just decided he's going to join the quickest lap party with a 51.290. So she a considerable amount quicker than the best laps for both Soward and Mays. Second through to sixth spot, all did personal bests that time by. Is so now on lap number seven? Soward started to pull a gap on Mays. It's out to half a second. Gray there in third position and Robinson in fourth spot. I trust that you're enjoying all the action here from Ipswich Kart Raceway, part of the Willowbank Ipswich Motorsport Precinct. It's become so well known, not just in Australia, but around the world, certainly. In a drag racing sense right through North America with the annual winner nationals. And I just saw Aaron Rep Jones come past as he dropped down the order earlier on it was very slow he's just hanging on at the moment in the 22 here's aaron rap jones scotty gray in third position he's having a race all of his own out there at the moment in third racing out of the project x stable with william yarwood and the team It's easy as you like for Gavin Soward up the front in the number 28 cart. He's just gone with a 51-252. <coughs> he works his way up the back stretch. Alan Mays, he's on a test session as well. Gray can't make any ground in third position. Same can be said for Robinson. So when Soward comes through this time, he will get the last lap forward. to be on the way home on his 10th and final lap here. Soward crosses the line. One to go. He's back the pace right off. He's comfortable up the front. He knows the situation. Robinson goes across the line in fourth. Battle down into turn one between the 50 and the 91. That was Murphy and Broughton. So half a lap to go for your race leader, Gavin Soward. <laughs> Through the right-hander at the top, he runs. Started on the pole. Didn't look like being headed throughout the course of this race. As he comes down through the hairpin, he'll bring them around to the checkered flag as it is unfurled. So Gavin Soward in the 28. Easy does it, takes the win by a fair margin over Alan Mays, a second that was at the end. 
Scotty Gray home in third, just to let them know that he's there. He sets the quickest lap of the race. As he crosses the checkers, there's Robinson, followed by Murphy, Broughton, Spalding, then Bolton. Just waiting now on the rest of the field to come through. Then it was Davison and Brogan rounding it. It's then followed by Ferguson, Godfrey. Then it's Campbell. No, in fact, it was Garrity, then Darcy, then Campbell. Campbell losing two on the last lap. Kevin Field just waiting now for Stephen Johns to come through. Who was going to get the battle of this one as they come to the line? It's Tim Lemon over Mark Robinson. Peter Fletcher rounds out your 20 cart finishes. We're going to take a break, and that's the end of our second round of heats. We're going to come back with heat three fairly soon. We are coming towards the business end of our race day here at Ipswich. Trust you're enjoying if you're sitting back at home and have got the feet up with a nice cool drink on, well, in some parts of Australia, incredibly wet parts of Australia. Seen some photographs out of the Newcastle Kart Club, also the Greater Sydney Kart Club. So we think of all the members and admin people there with uh, trying to mop up what's been going on down there. Absolutely disgraceful. If you watched the NRL last night, from Newcastle and they haven't been there, the Newcastle Kart Club, not too far away from that part of the world. So you would have seen how much rain was coming down in that part. Thankfully the rain cleared here that we saw overnight and the early part of this morning and we've had dry running for much of the day. 
Heat number three for Cadet 9 and 4 SS Cadet is out on circuit. Lucas Losco, he's been the man to beat in the number 92 Velocity Race Division machine. He'll be on pole. Ricardo Johnson, a 50 on the outside front. Oscar Kozak, so quick. He will start out of P3 in the 66 with Oliver Flack in the 11 out of 4. Row 3 is Hudson Kelly, the 4, and Martin Shea, the 78. Oscar Ray, the 2. Luke Robinson, the 57. Out of row 5 is Brooke Lanahan, Waddy, Mitrovic, Mathers and Mathers. Then it's Jones Bailey. Maturak and Hocking. We're green. Down to turn one. Again, eight on the board for the Cadet Nines. And Losco gets the best of it. However, Ricardo Johnson's decided that he wants to throw a fight out as well in the 50, the Blue Helmet. He's there in second, right on the tail of young Lucas Losco. Up to Video Pro. And they've pulled away from the pack. It's battling five, forming for third spot out there at the moment as well. So that could be interesting as that develops through the course of this race. Eight laps on the board. Thanks for your company throughout the course of today. Onto the front stretch comes Lucas Losco. Won't take him long to assert his authority on this one. The 66 machine of Oscar Kozak. He got shuffled back a bit there, but he gets up the inside of Shea and goes into fourth spot. That's Losco, Johnson, Flack, Kozak, Shea, Brooke Lanahan, Ray, Kelly, Robinson and Waddy rounding out your top ten as they sit at the moment. There's one, two and three. What about this battle for fourth? Oh, gee, the 66. Kozak, he got high, wide and handsome coming out of RHQ. That's really given Shea Kozak and Lanahan, sorry, Shea Lanahan and Ray a bit of a impetus to catch up that gap. Down the back stretch they come. Big move into the hairpin. That's the number two machine. That's Oscar Ray moving up a spot. So he's on the move now. There goes the 11 of Flack in third. The 66 of Kozak has Shea, Ray and Brooke Lanahan behind him. Kelly in 8th spot, Robinson in ninth, and Waddy running at your top 10. Forget about Losco, he is gone. Kozak, after getting shuffled early in the runnings out there, he's trying to pull clear. He's certainly got pace and he'll want to try and position himself nicely for the final coming up later on this afternoon, potentially under lights. Hope we try and get there before... It gets too dark. So Kozak has actually got himself up to third here. So, oh, big move there from the two. The green and black machine of Oscar Ray. So Losco leads from Johnson. Next one through is the 11 of Flack. Then it's Kozak, now he's in fourth. Then it's the two, the car class machine of Ray. Then Martin Shea, the next one through behind him. Brooke Lenahan, Kelly. Then Robinson, Waddy, Mathers and Jet Mathers. So Mathers are thrown in 11th and 12th. Then Jones. Majorek is leading the 4SS. Category has become customary over Chicago Bailey. There's Mitrovic and Hocking. That's the order as they sit at the halfway point and... What's happened here? Have we had a mistake out there? Is that to stay? No, we haven't had a mistake. That's a two of Oscar Ray, who's got all sorts of crossed up and been drifting back into others' clutches as we work lap number four at the moment. Losco leading them back around to the start, finish straight. He'll have nearly the full length of the straightaway. There's the two machine. Oscar Ray. He's got the David Serra cart class stickers on the machine. I was having a chat to Dave earlier on this week, doing some testing ahead of the Australian Kart Championship next round. He's got a bit of a League of Nations going on, heading to Pakapunyal. That'll become clear over the coming days as the number two of Ray. He's now clearly in a fourth spot. He's pulled clear of Shea and Brooke Lanahan that are fighting it out. Luke Robinson right in behind them. Then it's Kelly, Mathers and Mathers. They've now got themselves inside the top 10. Here comes the Bundaberg Bullet. He is your race leader in the 92. It's Losco. Gone very stealthy this weekend. It's got to be said in the black colours. 
blue plates on. He is a state champion in this class. Really came on throughout last year. It was amazing to see the progression of him. Been working with the team at Velocity, former Australian champion. In Joshua Carr. He's just spent some time in the US Isle, the number two. It's a problem for Oscar Ray. Sounds like the mufflers come adrift of that one. But Josh Carwell is living in Texas. Counted former president. Was no longer with us in George W. Bush's neighbours, the likes of Mark Cuban and so on. Not bad people to be rubbing shoulders with down the pub, that's for sure. <coughs> so we are on lap number six here. There is a 72 of Jacob Brook Lanahan. He's in fifth spot in front of Martin Shea. Takes a brief look over his shoulder. Everyone a bit spread out there at the moment. The two parallel carts on circuit together. In fact, that's Robinson has made up a spot on Shea and he's on the move here. Look at Robinson go. Robinson having a look here. Up the inside, side by side through turn number one into two. And Brooke Lenahan was able to hold on to it. But for how much longer? It's game on here in the latter stages of this one. We're working lap number seven at the moment. Through the right hander they go. The battle for fifth and sixth spot out there. It is on as they come out of the video pro corner. Robinson pushing on here on Brooke Lenahan. Then behind them is Hudson Kelly. Out of the top turn and onto the back stretch. Will he have a look here, Robinson? As your race leader starts his last lap, Robinson went to the high to try and get a tighter line on the exit of the hairpin. Can he set him up down the front straight away? Because watch out, because Kelly's right behind him as well. Front straight away there, side by side. Across the start finishing line to 57 on the outside. Oh, they both get through there, A-OK. -okay. But your race leader, Lucas Losco, he's been without peer in his Cadet 9 category today. Up to the top turn for the final time. <laughs> Here's this battle coming towards us further back in the pack. Is there going to be a lunge? No, there's not. Meantime, Losco, he comes toward the final corner. And Losco comes to the line. He gets the job done. Waiting now for Johnston to come home in second position. This battle further back in the pack still going on. Nothing doing in terms of move movement. And it's Johnston who gets home in second spot over Flack. Then Ray, very lucky to hold on there with the muffler hanging off it. Robinson, oh, Brooke Lanahan gets home just in front of Robinson. Then Kelly, then Shea, followed by Mathers, that being Jonathan. Kozak dropped back to 10th in all of that. Jet Mathers, the next one through. Then it'll be Fred Waddy. Then it's Hugo Jones and waiting now for Chicago Bailey to come towards us as the winner of 4SS Cadet. And then it will only be Oakland Hocking to complete our finishes, the second of the 4SS drivers to come to the line. That completes their heat racing. Plenty of work to do down in the pit area if they are to close that gap to Lucas Losco in our final. He takes the win by six seconds here at Ipswich. We'll be back shortly. So KA3 Junior Heavy, the next cars on circuit there, out there. And Charlotte Page has earned the pole in the number 22. The 8 of Cooper Friend on the outside front row. Tyson McGill off row 2, the 36. And Oliver Aquasana. 
Buster Bailey out of five to six. Zach Hilda, the 25 from six. Then it's Tyler Tillmouth in the 97 and Will Carmichael, the 23 off row four. Row five is Jackson Fishley and Cooper Fish in the 91. Hudson Lippy at the 66 and Marcus Leo, the 15. Round number seven to seven of Max Southgate and Zoe Vuchard in the number 16. Then it's Zane Chapman, Hamish Cowan and Kaiden McKinn. Branding out your 17 cart field. What about this young lady? Last weekend, she was at the Cremona Circuit in Italy, racing the Champions of the Future Academy program, a brand new Arrive and Drive series that's been launched this year. 12 events over six rounds, Saturday and Sunday are each their own event. She is part of the F1 Academy Scholarship program, one of three lady drivers in her class, one of nine lady drivers across the three different classes. A tremendous achievement for this young lady who cut her teeth on this very circuit. Saturday, she passed more carts than any driver in any category. When I was watching it late Saturday night here, all I saw was Charlotte Page go up, 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 up. I think she passed something like 10 carts in the first heat, eight carts in the second. Then it went to the final. Of course, Pip Cassabeni finishing on the podium in both of his Feature races, James Anna Ostiatis out of Victoria won the juniors on Sunday. However, had a drop-down infringement, which dropped him down the order, handing the win to none other than Ella Hakkinen, the daughter of double Formula One world champion Mika Hakkinen. It's the biggest win of her karting career. Getting set for a start here in KA3 Junior Heavy. Page and friend off the front row. Let's go green. Down through turn one they go. All nice and even through there. Good start. And as Paige who leads away, she'd love nothing more than to take than to take the pink and black Empire Kart Sport number 22 to the top step here today. I certainly wave the jet lag off. That is absolutely for sure and for certain. Friend has gone with her in the eight there. No, in fact that's uh, McGill who's got himself into second position in the early stages of this one. So McGill getting a good start. Up through the top turn they go. He's going to throw the challenge down the back stretch now. <coughs> All fairly evenly struck at this stage. As they come to the line, McGill pressuring the rear of the 22 as they cross the line. Cooper Friend dropping to third. Buster Bailey into fourth. And now McGill takes the lead. <laughs> so Paige has slotted herself into second, friend into third. In fourth placing there is Bailey. Tillmouth fighting it back in fifth spot. Then Hilda is holding a watching brief in six. It's tightening up at the front. This KA100 motor style of racing. This is what happens. This is how it goes. It ebbs and flows. This page takes the lead back. McGill's on the outside. Can't do anything there. Friend's going to have a think about it as McGill's going to be on the outside as they come to the line. If I'm Cooper Friend, I'm quite happy with my position in third spot at the moment. Watching these two having a bit of a battle. So he can try and take advantage of it. However, he's got Buster Bailey on his tail as they come down to the left hand. Oh, Bailey under attack here from Tilmouth now. A counter attack from Bailey on Friend up to the top. Oh, it's tightening up here. It's getting nice and tight. Pay Page and McGill have opened a small gap there. Across the line they go. Look at McGill here on the tail of Page. And he has a crack there at turn three. Gets it done. Nice move there. So can Charlotte fight back here?
Charlotte, one of the first to tap into Peter Crossingham's Empire Kart Sport operation. Started up at the end of last year and has just dramatically grown in no time at all. <coughs> so across the line comes McGill. Nice shot. Our top three pretty well nose to tail at the moment as friends the quickest driver on circuit he's closed in here he's the one that's just been methodically going about his business in third spot <clears throat> he's going to have some friends in zach hilda and buster bailey for company very shortly as well so this is starting to tighten up here <clears throat> between our top half dozen as we're just past the halfway point in this eight lap race Now Page goes back to the lead. Good move there. Now that's given the aid of friend. A little bit of impetus. He ain't going to be making any friends out there. He's not there to make friends as Cooper Friend. Down the front straight away he goes into turn one. We're on lap six of our eight here. Friend is the quickest on circuit. In fact, Hilda goes quicker that time by. There's Charlotte Page, the Empire Kart Sport. The very distinctive number 22. And a beautiful pink colours there. Now, friend's going to have a crack at second, does it? Gets past McGill. So can he be the one that takes the fight up to Charlotte Page here? McGill's having none of it. Fights straight back up the inside. He wasn't prepared to let friend run away with it there and try and hold the battle or take up a challenge to Charlotte Page. Now, Zach Hilda. He's right in the mix as well as they come. Oh, we're going three wide on the exit of the final turn with two laps left to go. My goodness, oh, Buster Bailey. He gets busted out. So while our top two now have pulled well away, what's going to happen for third position? That's a big question. Cooper Fish has got up into that spot. Then it's the 26, is it 25 of Hilda? The 25. <clears throat> when they come around, Charlotte Page will get the last lap boy, but this battle is not over and done with yet. Watch for a dive bomb at the hairpin. There's the 91 of Cooper Fish. He's been the big benefactor in all of this, getting himself up to third placing. On the way home now, last lap. Page, McGill, Fish. Hilda, Dennis Fishley, sorry, friend, Tilmouth Fishley, then Carmichael, Bailey, and Leo is your top 10. <clears throat> They've settled it down a little bit after all of the shenanigans that were going on there, but no shenanigans up the front for this young lady in Charlotte Page. She's got to hold on for a few more corners. Up through the auto barn corner she goes. <clears throat> Onto the back stretch she comes. She is on the way home here. A couple further back there. <clears throat> Still fighting it out. Meantime, Charlotte. Last weekend, she was racing the best in the world. This weekend, the best at home. And she bests them in this third heat race. Just getting there over Tyson McGill. Fish gets the quickest lap of the race on the final. Then it's Hilda Bailey. Then it was... Silmouth, then friend at Carmichael, Leo Chapman, Aquasanta, then Vouchard, then Fishley. He dropped right back to 13th spot. Then Hudson Lippiat, Kaiden McKinn, and Maxwell Southgate with Hamish Cowan rounding out your finishes. There it is. Charlotte Page gets it done and positions herself nicely for the final as we go to a break.
back at Ipswich, get at 12. These have been exciting today and plenty of action. Let's hope that we don't get any interventions like we've seen in our first two heats where we've had to bring them to a standstill on a couple of occasions. Alistair Flack to line up on pole in a 10. Riley Curtis, the number 30 out of two. Xander Watts will start from three in the 57 with Jack Larson, the 35 from four. Vince Turhorse and Blake Haig on the next row of the grid out there. Then behind them will line up in, that will look like Aston Mills in the 11 and Monty Jamison, the 43. Brock Nolan, he's been chipping away the Townsville and the Cadet 9 Australian champion. He'll line up in ninth with Jeremy Broadband. He's been fast in the 10. Out of 10. Out of row 6, it's Archer Bailey, the 88. Jordy Butler, the 12. Then it's Nick Kinder and Mick Quintiliani in the 27. Masika, Lampard, Flack, Smith, Folly, Grother, Walton, Petroni and the rest in this 39 cart field set for a start this time. They come to the line. Who's it going to be? This time around, we're away. Flack gets a good start as they shoot down through the kink and into turn number one. Oh, a bit going on in the middle pack. A couple of them collide, but they're all through there cleanly. A uh, few have lost a lot of positions, so they've got a lot of work to do as everything settles itself down. Flack, that being Alistair, leads away. He's got a slight advantage there as they work their way up towards the video pro corner. That's over Curtis in second spot. A couple of big moves coming from further back in the pack as they head up toward the Autobahn corner for the first time. Get 12s, always a pack field, always exciting to watch as they go down the back stretch on lap number one here. Eight on the board to complete their heat racing. They will only have their final coming up a bit later on today as they come out of the final turn and onto the front straight away to complete lap one. It's flat. Followed by Curtis. I think Haig's been one of those ones that's been shuffled right back down the order. Larson, two horse butler, board bent Bailey. Haig's actually in ninth spot, I should say. Carter Grove, the great start up into 10th after starting about 20th, I think it was. Petroni, then Quintiliani, Flack, Smith, Lampard, Masika, Waddy, then Trasilli, and Mills and Hoare. That's your order as they sit. As Flack and Curtis have opened a gap up over Xander Watts as they come through Video Pro. You can see them streaming on through. Trust that you are enjoying our live streaming, whether it's on YouTube. YouTube or through speedcafe.com. Great to have your company throughout the course of today. Flack down the back straight away, but look at Curtis. He's got pace. He's got pace as Curtis. Will he have a look under brakes? No, he didn't have the confidence through there at that point in time, but you get the feeling it is only a matter of time before Riley Curtis has a go at Alistair Flack here. He is right on his wheel tracks. He is shadowing him. Takes a peek over to see where Xander Watts is. Knows that he's got space. Look at these two. Up the inside goes Curtis. New race leader. Curtis leads away. A great move. He fainted it in through the kink then got it at the pit turn and he takes the race lead. Then the number 57 of Watts. He closes in now as well as Curtis wants to start to build an advantage. Lasted in fourth spot. He's pulled well clear of the next group which is set up by two horse Butler, Broadbent, Hayes and Grother. They are on the move this group. There's about seven or eight of them. Have a look at them there getting out of the video pro turn. They're racing three at the front though. Down the back straight away they go. Curtis followed by Flack in the 10. Just moves nicely through that corner. Does the Curtis cut. He leads for the first time. Command in third. Watts in the 57. Just dropped off the back. Oh, Flax decided to return serve on Riley Curtis. It was exactly the same move that Curtis pulled on him one lap prior. And Curtis, sorry, Flack goes back to the lead, which opened the door for Watts to go into second. So Riley Curtis, he went from first back to third with exactly the same move that he pulled on Alistair Flack just one lap prior. Unbelievable. Down at turn number one. How cool was that? Now Curtis back up the inside of Watts. He goes into second placing yet again in fourth spot as last and he's closing the gap ever so slightly in fifth placing. You've got two horse and behind them you've got Butler and Hague's on the move here. As they come back around to the start, finish straight. Lost a couple of them out of that group, I think. Yes, Carter Grother, I haven't seen where he's gone. He's dropping down the order. So there's a problem out there for the Chapa Chap kid in the 42. There he is. Oh, he's pulled off 
to the side of the race circuit. I can see only one of them. So Carter out of Gladstone is out of commission. He will not be happy with that at all. As Alistair Flack being back in the lead, he's decided he's sick of playing. So he's pulled clear on the group. Gee, there's groups wherever you look around this race circuit. Wild racing here from the Cadet 12s. All of them using the Cadet engine that's used right around the world. The Vortex Mini Rock, a 60cc air-cooled motor. Maxxis tyres strapped to the lot of them, of course. Maxxis, the tyre of choice for the European Open Championships this year. Curtis now with the new fastest lap. He hasn't given up in this one with three to go. So the order is Flack, Curtis, Watts. Then it's Larson, Haig, Turhorse, Butler, Petroni, Bailey, Quintiliani. Then it's Mill, Smith, Broadbent, Lampard. Then Waddy is your top 15. Geez, this top three. I thought that Larson might have had an opportunity to close in here. However, they've just absolutely gone. Then Blake Haig's got himself into fifth spot. He was down to ninth at the end of the first lap. So it's been a nice recovery for young Blake to get himself back up into P5. This will position him nicely for a good start in the final a bit later on as they come around a complete lap number six. Curtis, can he do anything more about Alistair Flack in front of him? It was 0.473 the last time by. Now 0.433, so minimal is the difference between Flack and Curtis at the moment, despite the fact that Curtis set a new fastest lap. It's down to hundreds of a second in lap time, but you can see the attitude of Curtis in that Tony cart. Look at the way that he's driving. Look at the attitude of the cart and his body work, the way that he is pushing on here. He has not given up. They are working lap number seven. So when they cross the line, they will get the last lap board to be told that they only have 1,088 metres to go on this Ipswich racetrack. Down the back straight away they run. <coughs> Flax lead was 0.433. It's been minimal if anything has been made up by Riley Curtis as they come back to the line. They've left Sander Watts in third well and truly behind. And then in fourth placing is still Jack Larson in the 35. It's been a solid performance from Larson, if not a very lonely one in fourth position. Meantime, Jordy Butler's got through in sixth spot on Vince Turhorse. Quintiliani, he's been quiet today, but expect something from him in the final. Michael Quintiliani, he's just been chip, chip, chipping away at it. And we are on the way home. We are on our final lap. Curtis, he got it down to point triple three between him and Flack, but he's got to pull something fairly large, which these guys are so evenly matched in terms of the engine performance. They're exactly the same. The tyres are the same. It comes down to the cruise and a setup and the want, desire and ability of the race driver. Down through the hairpin they go. Flack, he is holding onto the lead. The chequered flag is being unfurled for Alistair Flack as he comes to the line and he gets the job done. So great job there from Alistair Flack Riley Curtis. He gets home in second position over Xander Watts. And then Jack Larson home fourth, followed by Haig, Butler, Turhorse, Quintiliani eighth, then Bailey Petroni, then it's Mills, Broadbent, Smith, Lampard, Leggett gets home in 15th in front of Waddy, then Paige Flack, April Flack, Nick Kinder, then Brock Nolan dropped to 20th spot, then Tyler Hoare, Lennox Carson, the 90s, dribbles over the line. Lennox Carson home in 22nd, and Leighton Thorley, Olivia Walton, Monty Jamison, Chelsea Flack, Dawson, Tresillian, Black, then Jones, Masico, Fuller, and Folly. So Cooper Folly dropping right back down the order. Problems for him. But no doubt about Alistair Flack, who says, I'm going to set the quickest lap on the last lap, if you don't mind, and takes out Cadet 12, heat number three. We're going to be back shortly. Won't take us long. We'll have another heat race on the circuit.
And welcome back to Ipswich. A bit of cloud cover started to come in. Doesn't look too threatening at this stage. Been quite a decent day. A couple of uh, spinning rain, bit of spinning rain on the way out this morning. and certainly got us just before our three qualifying sessions before we came on air. But the track has been by and large dry. Aside from a few damp patches in our opening two or three heat races. Trust you're enjoying all the actions for us. This junior hits the circuit. Jackson DeWong, he's the man of the moment in the number 13. He'll line up on the pole. Jackson Turner. Those two have shared the heat race wins today in the 88. Next row of the grid, Harrison Lippiot in the number 51 at Buster Bailey in the number 6. Dane Norris is 62 from 5. Then it is Hamish Douglas at 25. And J.D. Chapman in the number 27 is your small but very entertaining field out here for 4SS. The four strokers hit the track. Uh oh Oh, Jackson, he, did, he missed a memo. So he... Oh, hang on, another one's gone around here. It's turned into a dog's breakfast. So they'll get themselves all sorted out. That was actually Turner. So the two that were meant to start on the front of the grid has both had a little bit of a how are you going. Anyway... Just get the heart rate up, just what you need for a 4SS race. Set for a start this time. And it's uh, Duong who gets the best of it down to turn number one. So Turner trying to go with Duong in the early stages. Bailey, oh, Turner up the inside, thank you very much, says I'll take that. Buster in third spot. He's given it a push already in this one, the number six. Oh, DeWong back up the inside of Turner. Oh, good move from Turner. Gets the switch back straight away and retakes the race lead. So, and here comes Bailey. So Turner hugging the inside line there down the back stretch. So DeWong up the inside. Bailey's going to try and capitalise. He's not close enough in fourth position. Would be Lippy out as Duong takes the lead. As they come to the line now to end lap number one of our eight. Fifth placing is Dane Norris and Hamish Douglas. JD Chapman in seventh placing. So Turner in the BRM chassis. He's been entertaining to watch throughout the course of the day. Here's Jackson Turner. He's been in a bit of everything, to be honest. It's a Jackson and Jackson show up the front at the moment. So the Wong will want to try and start to open a gap here on the driver behind him in Turner. And now Turner looks up the inside. He takes the lead. DeWong, he'll hug the outside line, trying to make a switch back here at Howard's Concreting. Couldn't do it. What can Buster Bailey do? Can Buster Bailey be the fly in the Jackson's ointments? Or he goes to the outside, does Buster. Lippiat in fourth position. He's got an eye on what's going on in front of him as well. So Buster needs a result here. It'd be great to see him get up there. He's always knocking on the door as Buster Bailey. I reckon we've got a bit to play out, not only in this heat race, but once we get to the final as well in this 4SS Junior category. So to Wong, down the back stretch in second placing. What's he going to do here? Lippiat. Right on the hammer there of Bailey as now Duong goes for the lead. He runs it a bit wide. Turner's going to go and try and go all the way around the outside. He gets on the dirt. He keeps a foot into it, but he drops back to third. And all that has done has cost momentum for your now again race leader in Jackson Duong because Bailey, he's got a bit of a roll on here. But Duong's been able to eliminate Turner from his... Back bumper, or front bumper, whichever way you wanted to look at it throughout the course of all that. And now he's comfortably in the lead. It's up to Bailey now as the chaser in the number six machine. The order is to Wong, followed by Bailey. Then it's Lippiat, Turner, Douglas, Norris and Chapman. <clears throat> so Lippiat here 
He's right on the tail of the green number six for second position. <clears throat> we're working lap number four of our eight, so we're halfway there. Whoa. whoa. So Lipiat, new quickest lap for him. He hasn't shown his hand today thus far. Has Lipiat? Could he be saving himself for the latter stages of the day? That's when the trophies are handed out. That's the time that you want to really start to push yourself up there. Max's tyres again on these guys. To Duong now, comfortably up in P1 and opening that gap. There's the margin, the Dorong holds, the arrow chassis leading the way. Then this battle for second, third and fourth. This has been fascinating. Bailey, he's there, lippy out on his tail. And then returning is Turner after dropping back to fourth. Onto the front straight away they come. The pressure is on Buster Bailey down through turn one. When will Lippiat have a look? I get the feeling that he is the one with the pace of this group at the moment. He's stuck in the middle. Well, Turner certainly got the pace, but I feel like lippiat has got more pace than your man in second position as he takes a peek to see just where the BRM chassis of your man in fourth spot, Turner, is. Then there's that slight gap back then to Hamish Douglas. Then it's Dane Norris and JD Chapman. <coughs> so Lippiat pressuring here. Two laps to go. For Jackson DeWong, he is well and truly in control of this one. Buster Bailey, he is just hanging on out there. Lipiat's on his tail, who's getting pressure in turn from Turner in the 88. No passing manoeuvres that we've seen so far over the last few laps. Everyone just... Keeping it very nice and neat. I get the feeling Lippiat's winding it up through the Autobahn corner. Bailey keeping it fairly central on the road. Lippiat's got to run. Will he have a look? Can't get it to where he needed it. Could that leave him open to Turner here? Through the final set of turns as DeWong comes by to get the final lap board. So it's now or never for Lippiat. Bailey looked a bit ragged through turn one there. He gathers it up. I think Turner's the one who's sniffing what may happen here. Or certainly sniffing an opportunity that may present itself. That is for sure. He comes to Wong towards us. Oh, Turner's the one that gets high, wide and handsome. And he loses all the ground that he had there. I thought he was going to wind up for a pass or two. But he's lost the ground. It's Lippiat. Who can have a go? The pressure's on Bailey. Up through the top turn. They run down the back stretch for the final time. Bailey goes defensive. Lippiat goes to the high side. He'll look for a cut back at the exit of the hairpin. But well driven by Bailey. Meantime, DeWong. He comes to the start finish line. He gets the job done. Second place. All oh, there side by side to the line. Uh, but it's going to be Bailey who gets it. He just holds on from Harrison Lippiat. Then Turner, Hamish Douglas, the next one through. Then it was Dane Norris and J.D. Chapman. Again, another very entertaining for us this junior race. We're going to take a small break and be back soon.
So if they come for Open Performance and DD2, this will be a fascinating race as we've seen so far. A bit of action going on among this group. Bailey Sagadak will start on the pole in the 25 in open performance. Lachlan Murphy, the 15. He's been impressive today. He'll line up on the outside front row. Hokuto Ide, the Japanese, in the 29 from three. Jay Cool, the 42, the Victorian, out of four. Brown number three, Stan Hutchinson, in the eight. Finlay Derry, the 37. Our Swedish visitor in the DR card, Hampus Varis, just 15 years of age, will start out of seven out of eight. Will be Troy Losko, the multiple Australian champion, and Cam McLeod, the PCR number 92 from position number nine. In dd to Scotty Howard will line up on the pole, Angus Mathers on the outside front row. Then it's Adam Wood, the 21. Jet Johnson, of course, the third generation superstar racer, will start from four in the 18. Then it's Cleveland, followed by Duffy and Smith, set for a start away. Do you call me that one going down into turn number one? Where has Sagadak shuffled back to fourth spot? Murphy back to third, and he's under attack there. Did Deddy Twos get underway a bit further back? So it's Hokuto Ide who leads away up to Autobahn in the 29 for Patrizzi Course. But he is under pressure as they go down to the hard braking zone right there. So cool into second, but he's got Sagadak on his tail as they go down through turn number one. Ide starting to open the gap here in the 29. Hit just over three tenths of a second. There's the DD2 crew. Coming across the line, headed up by Scott Howard, who leads over Adam Wood, Scott Cleveland, then Jet Johnson, Angus Mathers, and Steph Duffy. Adam Wood's been very strong, assisting us with the IT side of our live stream. So the graphic that you can see to the left-hand side of your screen, Adam, has been instrumental in putting a lot of that together. As Jay Cool and Sagadak have a bit of a battle going on over second place. But Hokuto Ide showing them a clean set of wheels here in the number 29. So Scott Howard further back, he is looking to make it three from three in DD2. So get back with the new fastest lap of the race. A 46.552 on the end of lap number three. So we're on lap four now. That'll bring up the halfway point when they come back. Now the race is on for the race lead here. Ede under the pump. There he is in the 29, the 25 of Sagadak right behind him. Sagadak's got a run here in the Cosmic. He's right on the barrel art. Up the inside. Oh, geez, Ide didn't want to give that up without a fight. But Sagadak, he forced the argument and took over the lead. In third spot there is Jay Cool, the Victorian. Trying to close in on the back of them. Then Murphy's still holding a watching brief in fourth. McLeod's made ground in the fifth spot, of course. Was involved in a bit of a skirmish the last time through. Here's Scotty Howard leading the way. He's been doing a great amount of racing up in Asia this year, breaking up some frequent flyer miles. He and Scott Cleveland raced the last round of the Rotex series up there, getting in the miles before the Rotex Cup to be held here at Ipswich later on in the year. Also the Queensland State Karting Championships to be held here as well. 
Great to have the cart, uh, the Queensland Championships back at Ipswich for the first time in a long time. And we'll be bringing you all the action from that event with drivers expected to come from right around Australia as Sagadak asserts his authority up the front of 45 994 the only driver in the 45s on circuit at the moment and there he is made a very last minute switch as in days before the opening round the sp tools australian car championship into the cosmic chassis factory backing it just dessert for sagadak for many years him and his father be operating as privateers at national level and at the level of this club events as well and now has factory backing and John Target in his corner as they cross the line now two laps remaining for Sagadak he's opened a gap to 1.9 seconds over E-Day then it is Cool followed by Murphy then McLeod Derry Hutchison and then Scotty Howard he is the first of the DD2s narrowly over Scott Cleveland then Wood Jet Johnson, he has had a baptism of fire in DD2. Of course, driving under the Napa colours various places around Australia over the last couple of years as Jet Johnson has been flying the flag for that operation incredibly well. And now stepping back into karting and stepping into DD2. First time that I can recall seeing him in a DD2, so... He's definitely doing a good job out there as Sagadax opened the gap up to 2.3 seconds and he is on his final circulation. So Bailey Sagadak, the number 25, leading the way. There is Howard doing it comfortably. Cleveland hasn't let him get too far away, it's got to be said. As they cross the line. With Adam Wood in third. Meantime, at the top part of the race circuit, onto the back stretch, comes Bailey Sagadak. He's going to rack up another heat race win. Another heat race equals more miles, equals more knowledge on this kit that he's racing, and he takes it. Ede, great drive, second, cool, home in third, then Murphy, followed by McLeod in fifth. Next one through will be Derry, then it's Hutchinson. Waiting on now for Scotty Howard to come around and he will rack up the win in the DD2 category. There he is, now becomes synonymous with Birrell Art has Scott Howard. He leads away. Great drive from Scott Cleveland. He's the man that's been responsible for bringing the live stream to you is Scott Cleveland in that orange and black soddy cart. Adam Wood home in third position. Now waiting on Jet Johnson to come through. He's been in a battle with Steph Duffy. And indeed, uh, Jet comes across the line as fourth in category, but 11th on circuit. And then Stuffy, followed by Mathers. Then no problem. Our problems there for Varus, Losco and Smith, who didn't take the green flag. But Bailey Sagadak gets a win in open performance. Scott Howard, the win in DD2. We're going for a break. Be back soon. So tag restricted medium out on circuit. Ten on the board for this lot. Here we go, Jordy Mark on. He's undefeated today, so he'll start on the pole in the 42. Trent Hart is the 93 alongside. Andrew Torty has been good in the 55. Tony Cart 
from three. Gavin Whitmore, after a shocker in qualifying, he'll line up in fourth spot. David Vogel, the 66, and Luke Jacobson, the 22, off row three. Sam Misson, the eight, and Jonathan Lewis, 24. Zach King out on nine, Ryan Silcock alongside. 54 of Cox, and Beaumont Walsh, and DeSalvo out of 13, and a seven, Voigt, Chislowski, Daniel Sattler, Jordan, Highland, Valakot, Vegna, and Miller. Can anyone stop? Geordie Mark on here, one of our feature categories. Tag restricted, medium set for a start. Racing. And it's Mark on again who gets the best run. Down into turn number one, Torty. He was keen to get on with it, but had to settle for third spot on the exit of turn two. Oh, bit of feeling going on in that battle, second, third, fourth, and backwards. Bit of bump and grind happening out there at the moment. Tawny wakes a little time, goes second. There's Mark on. He's just taken off as he has done all day long so far. <clears throat> Through the hairpin, nice shot of your race leader out of the Bundaberg area. Across the line. It's Mark on. Then it's Cordy Hart as Vogels. Then Whitmore, Misson, Jacobson. There's that group, the snarling group behind Torty in the green and white Tony Cart. Harders right there with him in the arrow. Then behind Harders is Vogel, Whitmore. Never ceases to amaze. Gavin Whitmore is involved in all sorts. The last heat race. Still managed to start up towards the front. And he's in the mix again. And he'll certainly be right there when we get to finals a little bit later on. Back straightaway time once again. Working lap number two at this stage. Mark on comfortably in the lead. In the willpower, WPK number 42. <coughs> David Vogel in fourth. Pushing on to try and get onto racing terms with Trent Harders. There's a the gap, first to second. No one's been able to hold a candle to Geordie Mark on today in the 42. The battle for second and third on screen. Hart is in third, the 93. They've opened a gap over Vogel, who's under pressure from the 35. Whitmore goes to fourth. The end of lap number three now. <clears throat> Mark on goes through. Tortoise pull clear of Harders there a little bit. Further back, a few changes. Brad Cox in a seventh spot takes King Bowman, Walsh, Shizlowski, Voigt, and DeSalvo through. Jacobson loses a heap of spots. The gap from first to second, 2.1. Great wide shot of. This expansive Ipswich layout. <clears throat> Here's Andrew Torty, the super experience, number 55. Looks like Harders might have closed on him a bit here in the 93. We'll pick up the times as they cross the line. Mark on's lead, it was 2.1. It's now 2.4. Only narrowly did Harders close, only by a tenth of a second. But it's a tenth of a second closer than he wasn't just over a kilometre ago. And of course, Whitmore pushing on in a fourth position. <clears throat> There's your race leader coming towards us. There's second, third and fourth. Fifth and sixth in a good battle as well, Vogel and Misson. Misson trying to get through on Vogel. He's going to have a look here. There he is, the number eight of Sam Misson. Down the back stretch. <clears throat> so the order at the halfway point is Geordie Markon. 
Another new cricket slap for him, a 50.791. To give you an idea, last time by, it was a personal best for Torty with a 51, at 121. So four tenths the difference between those personal bests the last time by. Then it's Harders, followed by Whitmore, Vogel, Misson, King up to seventh now. Then it's Cox, Cheslowski, and Beaumont Walsh rounding out your top ten as they sit. The main battle on circuit is the one that you're watching. Sam Misson on the tail of David Vogel as they hit the back straight away. Can Misson have a go here down the back stretch? Not quite close enough at this stage. But then they've got a problem in Zach King's catching up to them in a 97. One thing we know about King is that he has pace. That is absolutely for sure. There's your leader, Jordy Marcon, in the 42. Hasn't been headed all day long. So Misson, further back. Misson has managed to get through on Vogel. After all of that, he's pushed him for a number of laps for fifth spot. So the number eight is in fifth placing. That's coming towards us now at Video Pro. Then you see the black helmet of Zach King. There's King in the 97. He is going to have a look at Vogel as well, up through the top part of the race circuit. What sort of a run did he get onto the back straight away? Young Zach King, videographer from this part of the world. For the corporate videos and all that type of thing. And he took up racing not all that long ago, did he? Seven laps in the books now. Here's Whitmore, he's pressuring for third. So Whitmore in the 35, he's on the back of Harders now. It's just been a graft for Gavin Whitmore to move his way forward, make the passes when he can, and now he's on the tail of Trent Harders up to the top corner they run through Autobahn. Now King, he's in that battle with Vogel, that's on screen at the moment. And King gets through on Vogel. So he's popped the cork. As now we see this battle for third. Whitmore had a look, couldn't do it. There's still no to tail. Gavin's got to think again. Two laps to go in this one. Here he is, Gavin the veteran. All over the back of Trent Harders in this battle for third position. He's running out of time. Will he have a look at... Video Pro, no, the answer is right there. There's Torty in second. Battle's going on there. There's Hart as the 93 arrow cart, followed by the 35 Praga. Last lap board on display for your race leader in Geordie Marcon. The battle for third spot is not over and done with just yet. Across the line they go. When will Gavin have a look? He runs it in tight at turn one. He won't do anything silly here with Moore. They try and line him up. I bet he's lining him up. The exit of RSQ. Let's see what a runner gets here. Hard is holding the inside line. He goes a little defensive, as he's wont to do. Whitmore fainted. Yes. Couldn't make the move, but your race leader, Mark on. He's just got a couple of corners to go. Big move coming up here for Whitmore. Has a look up the inside of the hairpin and does it. So he goes to three. A good move there from Gavin Whitmore. Your winner is Jordy Marcon. He's had the perfect day going so far. Jordy into second. Whitmore holds it down until the last lap and gets third spot over Harders. Then it was missing. Followed by King, then Vogel, then Cox, Shizlowski. Then it was Beaumont Walsh. Then it was Voigt, followed by Jacobson. Then Sattler, Jordan, Velikot. Then Highland, Miller, Vegnup. Rounding out your finishes in tag restricted medium. Got a couple to come back to the pit area as the chequered flag flies. Won't be too much longer and we're racing yet again.
okay. Three senior hits the circuit there. He is Declan Matthews, the man to catch in this one. A fresh look for this weekend for Declan, the number 55, looking resplendent out there for Team CXR, of course. They did represent Australia, the two brothers, over in Asia at the end of last year. Declan and Jace. Dominic Penn middle line up on the outside front row. Then it's Jake Chazowski and Brian Moyes, the next row of the grid. Matty Feather on row three with Hamilton Ray. Then Lucas Lesmes, Byron Phillips, Matt Price, Kai Brennan, Talia Kittle, Emily Chicardo, Ronan Finlay, and Thompson, Paige Yarwood. <clears throat> There's the 15 machine on camera. Chislowski. Bunch of CXRs out there. One, two, and three. Craig Matthews and no doubt be incredibly happy with that. As we made mention earlier on, they've certainly made some incredible strides over the last 12 to 18 months at team, not just here locally, but definitely on the national level. As we're getting set for a start now, it's Matthews and Penman on the front row. Who is going to get the run down into turn number one? <clears throat> K3 Senior coming at you. Heat number three here this afternoon, we're green. Away they go, and it's Matthews who jumps straight to the lead in the green and gold. Penman follows him through. Good start there. I think that was Feather that's got herself up into third spot. Yes, indeed it is. So a good start there for Maddie. She wasted no time to jump into position number three out of the RHQ corner. They go. Chuzlowski into fourth. And up to the right-hander at Autobahn. So Matthews wanting to open a gap, but Penman wants to go with him. Wonder what the team order situation might be like at Team CXR. Son of the boss versus Penman. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple have come together towards the back there, so they've gone around. That's unfortunate. <coughs> So Matthews leads from Penman and Feather. Moy, so the two girls, third and fourth. Shazowski, fifth. Lesmes has had a good start. He is up to sixth spot. He's a keyboardist, I noted, through the week as well, is Lucas Lesmes, as well as being an emerging go-kart driver for the JGM team. Byron Phillips and Hamilton Ray. Then it's Kai Brandon, followed by Thompson Price, Yarwood Finn, Kittle, then Chicago and Yaden. So all out there and in the mix, Penman keeping right there with your race leader. But the battle for thirds heating up here. Brian's got a run on Maddie up the inside. So we've got a new third place driver in Brian Moyes. Just off screen at the moment. Oh, Maddie gets sideways as they come to the start finish straight. Feathers under attack here from Chislowski as well. She lost all sorts of ground. She got a bit sideways going into the hairpin. Did Maddie after the move came. And that's left her into the clutches of Chislowski. And Les Mays, he's on a bit of a tear. We haven't seen much of Lucas throughout today. No doubt Jess, Andrew and Murray down there have been working overtime to get the set up dialed into Lucas's cart and a bit uncharacteristic of him but when do you want to come good heading into the final of course and that is still to come later on this is our final heat of the day you're watching Maddie Feather there sitting in fourth spot Jake Chazowski on her tail Ethan down there keeping a watching eye as well Ethan having moved from schooling this month into the family business electro industries as an apprentice off to do the Toyota 86 scholarship series. He hasn't seen his car for that series, but I have, and I like it. So they work their way through. Matthews leading the way by nearly four tenths of a second. Him and Penman lapping around the same time. They've got a huge gap then over Brian Moyes. Tell you what, Brian's been on fire today. She's looking really, really good, sitting there in third. And they go down the back stretch. Feathers under attack here again from Chislowski. This time Chislowski goes for the move. He gets it done. And that's opened up Lesmes to get involved as well. So Lucas, he wants to get inside the top five as they come to the line. Looks over his shoulder. Does Chislowski feather. She went deep into the Castledine kink. Incredibly deep, in fact. 
Briant's just done the quickest lap of the race in third spot. But have a look at Penman. He wants the W here. Over the team boss. Matthews leads away, but Penman, the youngster, he is chasing him down like you wouldn't believe. Then Lesmes is all over the back of Feather, further back, up through the Autobahn corner. That trio goes. Looks like Jizowski's been able to open a gap on them. So Brian's having a lonely run in third spot at the moment. We're working our way through the end of lap number five with three to go. Matthews, new fast slap, Penman, then it's Moyes, Chislowski crosses the line, then Feather, Lesmes, Thompson, Phillips, Brennan, Ray, then Prince, Price I should say, Kittle, then Finn, Yawich, Carter and Yaden. What about this guy? There's not much that Declan Matthews hasn't achieved in his career. Multiple state championships, Australian championships, you name it, he's done it, and... got a nice little gap in front of a driver who's building a pretty tidy resume of his own in Dominic Penman. Feather's still under attack further back there. She's got Lesmes right there with her. Lesmes hasn't had the ability to gain much ground. You'll see them coming onto the front straight away right now. There's the green and black Empire Kart Sport machine of Maddie Feather with Lesmes in the white helmet right on her hammer. Then there's a trio of carts further back. There is Lesmes and Feather. So Lesmes in a Jess Golding Motorsport machine, the second on screen, the white helmet. Maddie Feather, the green and black, one of the lady racers with us here this weekend. And she has really come back. She had a serious back injury last year, which kept her out of the saddle, jumped in the cart at our first race meeting of the year and went on to take victory. I think, it, yeah, it was a number of months, seven months, I think it was, that she was out of the saddle and just struck back with incredible an incredible performance. And Lucas Lesmes moved up to seniors this year. Meantime, seven laps in the books for Declan Matthews. He is on the last, so only... This circulation of 1,088 metres to go. There he is, the green and gold, shining in the sun in the number 55, Declan Matthews. Looking very good out there. Penman will be trying to get some tips, one thinks, between races to see what he might be able to do for the final. I think it's going to be a case of trying to beat him off the line, but... You'd be a brave person to try and beat Declan Matthews into turn number one. You would need a fairly broad set of elbows and shoulders to do that. As Declan Matthews now, the Sunshine Coaster for CXR, comes across the line and takes the heat race victory. Second place goes to Penman and Brian Moyes. Jake Chizowski, new fastest lap if you don't mind. Matty Feather, Thompson got Lesmes on the last lap in the 69. Then it's Byron Phillips, followed by Kai Brennan, Hamilton Ray, home in 10th spot. Then it's Matty Price, home in 11th placing in the 86. Talia Kittle crosses the line in 12th spot. We're just waiting for the remainder to come through now. There's Ronan Finn. Then it'll be Paige Jarwood, Georgie Yaden and Emily Chicato rounding out our KA3 senior race. We're going to take a quick breath and it won't be long and tank heavy. You'll be out on track for Heat 3.
The action continues here at Ipswich Trust. You're enjoying us whether on our YouTube channel or through speedcafe.com, bringing you all the action of our April Club event. Matt Payne bringing you the action here of Heat 3. Tag Heavy hitting the circuit. Brent Redding will start on pole in this one in the 58. He'll be tough from there. Our last Heat Race winner in Sam Houston, the number 6 out of 2. Next row, the good Brendan Nelson, the 70, and Will Marshall, the number 17. Round number 3 is Jared Ninet and Brock Plum. That's a cracker jack, row number three. Riley Lagarde, the 98, and Dan Brown. The Josh Tag, Jumpe Marita. Mr. Global Hub himself is Jumpe. Harrison Fox, Chris Williams, Andrew Gilliam, Rudy Farkas, Brady Barton, and Brad McNaught. <coughs> Big weekend of sport as we reference the motorsport. Of course, you've got AFL's Gather Round. Festival of footy, I think that a couple of teams from the scores that I've seen throughout the weekend more concerned about the festival side rather than the footy side. They neglected the old footy bit. And let's not speak about NRL at the moment, just having a look at the score of my horrendous team as they are playing. Tag Heavy getting set for heat number three for dispatch. Eight laps on the board. Who's going to get the run? Reading and Houston into turn one. Houston has to yield to Reading and slots into second place in the parallel. Oh, one's gone around in front of the field and a couple of them come together. But that was a lot less horrific than what it could have been. Although the driver that did half spin was actually assisted by the driver that drove into him because it almost shaped him back up, but he's got stuck in the mud on the exit of turn number two. Meantime, at the front, Brent Reading picks up where he has left off. One of the Empire drivers. And he's another one that's really benefited from jumping on board this Empire Kart Sport operation. Quite a few of them right across the spectrum. Terrifically presented outfit between the green and black, the pink and black. He leads away over Sam Houston. Brendan Nelson up to third, then Plum, Marshall into fifth, followed by Lagarde, nine at then Williamson, Farkas, Gilliam, McNaught. He had a good start. He's made up about six spots. Fox, Marita, Dag, and it's Dan Brown who's stuck off to side of the racetrack. And another one's gone off down in that part of the area. Is that nine at? That certainly looks like the nine at colours, and it looks like with my terrible eyesight as though that may be a number 18 on the side of that. As Reading charges down the back straight away. He's got a 10 cart length advantage over Sam Houston. There is Dan Brown just having a bit of a chat down there to going I don't know what happened. He's got a little bit sideways. Might have going out of here for a little while. It's not too hot. Reading leads by a second over Houston. Nelson then Plum. Marshall inside the top five aboard the 17. So he's been looking pretty good throughout the day. Has Will Marshall in the JGM colours. <clears throat> Farkas has made some ground here. He started down towards the back, of course. He started on pole to kick today off in heat number one, started down the back in the reverse grid heat number two, and he's making some hay out there. Up into P8 aboard the number two, the veteran in Rudy Farkas. But Redding's lead, Brent Redding, not Redding. Please, if we want to shorten it up a little bit is looking very good here today. It's looking quite solid. As solid as that I've seen him perform for quite some time, Brent Redding. Brendan Nelson in the Cully Cart. He sits third. <clears throat> Nelson. Yes, Nelson starting to close in on the back of Houston. There is Houston, the number six. Sam Houston drafting Parolin. Actually assists... A lot of clubs, this one included, in terms of their pitting area. He drafts out the pit layouts for events like state titles and, of course, the AKC. Nelson, a McDonald's manager now based on the Gold Coast, of course, raised in Toowoomba. Father Larry, a well-known speedway promoter back in the day, the likes of Brisbane Exhibition Grounds, Lismore Speedway and so on. 
as they come charging on through. Reading's lead, 1.8 seconds now over this battle that's going on. Nelson not close enough to have a look at Sam Houston at this stage. Behind them, Rock Plum and Will Marshall are chugging along quite nicely. So you can see those two groups of two. In fact, make that three groups of two with Riley Lagarde and Chris Williams going at it. They're all trying to close gaps. We saw some pretty exciting racing earlier on in the day from the tag categories. It's uh, certainly bottled back a little bit. Everyone's just trying to save and conserve as we go towards the longer race in the final a bit later on. As we come down across the start finishing line is your race leader, Redding. Nelson is about a tenth of a second quicker than Houston at this stage. Of course, he's caught him, but then he's got to pass him. That's the next question as to what Brendan Nelson can do. There's Plum in the 15. He's got the 17 of Marshall right behind him here as we are working lap number six. Marshall having a great run here in the number 17. No changes in the order at this stage. Your leader's still reading. He's the quickest driver on circuit out there by a considerable margin. Houston comes across the line now. But I tell you what, Plum and Marshall, even though they haven't changed positions, they've been racing with each other, but they've closed the gap now to Houston and Nelson. It was a 49-4 for Houston last time, a 49-5 dead. For Nelson, it was a 49-2 for Plum, a 49-1 for Marshall. So it's not over and done with yet for the minor placings. Marshall's pushing on on Plum. However, the pair of them are absolutely catching the two in front of them. There's Plum in the red race suit. You've got Marshall with the green helmet in the 17. They are about a tenth or more quicker than Nelson in that orange and yellow Cali cart in front of him. So... Would, if you're Marshall, yes, you're quick, but would it be in your best interest to get past Plum and race with him at the moment? You've only got a lap to go, so forget about that. Marshall's going for it. Side by side, through they go. Plum, he holds the inside line on the exit of that turn. They were certainly not going to be in position with a lap to go. Oh, straight through the grass, if you don't mind to try and close the gap even further down to Nelson. So you might as well just throw it all out there and try and get through as Marshall not close enough. Or is he? Oh, he gets into the back of Plum. You saw it there. Plum's lost two spots. So Marshall, he wasn't far enough up. He gave him a good old tap and Plum lost a couple of spots. Our officials will no doubt be having a look at that one. But Redding, meantime, he comes out of the final turn. Check it flag at the ready. And at Brent Redding, he gets another heat race victory. Second place then will go to Sam Houston, followed by Brendan Nelson, Will Marshall. Then it is Chris Williams, followed by Brock Plum. The number five machine, Brad McNaught, he gets through next. Then it's Gilliam, followed by Fox. Then it's Marita. Then Lagarde, Farkas, Dag and Ninet. Rounding out your finishes in a torrid tank heavy final. We've got a couple to clean up. We'll take a break and be back shortly here at Ipswich.
<coughs> the sun's starting to descend here at Ipswich. Trust that you're enjoying your day watching our April club event. It's been a huge one. About 250 entries here for the weekend, bringing you all the action live and unprecedented telecast for a cart club in Australia to bring a club day event through a live stream. We thank the team for calling all sports Brisbane, John Devine and co, for all the action that they've put into this one. Of course, bringing you a great deal of sports right around the southeast. I think from Gridiron through to Sheffield Shield and just about everything in between. And now Karting, they've added that to their repertoire. Jai Flynn will start on the pole in the 10. Tyson McGill, the outside front row. Isaac McNeil, the 71, and Jack Jensen, the next row. Annabel Kennedy, Henry Stratford, Jack Shruzik in the 39 out of 7. And Charlotte Page out of eight. Levi Desell, Basilio McCarley. Then it's Charlie Crane and Brock Helm. Similarly, and the rest were set for a start away. Eight laps on the board. Oh, gee, they're pretty willing into turn number one here. A big charge down through there. Oh, they all get through okay. Remarkably. All 40 of them. They're all underway. And it's Flynn who's got the advantage. So Flynn leads them down to Video Pro for the first time. <clears throat> Couple of people trying to get themselves wherever they feel like they belong. Isaac McNeil into second spot in the 71 cart. Onto the back stretch they go. McNeil in the slipstream of Flynn. Oh, he's got a good run going here. Does Isaac McNeil. Can't do anything with it, however. So they come back around to the start line to end their first lap of eight. <clears throat> Stratford into third spot McGill into fourth then it's Page up to fifth so good start there from Charlotte she is quick and then it's Annabelle Kennedy Shuzik in seventh spot Helm Simonelli and Desel running out your top ten the pace is frantic up front at the moment it's crazy out there. There's McNeil having a look at Jai Flynn. But Henry Stratford's closed in as well. So it's a race in three. Stratford, he's really picked up the pace over the last couple of months. He was very much a specialist in the 4SS style of racing. Now gone into the open two strokes is now McNeil. Up the inside of Flynn. Takes the lead. So combining his K3 activities with some F4 racing in that multiple open wheel category it's around with the speed series across australia had a good start in his category at the opening round of that championship a few months ago next one can't be too far away as they work their way through the electro industries corner it's mcneil who leads away but he hasn't pulled away from jai flynn Stratford still third. McGill there in fourth spot in the 36. There's a slight gap back to the two girls in Charlotte Page and Annabelle Kennedy. Shuzik, who's been the pace man in this category over recent months right across the country. He's in seventh spot. Down the back straight away. Kennedy up the inside of Page just off screen. And she gets it done. So Annabelle Kennedy moves past the F1 Academy Scholarship holder. Onto the front straight away they come. The race at the top end of town is absolutely superb between Isaac McNeil and Jai Flynn, the Empire Kart Sport driver versus the CXR driver. The two form teams here this weekend in this April club event. Out of RHQ they go. This is the biggest lead that McNeil's been able to open on Flynn. McGill in fourth in the 36 has closed right in on the back of Stratford now. Up through the top turn. Will McGill be close enough? I don't think so at this point in time. So McNeil always toward the front here on home soil. They put an extraordinary amount into their racing efforts. It's Father Travis and the family. New quickest lap for him. Gee, Basilio McCarley down in 13th spot. Just goes quickest of anybody. So battles raging all over the place at the halfway point. 
It's McNeil who's opened a gap on Flynn now from Stratford. McGill, Kennedy over Page, Shuzik in the 39 in seventh. Then Simonelli, then Bennett, Dosell, Rissman, Jensen. Then it's McCarley, Helm, Flack, DeWong into 16th. Cronin, Wright, Lane, Rule, Reed, Hoskin, Nolan. Yarwood and Smith is your top 25. Oh, there's a run going further back. Charlotte Page makes up a spot. So she's got one back on Kennedy, but Kennedy hasn't given up without a fight back. Up the front, though. The race is on, I think. Flynn's picked up the pace. Indeed, he has. About a tenth of a second quicker that time. Then your race leader and Isaac McNeil. Then the battle's on for third now as well. McGill, he is trying to unsettle the tail of Henry Stratford to force an error to get himself into third position as they come through the RHQ corner. There's first and second, third and fourth. The gap back then to that battle between Charlotte Page and Annabelle Kennedy with Jack Shusick trying to close in onto their tail as well. <clears throat> McNeil's responded to the battle from Flynn here. So there's Stratford, Tyson McGill, the 36, the white helmet with the blue colouring on the go-kart. Racing down for third spot. What about that group of four? Down to turn number one. Oh, big move there. McGill goes up to third. We just caught it at the bottom of screen. So Tyson McGill goes bang and goes up to third spot in the 36. So he just went for it. Oh, there's a bit of feeling going on further back in the pack. There was one driver that's been spat out and a few hand signals are flying around between he and another driver. Anyway, up the front. Oh, big move for the race lead. So Flynn has fought back for the lead just off camera. There's McGill. There's your new race leader coming to the line. Oh, McNeil got him back again. So Flynn got through. McNeil got back. So two changes in two corners. We're on the final lap now. So it's still anybody's game. Will Flynn have a look here? Empire VS versus CXR. Down to Video Pro. There's one manoeuvre expired. So what can Flynn get out of Autobahn corner or is McNeil good enough under brakes? Down the back straight away, McNeil down over the steering wheel. At the same time, he takes a peek over the shoulders. I think he's got enough in reserve here as a chequered flag is about to be waved and it is going to be Isaac McNeil pushed all the way by Jai Flynn in third spot. Was McGill over Stratford. Annabelle Kennedy was the fastest lap of the race. Bennett gets through on Charlotte Page. Then it's Rissman followed by Simonelli in ninth spot. What happened to Shuzik? There was Giselle, followed by McCarley, then Flack, then Helm, Duong, Cronin, Jensen, Lane, Rule, Wright, and Ryan Reed. Then it's Hoskin. Shuzik dropped back to 22nd position. Then Luke Nolan. Then Smith, Powers, Knight, Yarwood, Cedo, Saragi, Clark, Dixon, Sourd, Downs, McLaughlin, and Leo rounding out your finishes. Wow, that set us up for a very good final later on. That was KA3. Tag light coming up soon. We're going to take a breather. So on the racetrack now is Tag Light, their third heat. We're whipping through our heat races. We've just got two to go before we get to the all-important finals. 
Jack Wells will line up on the pole in the 26. Jack Preston. So Jackathon up the front. He'll be on the outside front row. Mika Lamazuria, the Burial Art 29 out of three. Brian Ullman, the Sonoma 8 out of four. Trent Newton in the 36 from five with Josh Frew in the 22 on the third row. Row four to 73 of Geordie Slater, Bailey Sagadak out of eight. Row number five is Bryce Lane, the 45, Jack Stimson, the 71. Troy Losco will start from 11th in 12, and Jack Kabelka, the 54, from 12th spot. Row number seven is the 50 of Jacques Goodman and William Gallagher in the 33. Then it's Fraser Blight in the 24, Rowan McConnell, the 7, Lachlan Cowie, Geordie Costa, and Braden Vincent. This should be a good one. It's quick drivers throughout the course of the day to come from deeper in the field. Walls and Preston off the front row. Lemazuria off row number two. Keep your eye on him. Green. Down into turn one, they charge. What does that look like? He looks pretty good, pretty even as they come out of there. And Wells it is who gets the best of the start. Preston slots into second in the Fernando Alonso cart. Out of Electro. And Ullman it is in third in the green machine. Ullman went low, he went high. And Lemazuri has lost a couple there as well. Down the back stretch they go. Jack Wells wasting little time to get into a rhythm and trying to establish a lead over the field. Jack Preston wants to go with him. <clears throat> Joshua Frew up to four spot in front of Lemazuri up. The end of the first lap. So Frew has got his eyes on this group of three that you're watching at the moment. Wells, Preston and Ullman. They've got a slight gap back then to Josh Frew. Lemazuri are trying to make a spot back and goes to P4. He goes up the inside of Frew and takes over that fourth spot. So can the Gold Coast of Lemazuri, can he close the gap then to your race leaders? Preston not close enough to have a look at Wells at the moment. Through the hairpin they go. Ullman just nipping at the tail of Jack Preston here. To Lemazuria in that Patrizzi course back cart. He gets a run. And with the passing manoeuvre sets the quickest lap of the race on lap two. <clears throat> We've now got a battle in four that have pulled away from Frew. has got Newton, Sagadak and Slater for company in the battle for fifth. Then they've got a small gap. Over Stimson with Losco getting himself inside the top 10 in front of Kabelka from northern New South Wales. Through the video pro corner they go. The top four absolutely nose to tail at the moment. Then fifth through eighth nose to tail as well. So Ullman's got a run here going down the back straight away. Preston, he looked pretty good there. Ullman, deep under brakes. They bottle up behind Jack Wells now. And Lamazuria up the inside into third. Decided to go for the move, but it's opened up a gap then that they've now got to try and close to Preston. Was that a too early move there for Mikel Missouri up? Time will tell. As Losco makes up another spot, he's into ninth, and Lane gets through on Kabelka for 11th. So let's see what Lemazuria can do. He made the statement move by getting past Ryan Ullman. It's got to be up to him now to close the gap to our top two as Preston goes through into the race lead. Or does he? Because Wells fights straight back. He's on the outside, Wells. Preston up the inside. And Preston's not one that's shy when it comes to getting the elbows out. He goes down the extreme inside line there. Wells goes high to try and switch back. And Ullman gets back up the inside of Lemazuria. This is a tremendous race that you're watching here live on speedcafe.com out of Ipswich across the start finish line goes Preston then it's Wells in third position is Ullman and Lemazuria but don't worry about me telling you the order you just watch a race and enjoy it Preston leading the way now it's a battle in four it's any one of this four to win at the moment they come down Preston trying to pull away Wells doesn't want to let him get away Lemazuria he tried to have a go there but what actually happened is that of him having a go at Ullman Ullman managed to get up the inside of Wells and into second but that's given the gap and open to Jack Preston, who's opened a huge gap now down the back straight away. So they're trying to win the battle, but not the war at the moment. 
Wells into the back of Ullman there as they come to the start finish line. That's the end of lap number five. So Lemazuri is still there in fourth spot. He's made no ground. He's stuck right there. Back in fifth is Newton in front of Sagadak. They've dropped through back to seven. Then a Slater, Losco and Stimson rounding out your top ten at the moment. Preston's lead was 1.2 seconds. Everyone getting involved in their own personal battles has only helped out Preston as Lemazuria goes up to P3. There's Ullman in second spot. You can see Lemazuria in the blue helmet with the red and white Birrell Art machine behind him. They work their way down the back straightaway. We're on lap number six here. Gee, it's been frantic out there. There's only a couple of laps to go as Preston works his way back to the start, finish straight to knock off another lap. <clears throat> then Ullman, quickest lap of the race in second. With a 48.025, he's eight tenths of a second behind Jack Preston. He was three tenths of a second quicker than Preston at time. Has he got enough? It's going to be a big couple of laps here if he is to try and catch that gap. It's a huge gap at the moment. Lemazuria pushing on, just nip, nip, nipping away in third spot behind Ullman there. Through the left hander they go now. But Preston looking comfortable in front. It's a position that he has been so very comfortable in over the years. Jack Preston, he's won some big races right around Australia. He's represented Australia at Rotax World Championship level. And look out, here comes Lemazuria. He's on the back of Ryan Ullman as they come to the line to get the last lap forward. Down to turn number one. He's riding the tail of your second place driver. He's Mika Lemazuria through the flip-flop. Forget about Preston, he's gone. He's point triple nine in front of the line the last time. The big battle is this one that you're watching. Who's going to get second spot? Can Ullman hold on to it? Or will Lemazuria pull a rabbit out of the hat in the last few corners? Lemazuria, he gets a good run here. Up that short shoot. Oh, he goes for a big move, Ullman. He actually gives him racing room. So good move there from Ullman. But what about the impetus that Wells has got? Lemazuria, he goes inside. Around the outside goes Ullman. And Lemazuria holds onto it. Wells goes around the outside. Preston gets a checkered flag. But who's going to get second? What a final lap there. Lemazuria, he hung tough. He gets home in second spot. Wells ultimately gets home in third. Then it was Allman, followed by Newton. Then Sagadak. Troy, Jody Slater home in seventh. Then Losco eighth. Through Lane, Gallagher, Stimson, then Blyton. Cowie, Kabelka, then it was Goodman, followed by McConnell, Vincent and Costa. All of our drivers finishing that one. So that was a good, good race there. We're going to take a very, very short break and Tag Restricted Light will be hitting the circuit before you know it. So they're out on circuit for our final heat race of Tag Restricted Light. Nathaniel Harrison here at Ipswich. What a day it's been. Nathaniel Harrison will start on the pole. Robert Mortensen, the outside front row in the 17. Jack Munro, isn't he on the fire at the moment in the 18? He'll start out of three. Derek Jones, he's had an impressive run aboard the number two. Cody Scott, he is out there as well in the number three machine. Billy James Whitaker, he's been in the middle of just about everything here today. He will start out of position number six. Out of sevens, Max Aquasana, Jack Jaslowski out of eight, Charlie Fern longer out of nine, and Kaylin Mullins out of position number ten. Row six is Emily Cowell, Mark Lees, Riley Vandenberg, Jack Dussel, and Connor O'Reilly and a huge field of tag restricted light for the tag restricted 
feature event. Ten laps on the board and Tag Restricted Light is underway as Harrison and Mortensen charge down to turn number one. You can see the sun starting to descend. Oh, we've had three or four come together there and they're all able to get back underway, which is good news for them. Harrison, he is leading the way. No trouble for him at the moment. Mortensen in second in that multicoloured machine. Look at them just fanning out through this prime passing position at Video Pro Corner. <clears throat> Still got a couple that have actually come to grief down at turn number one. They're just trying to get them out of the road before our field comes charging on down. There will be yellow lights, so that eliminates turn number one as a passing opportunity. Under the front stretch comes Nathaniel Harrison. Got a comfortable lead now over Mortensen. And the next one through is Derek Jones, who gets himself to third in front of Munro. Munro chipping away. A change in colours this weekend for Jack Munro. New sponsors on board for his campaign. Always good to see as Jones and Munro working together to try and close that gap to Robbie Mortensen in second position as Harrison starts to pull away up the front. Cody Scott in fifth place, Chislowski, then it's Whitaker, followed by Mullins, Aquasana, and Mark Lees rounds out your 10 as Munro has got a run for third position. You can see in the background there, he goes up to position number three. Front straightaway time. So Munro picking up the mantle to try and close the gap to Robert Mortensen. Chislowski does the quickest lap of the race down in fifth position as he makes up a spot on Cody Scott as well. But he is now chasing down Derek Jones in the number two is Jake Chislowski. Harrison's lead at the end of lap two was 0.713 over Mortensen. <coughs> Munro, he's got the pace here in second, in third position, I should say. He's caught up to the back of Mortensen in this lap, and I think he'll be in position to line him up as we start lap number three. There they are, coming across the line. No surprise that Munro's the quickest on circuit. Through turn number one, the right hander they go. Then Jones has been lined up by Chislowski a bit further back. There's Mortensen at number 17. You wouldn't miss it on a dark night. There's plenty of colour going on in that machine there. Mortensen feeling a bit of pressure but makes a mistake. That opens in up to Munro. Munro says, thanks very much. I'm going through. So Munro goes to second. Mortensen tries to fight back here. He just ran a little wide on that short shoot. And that was all that Jack Munro needed to go into second position. The number 18 machine now in P2. And now he can keep an eye on Harrison will have a look at what the gap is when they come to the line this time at the end of lap number four. And it is just over a second between Harrison and Munro. Harrison and 49.819 and 8.79 for Munro. And that included a passing manoeuvre. So that just shows you that Munro has got some pace on board. So let's see what he might be able to do now that he's got no other carts in front of him aside from your race leader. The 50 pulls in and out of commission. Chislowski having cleared Jones on that last lap as well. He's got his eyes on Mortensen for third position. The pace of the race has settled down as we come to the halfway point at the completion of this lap. You saw the leader go through. There's the second place man in Munro. More the 17 of Mortensen under attack from Chislowski now as they come to the line. Jones sitting there behind them, just keeping an eye and just waiting on a mistake should that eventuate. But Mortensen, that's a big battle. Is the race for third. Seven pulls in, had a mechanical defect flag as they come down. The Dap cart of Chislowski, the number 16, they're in fourth spot. The maroon and yellow machine chasing down the 17 of Mortensen. We're past the halfway point. See the late afternoon sun casting shadows through the trees here. We're just down the road from the Queensland Raceway circuit. 
seen so many wonderful battles over the years. Right next door to the Willow Bank Raceway as Chisowski, I feel, is going to be in position to have a go at Mortensen on this particular lap. He hasn't done already, he has more than done that. He's gone to third position. So Chisowski moves up to P3. Mortensen was second there for a while, he's dropped back to fourth. Won't be too much longer, I don't think, then Jones will want to buy into that argument. There's Chislowski. So there's your race leader now going through Video Pro in Harrison. Munro's the quickest on circuit in second. Then in third place now is Chislowski with Mortensen in the 17 right behind him. Through the right-hander at the top part of the race circuit they go. Then back down, then down the back straight away, I should say. <coughs> so we'll see what the gap between first and second is this time. We've got three laps remaining now. Munro takes a couple of tenths out of Harrison, gets it down to seven tenths of a second. Katie Scott down in sixth spot, doing a good job. Max Aquasana in seven. Williams in the eighth spot, then Billy James Whitaker drops, Whitaker drops to nine. Tenth is Mullins now. So Munro needs a big couple of laps if he's going to have a go at your race leader. There's your third place man, Chislowski. He's pulled clear of Mortensen since getting into that third position. <laughs> to the start line they come. Munro with two laps to go has taken more than two tenths out of Harrison and the gap is down to 0.45. So it is game on at the front, as you can see. You're watching your race leader, in Nathaniel Harrison in the 70. Jack Munro is charging at a rate of knots with a lap and a half to go that if he is closer by the end of this lap that he may be in position to stage a last lap passing manoeuvre. He was quick enough that he should have it down to two tenths of a second if all things remain equal at the end of this lap. He has definitely closed a whole heap of ground on Nathaniel Harrison. It was 0.456, they get the last lap board. Only one remaining. Down to 0 0.308, so not quite enough here. It's got to be a big one from Munro to get into racing terms with your race leader. He is throwing everything at the number 18. Those tyres are screaming. The Leconte tyres are absolutely screaming out there. That engine has been pushed to its absolute limit. He's not close enough at Video Pro. He's almost got to rely on a mistake from Harrison here or go incredibly deep under brakes over the next two corners. He's right there with Harrison. Can he get a run here? They go down the back straight away. Harrison goes defensive. Munro, who go to the outside, he's still trying to force that mistake. Around they come. They've got a couple of corners left remaining here. Harrison holding on to it. Munro still got a bit in him. They come to the line. It's going to be Harrison. Oh, he just gets there. 56 one thousandths of a second was the gap from Harrison to Munro. What a drive by Munro. He put everything into that, but came up just a little bit short. But the good news is, with the final coming up, they've definitely got the setup that he knows he's got pace to roll with the front runners. Chisowski, a good drive to get home in third spot. Then it was Mortensen, Jones, Scott, Williams, Mullins, Whitaker, then Zimmerman, Dussel, Lees, Briggs, Calwell, Vanderbroek, Lenahan, Duncan, Furlonger, then Zimmerman, Aquasena, O'Reilly and Beaumont Walsh are your finishers. We'll take a quick break and be back with our final heat race of the day, that being Tag Restricted Masters.
the final heat race of the day here, our April race meeting at Ipswich. We'll get into finals directly after this. Gavin Sow will line up in this tag restricted Masters heat number three on the pole. He's been the man to beat. Alan Mays has raced with him all day long in the six. Scotty Gray and Michael Robinson on row number two. Anthony Murphy and Ben Spalding the 35, row three. The 31 of Jeff Bolton and Mark Brogan the 79. There's Mark Darcy the 53. Adrian Ferguson the 25 lining up out of 10th spot. Row number six is Adrian, Aaron Rab Jones and Carl Davison. Then it's Adrian Godfrey and Scotty Campbell. We are getting set for a start. A massive field. Nearly 30 of them here. Four tag restricted masters at the tag restricted titles. Can anyone stop Gavin? Soward. And certainly going into turn number one. Soward at the best of the start. Oh, I think him and Mays might have even touched each other going into that first turn. But it's Soward who gets the best of the start. Yet again, Mays goes with him. Everyone just trying to get themselves into their racing position as they go through the early stages of this race. Mays right there with him and it is the 74 of Grey who is in third position now. Up to Video Pro Corner for the first time. <clears throat> Onto the back stretch, we'll see what our teams have been able to dial in between heats number two and three here. Of course, they're setting it up for the longer final. That'll be over 12 laps a bit later on. Certainly, Mays is right there with your race leader at the moment. Scott Gray is going with them in third. He's not letting them out of his sights whatsoever. And they're right there with Soward. Look at this. It's a battle in three at the moment. They've got a small gap. Over Michael Robinson in the 23, then Spalding, Darcy, Murphy. Rab Jones up to eight. It's a good start after not finishing the last one. Bolton, Robinson running out your top ten. Ten laps on the board for this one to round off our heat racing this afternoon. The action's been rolling out thick and fast throughout the latter stage of today. Racing's been pretty good, all told. Right there at the course of this Saturday race meeting. Down the front straight away they go. So I would quickest lap up the front. Gray pressuring the back of Mays for second now. Michael Robinson there in fourth. This is a good battle. It's the closest that they've been, I think, to Soward for much of the day, certainly hanging with him throughout the course of the race. <clears throat> Pound Robinson in fourth. There's a fifth place battle going on between Spalding, Darcy and Rab Jones is up to seventh. But the top three are in close proximity with each other as they charge down the back straight away. Lap number three, Sowards lead, 0.319. He's a few 100s quicker than Mays, our top four, all setting their personal bests that time. <coughs> Man on the move is Scott Gray, in fact, in third spot. He's right there with Alan Mays. So maybe he's the one that might force the issue and try and throw a challenge out to Soward here. Soward is the fastest driver on circuit. The tennis ball helmet that's leading the way down the back stretch in the all-black number 28 machine. He's been the man to chase throughout this tag-restricted title today. In this Masters category. Once again, Sauer at a new fastest lap of the race, a 51.654. They played a 51.711 for Mays, and tellingly, a 51.677 for your driver in third, Scott Gray. So Gray is lapping almost at the pace of your race leader. Just a few hundreds between them. He will actually be setting up Alan Mays for a move fairly shortly. You get the feeling. Michael Robinson in fourth is pulled clear 
of the remainder of the field. Then your man in fifth spot, Mark Darcy, has a significant advantage over Chris Board, who's got Ben Spalding and Aaron Rab Jones behind him. Rab Jones dropping back to eighth spot. Then it's Murphy and Bolton rounding out your top ten as they run at the moment. One pushing his machine out of the way. It has screamed enough for this third heat race. The top ten out there setting fastest laps personally that time by Soward going quicker than anyone yet again that purple light has been around his name every single lap that he's gone by he's just gone faster and faster and faster a 51 527 that time to open the gap to half a second over Alan Mays There's your leader crossing the line. That's his sixth lap in the books. Only four laps left to go in this one for Gavin Sowart. And Alan May says, I'm not done with yet, brother. He just does a 51.465. Only one one thousandth of a second quicker than Gavin Sowart. But what it did, it rested the quickest lap away from Sowart. That doesn't really mean anything aside from a psychological win for Alan Mays in that one. <clears throat> and certainly one one thousandth of a second means absolutely nothing in terms of what gap he's been able to close in. This will be the telling one as they come back around to complete lap number seven. They've got three to go. A multitude of different engines available for tag racing. These ones with a restrictor to reduce the amount of power available to the drivers. An entry level to tag racing is tag restricted. Certainly by no means is it any less exciting as you can see right here because Mays went over a tenth of a second quicker than Sauer that time. So he's closed the gap down to three tenths of a second. It's not over and done with yet, folks. Two and a quarter laps to go. And look at the pace that Mays has got in the six. Through the right hander they go and onto the back straight away. Gray is the man also who is keeping an eye on what's going on with the two in front of him because he's closing in. He's nipping at their heels should something happen. Soward's having to respond here. We'll see what the times are. It looks like Soward has indeed responded and he's backing it back out to over four tenths of a second to 0.425 as Gray's done his personal best which was two tenths of a second quicker than the two drivers in front of him. So it's not over and done with yet. We are working lap number nine. There's still two to go. Look at Mays go here. The man in second position. He is pushing on to try and get onto racing terms. And the man in black in Gavin Sauer as he goes through the left-hander towards the Autobahn corner. So Mays has got to get a good run here. Can he get it? on down the back straight away. Or can Soward stretch the legs? It would appear as though Soward's stretching the legs and trying to open the gap. Gray hasn't done much about shutting it down to Mays through there. Onto the start finish straight they come. One more lap to go now. And the gap remains pretty much equal distance at a 0.45, but a 51.296 for Soward. Gets another quickest lap of the race for the driver in the lead. He's got this one well and truly in his safekeeping. It's now become a question over what Gray can do about Mays. Will Gray have a go here as they go to the video pro corner? Through the left hander they run now. Gray's got to get a good charge up towards the right hander now. Not quite there. Now what's he got down the back stretch? We're on the last lap. Soward's not bothered by anything going on behind him because he's got this one in his right hand as they come out of the final turn. And it is going to be Gavin Soward who gets the race victory in the number 28 over Alan Mays and Scott Gray. He pushes him all the way. I think we're in for a good final a bit later on. Then it's Michael Robinson home in fourth spot. Chris Board getting up to P5 in front of Rap Jones and Darcy Murphy. Then Spalding Bolton. Then it is Mark Robinson, Evan Broughton. No, in fact, Adrian Godfrey. Then Mark Brogan, Evan Broughton drop back to 14th. Then Davison followed by Campbell. 
Then it's Ferguson. John's up to 18th. Then it's Cisco. Been waiting on Linus Brown, Fletcher, Garrity and Meyer to come to the line. That is our heat racing done and dusted here at Ipswich. Go and catch your breath, go grab a drink and let's get ready to go finals racing. And it's finals time here at Ipswich for our April race meeting, the tag restricted titles. But before we get down to those feature categories, we have to resolve the Cadet 9 and 4SS Cadet final. And it'll be Lucas Losco, the young man out of Bundaberg, driving for the Velocity Race Division out of Sydney on the pole in the number 92. Ricardo Johnson, the 50 on the outside front row. Second row, they're going to be Oliver Flack and Oscar Kozak. What has Oscar got in his back pocket here in the 66? The Victorian, Hudson Kelly. He will start from position number five. Then out of six, it's a 78 of Martin Shea. Luke Robinson will start from seventh position in the 57 with Jacob Brooke Lanahan out of position eight in the 72. Row number five is the three of Fred Waddy and Oscar Ray in the two. Scarlett Mitrovic in the 25 will line up in 11 spot with Jet Mathers in the 73 alongside. The next rider could be Jonathan of the Mathers variety in the 33. And Hugo Jones and it's Bailey Majorak and Hocking your three, four assessors and oh, we can get a start. So just to build a little bit more tension, we've got 10 on the board. <clears throat> Great to see such a good field of Cadet Nines here this weekend. Can anybody do anything? about the man in that all black plastics out there. Just a little bit stealthy. He's actually added the velocity stickers to it in between races. <clears throat> Joshua Carr, of course, the former Australian champion. He's up here twisting the spinners. Velocity based out of Eastern Creek in Western Sydney. <clears throat> Thank you. 
And they've all settled down, ready for a start. Ten on the board. Losco Johnson. Flacken Kozak away. And a brilliant start there from the 92 as they go down into turn number one. Oh, big move for second spot. <clears throat> that came from deep. Think could have been Kozak. We'll pick that up for you as they work their way through the left hander and up towards Electro Industries for the first time. <clears throat> Out of video pro turn they come. And it's all Lucas Losco at the moment. The young man will absolutely take a great deal from this if he can hold on to it. It'll be one of, if not the most dominant performance that he has put in throughout his career. I don't want to put the mockers on him though. Been known to do that a little bit as they come back to the start finishing straight. It's Losco. As he crosses the line, second spot is the 50 of Johnson. Then it is the 66 of Kozak, followed by Shea, then Flack, Book Lanahan, Ray, then Kelly, Robinson, and Mathers home in 10th spot as they end the first lap of their 10. Leading the 4SS category is Frankie Majorak, who has been strong all day long, in fact, as Majorak. <clears throat> Starting to get a bit spread out there. Losco already asserting his authority over Johnson. Kozak into third. He's pulled away for Shea. Then Flax got Brooke Lanahan for company in the battle for fifth spot. It's a bit spread out to what we're used to from a Cadet 9 race as they come to the line. Losco, Johnson, Kozak. Then it's a 72 of Brooke Lenahan. Kelly, I think it is, has lost a heap of places out there. Kelly and Flack, so there's been a problem between Kelly and Flack on circuit. So they have dropped right down the order. Just want to pick up where that might have taken place. Certainly Flack, Kelly's gone across the line in 10th placing. <clears throat> the main battle on circuit at the moment is the battle for fourth position. Between the 72 of Brooke Lanahan and Oscar Ray in the two. They go up towards the top corner at Autobahn, nose to tail. There's your race leader in Losco. Ray having a look at Brooke Lanahan at the hairpin and moves up a spot. There's that battle coming across the line. The number two machine has moved into fourth position. Look at them glued to each other as they go through turn one and two. Then right behind them for good measure, Martin Shea and Luke Robinson are glued together. There's the number two cart class operation of Oscar Ray. Reference before, Dave Serra has got the United Nations going on down there in Victoria over the next couple of weeks. The man behind Cart Class. Had a good chat with him the other day about how things are tracking there. Losco leading by 2.4 seconds over Johnson. It is well and truly clear now as the two of Ray. Here's the green and white machine there on your screen with a black helmet. He's got himself in front of Brooke Lenahan and has started to pull away. He was 1.1 seconds behind Kozak the last time by. We'll have a look and see what that looks like at the moment. Forget about what it looks like. He's right on his tail. So Kozak had an incredibly slow lap of 57.3. Oscar Ray took a second out of him. So there's a battle on here for the final podium spot. Look at the number two of Ray. What can he do here? He is all over the back of the 66 like a cheap suit at the moment. There goes Losco. There goes Johnson. Now here's the battle for third. And don't forget Jacob Brook Lanahan back there in fifth. He'll be there to pick up the crumbs should anything happen between those two as they go up to the top turn. The number two machine, he goes up the inside. Oscar Ray, he makes it into P3. Down the back stretch. Has Kozak got anything to respond? He did have a bad lap the last time through. Up the inside and he allows him through. The number two goes, oh, what a beautiful move there from Oscar Ray. He held tough and went around the outside and got himself back into that third spot. He wants to walk away with the trophy tonight. There's Oscar Ray in the two. 
out of the Sunshine Coast. Got no doubt that Dave Sarah and the boys will be watching on down there in Melbourne cheering him on. Then Brooke Lenahan's all over the back of Kozak now as well. This is a terrific race for third place. It's a battle in three. We're working lap number six, so we're past the halfway point. Your leader still Lucas Losco out of Bundaberg over Ricardo Johnson. But third spot, it is anybody's. As you can see, the three of them heading up to the Autobahn corner. And don't count out Luke Robinson from this as well. He is not too far behind. So... Being Cadet 9 racing, anything is likely to happen in this last four laps as they come to the line. In, in 4SS, it's Frankie Majorak who's got a commanding lead over Chicago Bailey and Oakland Hocking. <coughs> Oscar Ray trying to pull away here. Certainly quicker than Kozak, then in Brooke Lanahan. Brooke Lenahan closing up onto the back of Kozak. Now through the flip flop. Kozak trying to pick up the pace. He's the driver, second on screen in the white helmet. He's definitely picked up the pace. He had a bad lap, but now he's starting to pick it up here. He's all over the back of the number two of Oscar Ray. But the man who's making ground is Robinson. We're going to have a battle in four for the final podium spot here as the laps are winding down in this one. Ray holding on to third. Kozak looked like he got a decent run onto the back stretch. He doesn't have the outright terminal speed at the moment that the man in front of him's got. He's got Brooke Lenahan on his tail and now Robinson. He buys into the argument. As Johnson's had a good back end to this one, a good final third sector. The 57 has a look there. Robinson on Brooke Lenahan. The door was shut. What a cracking battle for third spot it is. We're on lap number eight. Lucas Losco still leads by over five seconds on Johnson. There's a further five seconds back to this battle that you are watching. What a way to kick off our finals. Losco was right of screen. Then Johnson, he was top of screen. It's not over and done with yet. Through the top part of the racetrack they go. Watch out for the 57 of Robinson. He's been the man on the move. He's all over the back of Kozak here. Can't get into position to affect a pass. In fact, it was Brooke Lanahan. He got back in on Robinson. Ray's got a gap now for third. Two laps to go in this one. We've got eight in the books here. A cracking battle. Remember, these kids are all between the ages of seven and nine. Unbelievable racecraft, over 90 kilometres an hour. Kozak in the 66, he is hanging tough in fourth spot. Brooke Lenahan in fifth, Robinson still back there in the next spot. He goes for a move. Robinson goes for a move on. Kozak, he went for the big move on Ray as Robinson went for the move on Brooke Lenahan. Oh, up the inside. The two of Ray gets pushed wide. And Kozak goes to third. Now Ray under attack at the hairpin. Oh, they come together. So Ray gets shuffled back right to the tail of this group. So it's a 66 of Kozak. He's now comfortably into third position as a 57 goes up a spot of Robinson on a 72. What an incredible turn of events that was. It's been Kozak who's got himself into the third spot. As Lucas Losco, he goes through the top turn. Everything's settled down. Losco, he's on the way home in a 92. He's onto the back straight away with just a handful of corners left remaining. Wow, what a finish to this race it is. Losco coming out of the final turn now. Checkered flag at the ready. What a drive it is for the number 92 of Lucas Losco. And he puts his hand in the air. He has got to be happy with that. The most dominant race meeting that I have seen him put together, Lucas Losco. Ricardo Johnson, he gets home in second spot. It's been a lonely race for him, but less than lonely it has been for Oscar Kozak. He has had a solid weekend and he earns himself a podium position in the 66. Then it was Luke Robinson, Jacob Brooke Lenahan, Oscar Ray wondering what might have been. Jonathan Mathers, what a drive. He gets himself up to seventh place in the 33 in front 
of the Victorian Hudson Kelly. Martin Shays home in ninth spot. Then Jet Mathers, Fred Waddy, and then just waiting on now for Frankie Majerek, our winner in the 4SS Cadet category, crossing the line, and he gets the win there in a KF cart. Then a Scarlett Mitrovic, followed by Hugo Jones, and Chicago Bailey will take second in 4SS over Oakland Hawking, but what a race that was, a four-cart race for third position. We're going to catch our breath. You're watching the finals here at Ipswich. Uh, coming up very, very shortly will be final number two, that being for KA3 Junior Heavy. So KA3 Junior Heavy on circuit for their 10 lap final. Charlotte Page is trying to conquer Europe last weekend. Can she conquer Ipswich here this afternoon? She was on pole in the 22. She's got a tough front row partner in Tyson McGill, the 36. Cooper Friend, he's been quick in the 8 with Buster Bailey alongside in the 6. Zach Hill to the 25. Tyler Tillman's Fish, Carmichael, Aquacenter, Fishley, Leo Lippiot, Southgate, Fushoid, Chapman, McMinnan, Cowan and Green. Down to turn one they go, and it's Charlotte who gets the best of it in the Empire Kart Sport 22. Good move coming there to move into second spot as they all get themselves into their shuffled position. It was actually McGill who got himself back into second place, got back to third or fourth, and gets it back into it. And Page leading the way here. I feel like lights flashing, I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Okay, we've got the Chevron coming out, so the starters want to get a full reset of the grid. So you'll see a, if you're at the track, you'll see a green and yellow Chevron flag. So all green with a big yellow V on it. That means all of our drivers must get into their original starting positions. So they weren't happy with how the alignment was when it came to the line. It's a problem there for Marcus Leo and Maxwell Southgate, who decided to have a crash halfway through that lap. So they're out of commission. Actually, one of them is actually able to restart. It's a matter of trudging his way out of the mud to get back on the circuit. It'll bring some of that back on to the track on the racing line, which is always appreciated by his fellow competitors, that being the seven of Max Southgate. So we've done all that. What we are going to do is do that all again. And uh, Maxi Southgate, well, he will probably join up at the back of all of this. He certainly won't be able to retake his position. So he'll come in at the back end of this one. We've got 10 on the board, getting set for a start this time. And away again, off we go. Down to turn number one, and Charlotte is, he gets it all, McGill fights it hard up the inside, and it is Charlotte who gets hung out to dry, she drops to third, they're all away. Bit going on in the middle of the pack there. Cooper Friend's got a good start, he's got himself up into second position as they work their way out of RHQ on lap number one. Oh, one gets out into the dirt, he'll get a face full of mud out there. That was Buster Bailey. Oh, that's a real shame for Buster. Started right up the front. 
and just drops all the way towards the back as Paige gets herself into second position in front of Friend. Down the back straight away they go. Friend pushing on all up the inside. Gets second back. Then around the outside. I think that might be Hilda as they come around to the start. Finish straight to end this lap. Get another one in the books. Lap number three. In fact, it was the 97 of Tyler Tillmouth. He's made some ground. Charlotte's got the shoulders up here this afternoon. She pushes away into second spot. And the big loser out of that was Friend, who's lost about four spots. Tillmouth, he's gone through as well. And then Hilda and Fish with Carmichael on under the pump also. Look at this battle there. Your race leader, though, he's not involved in any of this. Tyson McGill, he's like, nah, don't want to talk about that. I'm just going racing. And he has just opened up a massive lead up the front up through the top part of the race circuit. They're still battling it out for the miners here. Charlotte Page, she wants to pull away. She's got a slight gap there. Toward the back, they're going three wide into the hairpin. That is never a good career move. Worked out all right, in fact. As McGill comes to the line. Page starting to pull away here on the number 91, the Tyler Greenbury racing machine of Cooper Fish. So it's McGill, Page, Fish, Hilda the fourth, then Tilmouth, then Friend, Carmichael, Lippiet, Fishley, Aquasana, Vushoy, then Bailey, Cowan, McKinn, Chapman and Southgate. That's your runners as they sit at the moment after a frenetic opening. Everything's just started to settle down a little bit as we're working lap number five. So we'll be at the halfway point when they come to the line. But Tyson McGill, no surprise to see that he is the quickest driver out there. A 51.904 the last time by. That is the only driver to be in that 51 second bracket. To the line they come. Fish in third spot. Pushing hard here to get on racing terms with Charlotte Page in second. So two of the bigger teams, Empire Car Sport, taking on Tyler Greenby Racing now. <clears throat> I'll tell you what, on screen there, Fish has got a good run going here. So he's going to set Charlotte up on this lap. And he just set the quickest lap of anybody to Cooper Fish. So they've been working hard all day to try and progress him up the grid towards this final that we are watching right now. Both Page and Fish into the 51 second bracket. It was a 51 one that time for Fish. He's right there with Page. Down through the hairpin they go. The gap's 1.1 from first to second. You can see what it is from second to third. Down across the line. Fish having a good run here. It is first complex of turns. They've got a very slight gap. Maximum commitment from Cooper Fish. Look at the movement on the back end of that cart as he goes through there. He is trying to force the door open here on the pink and black number 22 as they come down. To the left-hander at Video Pro. Charlotte, she's grown an extra leg after having her first international experience last weekend. And you can see how much her confidence has grown. Just in the way that she's approaching a racing here today. But Fish, he is punching on here. All over the tail of Charlotte Page Hilda. Back there in fourth spot. In fact, Fish has done another quickest lap of the race. A 51.066. The gap to McGill is down to six tenths of a second. Charlotte took three tenths out of him on that lap. So Page has been pushed here by Fish and they're both working together to close the gap to the leader. So much so that we can get our top three into the same camera position. The problem is that we are running out of laps. We are working lap number eight at the moment. There will be only two more left to go when they come to the line. Through the auto barn corner they go. Page punching on. McGill takes a look over the shoulder. He'll be able to see that the number 22 is looming larger and has been looming larger. She got a good run through the hairpin. Oh, gee, she's caught up a heap of ground through the braking area that time. It was 0.637. What is it now? Down to 0.483 with two to go. And Fish just does the quickest lap of the race. So nothing in it. A 51.031. McGill's personal best. A personal best for Paige. A best of anyone for Fish. 
Then Hilda back there in fourth spot. He's got Tilmouth for company, Friend and Carmichael, and officially another one to set a personal best. But what about this? Can we get a grandstand finish here? This is where Paige in that Empire Kart Sport number 22 is strong. Onto the back straight away they go. McGill holding on to it. Now Fish, he's right there with her. He's pushing it on. It's got to be a big last lap here. Tyson McGill holding on to it. Page is closer again. It was 0.483. Will it be game on this last lap? It's down to 0.37. She hasn't got the pace. She has really got a punch on here. McGill. He's holding on to it at the moment. Cooper Fish is going to start thinking club championship points. He's not worried about the win. He knows that. He's out of his grasp at the moment. So he is going to try and get through to second spot. He's not close enough at Video Pro. Through the left hand do they run there. McGill is driving this one absolutely perfectly. He hasn't had the pace of the two behind him. But he got through to the race lead. And he's maintained that race lead. And driven it beautifully. Fish not close enough to have a look at the hairpin. However, Tyson McGill, he leads away out of the final turn, comes to the start finish line, and he gets the victory. So Tyson McGill wins the day over Charlotte Page. Cooper Fish home in third. Then it was Hilda, followed by Friend. Then Carmichael, Fishley, Aquasanta, Lipiat. Tillmouth had a problem on the last lap there. Buster Bailey rounds out your 10. Bouchard. And then it was Caden McKinn, Cowan. And waiting on Zane Chapman is that to come across the line. And there is Tillmouth over in the middle part of the race circuit. So that completes our final four K3 Junior Heavy Cadet 12 coming up for their 10 laps of fury very soon.
10 laps on the board. 39 rapid youngsters between the ages of 9 and 12. What could possibly happen here? It is the Cadet 12 final. A massive field here this afternoon. Trophies up for grabs. It's all to play for. Alistair Flack will line up on the pole in a 10. Riley Curtis, the outside front row. Xander Watts, a 57, and Jack Larson in the 35 from four. Blake Haig worked himself into fifth spot. And Vince Turhorse alongside the 66. Aston Mills, the 11. Geordie Butler, the 12. Archer Bailey on row five in the 88. Jeremy Broadbent, the 32. Outside the top 10, it's Michael Quintiliani and Brock Nolan on the sixth row of the grid. The Cadet 9 Australian champion in the 17. Monty Jamison, the 43. Then Nicholas Kinder on row number 8 is Cruz Petrani. Carter Lampard in the 97. Cruz Smith, the 7. Page Flack in the 14. Miko Waddy in the 2. Out of 19, out of 20 is April Flack. Then it's Jack Masico in the 26. Olivia Walton out of the 22nd position. Row number 12 is Tyler Hoare and Oliver Tresillian and Cooper Folly. Lennox Carson, Carter Grow, the Leighton Thorley, Chelsea Flack, Knox Black, Alistair Leggett, Campbell Dawson, Shelby Smith, Andrew Thompson, Sam Mick Cole, Oliver Jones, and Jack Swallow set for a start. Ten on the board. We're good to go. We are racing down to turn number one. Hold on to your hats. Here they come. Oh, I've got a couple toward the back that go through the water feature down there at turn one. <clears throat> so working their way through it. Most of them are way okay. We've got a couple that have stopped down at the turn one arena. I think that they're all under control. However, they don't look like they're in any sort of distress. One gets underway. But anyway, everyone else just trying to sort themselves out out here. Everyone out of harm's way, it would seem, down at the first turn. Back straight away time. It's Flack leading them through in the number 10 with Curtis in the 30 tiny cart right behind him as they come to the line. It's all nice and tight out there. In third spot to 35 of Larson. Then it's Watts followed by Turhorse. He's had a good start as Vince. Butler up to six spot. Nolan into P7 to Townsvillian. He's talking to his mum Beck this morning. It's taking him in a little while to get used to the step up to Cadet 12. But a few changes in their engine setup as well. Certainly Brocky's starting to push his way forward here as Flack leads away. They've got a lap cart that you can see at the top of your screen. He had a problem getting out of the pits and onto the circuit. It's not your leader that you're seeing there. There's your top two now. Flack with Curtis on his tail in the red helmet. Oh. Gee, the door got shut there. That's opened it up for Larson. So Curtis went for a bit of a move. Flack didn't know that he was there. There's nothing untoward from Flack in that manoeuvre at all. It was just that where Curtis had the cart position, there was just nothing doing and no room. Now they get past that driver, so that pushes the lapper in front of your second place driver in Larson and Curtis. They get through. And they take Xander Watts with them as well. So second, third and fourth going at it at the moment. The blue light will no doubt be shown to that driver to alert him that the faster traffic has come through. Yes, you can see that on the right of your screen, that flashing there on the totem pole. Down the back stretch they go now. It's all happening out there in the early stages of this one. But it is a little bit spread out, to be honest. <clears throat> Alistair Flack. Clean set of wheels at the moment. There he is, the number 10, the Flack family. They take up about half of the pit area here at Ipswich. <clears throat> oh, big move coming from Curtis into turn one. What was the result of that? There was a change for second position. You can see Curtis in the red helmet has moved himself into P2 in front of Jack Larson. But now they've also got Xander White. So it's a battle in three for second, third and fourth at the moment as they come towards you here. It's Curtis, Larson and Watts. Flax trying to pull away as much as he can up the front. There's a lot going on out there through the field.
Change for fifth further back with Nolan getting past her horse. So Brocky Boy in the Lando Norris cart. He's moved his way up. Norris in fact out and qualifying for the Japanese Grand Prix as we speak. Flack leading the way by seven tenths of a second over Curtis. Curtis, the quickest one out there, a 53.775, or it's game on here on lap number five. Curtis was three tenths of a second quicker than Flack that time. So it's all happening here. Curtis is taking Larson and Watts with him. Watts has actually dropped off the back of that group. So they start to work their way through. Everyone's still sorting themselves out as we'll get to the halfway point when we get to the line at the end of this lap. <coughs> Curtis driving the wheels off the Tony cart at the moment. <coughs> To the start line it is. What does Flack do that time? An 863, that plays a 685. It's down under six tenths of a second, 0.578 between Flack and Curtis with Larson sitting in third spot. It's an equal distance then for second to third, third to fourth. Then it got back to fifth placing. Nolan Turhorse. Turhorse got back in front of Nolan with Haig in the mix as well there. So that's a battle in three for fifth spot at the moment. Haig having a look, as you just saw, at Nolan. In fact, Nolan's made it up into P5. That's a good little battle pack going on for fifth. But Curtis is driving the wheels off this thing. Look, he's right there with your race leader as they come to the line at the end of lap number six. Four laps left to go now. It's down under three tenths. That was a massive lap there from Riley Curtis. A 53.651 against a 53.939. So he is on racing terms here. Watch out, because here comes Curtis. Curtis on the charge. Flack is under attack. Normally we talk about the Flack attack. Now this time Flack's under attack from Riley Curtis through Video Pro. Now Curtis. He'll want to try and position himself on the exit of the Autobahn corner. This has been a well-constructed race here from Riley Curtis. It took him a while to force his way in the barest of margins. There goes Curtis up the inside at turn number one. He's on the outside though. Oh, Flack goes deep. Flack went really, really deep there. He was so lucky he didn't get into the back of him. If I'm Larson, I'm pretty happy with my place in the world at the moment. Sitting there, Curtis and Flack go at it. Curtis in the red helmet, Flack in the white. Here comes Larson up the inside. He goes to second. He had the momentum while those two were battling it out at turn number one. And Flack goes back at him. All that's doing is helping Curtis out. He says, thanks very much. I'm going to open the, leg, the gap up down the back stretch. Down in through the right hander they come. They'll get the last lap board when they come to the line this time. Has Flack got anything for Curtis here? Curtis has been the driver with the pace through the back end of this one. He takes a sneaky peek over the shoulder as they go down into turn one. It's a final lap. What about Larson? Has he got anything left in his tank? He was half a second quicker than Flack on that lap, but that involved a couple of squabbles throughout the course. Oh, gee, Curtis went a little bit wide there as they went down to Electro. It's it's not over and done with yet. What about Larson? What about Flack? Down to Video Pro. Larson thought about it but didn't go for it. Curtis is holding on to it. He didn't need to go defensive, but he's going defensive. Here comes Flack. Big move up the inside. Oh, Flack takes the lead. Flack takes the lead. Curtis drops back to third. He went from first to a very distant third in a space of one corner with only about four quarters left to go. It's Flack who leads away. Has Larson got anything here? To the final quarter they come. Larson to the high side. He's on the inside. Oh, Flack gets it done. Race of the day, 91, one thousandth of a second. Alistair Flack, he gets the J-O-B and the W-I-N. He was a race long leader. Curtis chased him down. He got the lead, then he dropped back to third while he was going defensive on the final lap. My goodness, Xander Watts, in all of that, he got fourth, Blake Hay got through on Brocky Nolan for fifth. Then it was Mills, Quintiliani, 
followed by Two Horse. Great drive from Carter Grove that he come home 10th. Then Kinder Jamison, Butler Bailey, Leggett Broadbent, Petroni, then April and Paige Flack, Carter Lampard, Cruz Smith, Lennox Carlson, and Tresillian Waddy, Black Walton Dawson, Flack Smith Thorley, and following on from Thorley was Masiko and Fuller. I need a Bex and a good lie down. I'm going to go and catch my breath. We'll send our next race out very soon. And we're back after what was an incredibly exciting Cadet 12 final there. If you weren't with us just a couple of minutes ago, I suggest that you scrub back on YouTube a bit later on and take that one in. It was incredible. On the racetrack now is the 4SS Junior final. They've got 10 laps on the board as we keep cranking through these finales this afternoon. Great to have your company. Whether you're here with us at the circuit, watching on the Ipswich Car Club YouTube or through speedcafe.com. Good afternoon to Ian Black from IKD, who's tuning in and watching us. Great to have the support of the industry right around Australia. I don't think you've got much else to do in Sydney with the way that the weather's been. Having said that, just looking at the rugby league at Manly at the moment, it's looking quite fine down there after the disaster that was last night and the 4SS Junior Final is on circuit. Jackson DeWong in the 13 on the pole. Jackson Turner it's a racing Jackson. This is going to be cool between these two. Buster Bailey he got shuffled backwards in his earlier race in the other category so watch for him out of th three. Harrison Lippiat, Dane Norris, Hamish Douglas and JD Chapman set for a start with Green. Pretty even start through there. Dawn gets the best of it. Turner goes with him in the BRM. Turner getting a good start. Buster Bailey. He'd be ang aching to get a podium here this afternoon. Bocchini. Oh, Turner. He copped a bit of ripple strip there and just got a little bit sideways. It's probably got a bit of the dampness as well. Still offline. Even though you can see a dry racing line on the screen that you're watching heavy rain overnight there's a lot of uh, standing water around the circuit and very muddy if you were to get anywhere near that grass it certainly made that grass look nice and lush and green uh, we did have a couple of showers early this morning uh, before we got onto the circuit just to make qualifying that little bit more interesting as to wong he started to open a gap can he get another win in this category <clears throat> He's got the lead over Turner, who's under attack already here from Harrison Lippiat. Lippiat in fourth position in the 51. Trying to get himself up into a podium spot. Then behind them, Norris, Douglas and Chapman are having their own little battle going on. So Duong leading down the back stretch here. 
Des Bailey in third, the Green Machine, number six. He has got Harrison Lippiot on his tail. Across the start finish line they go. Or oh, Buster, you could see there, the back end stepped out a little bit. Just sliding his way through turn number one, nice and casually. Lippiat would have read that in the CRG and know that he may be able to position himself to have a go. However, still a fair way to go here. We're only on lap number three of our ten. So we said before about 4SS today, a momentum category. Drivers utilising the 4SS motors, the majority using a Torini engine, the four-stroker. Engineered in Australia, built overseas. Of course, Torini out of the same stable as SP Tools. Huge supporters of karting at every single level in this country as they come across the line now. <laughs> Duong's responded to Turner out there with a quicker lap time and has taken a bit more out of him and has opened the gap out to six tenths of a second. Lippiat through on Bailey. Douglas still in fifth spot. Norris and Chapman. That's the order at the moment. Turner. Might have responded in the first half of this lap here, I think. Through Video Pro they go. <clears throat> Lippy out in third spot, trying to pull away from Bailey as he takes a peek over the shoulder. <clears throat> now Turner jumping in the seat a little bit, just trying to maximise any momentum that he can get. There's not a great deal of torque in his motors as you would have seen when they took to the start there but Turner's had a good lap here as they come to the line the end of lap number four and indeed he was actually two four tenths of a second quicker than Duong that time so it was a very good lap there for your man in second the man there in that fluorescent orange and white colors the BRM colors the Italian chassis put in Australia these days by the Priolos out of Western Australia. Through Video Pro Corner they go. <clears throat> now we've got a race on for the lead here as they go up through Autobahn. So Young Duong has become a real specialist in this category. He's taken a couple of wins. He's a regular visitor to the podium. Could he get himself on the top step tonight? Across the line they charge. Gee, I tell you what, Turner is up on the wheel here. Lippiat's just done the quickest lap of the race. He's 1.3 seconds behind Turner. He was two tenths of a second quicker there. But watch out. Here comes Turner. Have a look at him. He's all over the back of DeWong. It's a matter of just getting Cart in position to have a go and be able to exit the turn. We're working lap number six. So we're past the halfway point now. <clears throat> down the back stretch. Turner down behind the wheel. He's just in that slipstream. It's DeWong who's breaking the air. Now, Turner, riding the crash bar of Jackson DeWong as they cross the line. He's not making the move just yet. Personal best for DeWong and Lippy at that time, so too for Douglas, who's down in fifth position. DeWong's just holding his line here, doing exactly what he needs to do. He's not blocking by any stretch of the imagination. He's just holding his racing line, driving at wheel perfect at this point. Through the video pro corner they go. Harrison Lippiet will be seeing what's going on in front of him. Dong's actually responded a little bit here. He's opened up a small gap. That's the biggest gap that he's had for about two laps in this one. This will be the end of lap number seven as they come through. A great entry level way to get into kart racing is 4SS. They're long lasting and durable motors. These four strokes basically need no maintenance whatsoever. You just roll it out the trailer onto the track and off you go. <coughs> so turn up. 
He's had a lap of just sitting back and thinking about it. Now he's picked up the pace again. He's on lap number eight, so there's two and a half laps left to go. He's still got the time. It's a matter of thinking about it, then executing what he's thought about. He's just trying to find a weakness. Oh, he's not trying to find a weakness, he's forced a weakness. He's just elbowed his way past the Wong, but the Wong's got the pace on the back stretch. But up the inside goes Turner. Doesn't outbreak himself, nice move. Duong to the outside, then he'll try and work his way back through. But watch out, because Lipiat wants to get involved in this now. So, momentum, that's what we talked about. The momentum's come the way of Lipiat here. He's got the speed while the other two were holding each other up and banging arm, uh, banging handlebars, I should say. Not that they've got handlebars, but you know what I mean. So who's your money on here? Turner leads over to Wong. Lipiat done the quickest lap of the race. De Wong goes for the move. Turner goes back at him. I'm going for Lipiat in this one. De Wong up the inside. Turner around the outside. He's going to try and get the switch back. Again, Lipiat's going to have the run down the back straight away. When does De Wong start to go super defensive? You can see them bouncing in the seat, just trying to maximise their momentum. Down the back straight away. It's a very 4SS move. The last lap board's out. There's only 1,088 metres left to go. The pit crew's down on the fence, giving them every piece of encouragement. They are riding every single corner with their driver. Your leader's Jackson of the Turner variety. In front of Jackson of the DeWong variety, with the Harrison Lipiat sitting in third. Has Lipiat got anything left here? You know that DeWong is going to have a go here. Lipiat goes wide to try and cut back inside. Turner did it well there. Those two are side by side, the two Jacksons. So Duong had a look over his shoulder. Didn't affect anything there. Down the back stretch they come. So here's the big passing manoeuvre. Turner starts to go defensive. Duong goes high, tries to cut back. Lipiat can't do anything there. Turner's got the inside line. He runs it high. They're coming to the line. Who's it going to be? Turner leads away. It's side by side of the line. We have to go to the timing screen. And it was Turner. Turner by 49. One thousandth of a second. They both celebrated it. But it was Jackson Turner in the 88 who gets a W in the BRM. By the smallest of margins, DeWong came in second in what's been a terrific race and what a fight from Harrison Lipiat. Then it was Buster Bailey, followed by Hamish Douglas, Dane Norris and JD Chapman. He's had a solid day at the races as well. So that's 4SS Junior done and dusted. Coming up after this will be our open performance and Deddy to final. We're back here at Ipswich. The light's starting to take effect on the circuit as DD2 and Open Performance coming up for their 10-lap final. The multi-gearbox class 
Up the front, you've got the six-speed gearboxes. It's actually open to a whole range of different performance categories, hence being called open performance, but all of these drivers using the six-speed gearbox DD2 configuration. Bally Sagadak will line up on the pole in a 25. Jay Cool, the Victorian, out of position two in a 42. The Japanese and Hokuto Ide will line up third in the 29. Lachlan Murphy, a great day in the 15 out of four. Cam McLeod, the number 92 PCR from five. Then Finlay Derry, Dan Hutchison, the Swede, Hampers Varis and Troy Losco, the multi Oz champ. In DD2, Scotty Howard on the pole, Adam Wood alongside. Scotty Cleveland, third. Jet Johnson, of course, making his DD2 debut out of four. Then Duffy and Mathers were away with our first group. They charged down to turn number one. Jay Cool, it looks like, got the best of that as they come out through the flip-flop. Cool looking for a big result. And then the DD2 crew, they're about to get the green flag, or the Australian flag, I should say. And they are underway down to turn number one. But there's Cool leading the way, Sagadak in the IKD Cosmic into second, having a charge up to Autobahn. And look at the battle for third here. That being Lachlan Murphy, he's holding down to third position. Or is that McLeod that's got himself up into that third position? We'll pick him up for you when they come back around to the start finish straight here. But it's certainly Jay Cool who leads the way across the line with Sagadak on his hammer. It is Murphy in third. <clears throat> Then it's McLeod in front of Ide, then Losco, Hutchison, Varis and Derry. Look at this battle here, Sagadak, the local, on the back of the Victorian. Jay Cool with plenty of experience in KZ2 solo racing. has done a bit of racing over in Europe over recent times as well. Sagadak, he's the man with the experience around this track, having the benefit of factory backing this year. He's done the hard yards as Bailey Sagadak. Here he is in his Cosmic Equipment, a brand new car just a couple of weeks ago. Up the inside into the race lead, a beautiful move there from Bailey. <coughs> to the far start, finish straight, they come. <coughs> They've opened up a huge gap. Oh, Murphy had the hand in the air, I wasn't quite sure. There was a bit of a strange one there that he had the hand in the air across the start, finish line. Lachlan Murphy, not sure. McLeod the quickest on circuit in the number 92 on his tail. Yes, Murphy gone. He did have a issue, a technical issue for Murphy, so he's out of commission. Meantime, in the DD2 category, it's Howard and Cleveland, one and two. Adam Wood dropping back to third. Jet Johnson, of course, doing some supercars racing, some Trans Am racing, and anything else that he can slap a Napa sticker onto. Out there, he is sitting in fourth spot aboard that number 18, of course, the grandson of the five-time Australian Touring Car champion and three-time Bathurst 1000 winner in Dick Johnson. Steve Johnson no doubt down there twisting the spinners. Of course, Steve, a very storied career through supercars for many years, then going on to be a Touring Car Masters champion as well. Now very much a radio star on the driver's seat on SEN Radio around the country. Across the star finish line goes Scott Howard. He's got a decent lead over Scott Cleveland. Those two will be vying to represent Australia at the Rotax Max World Finals at Sano in Italy at the end of this year. Of course, that qualifying, or one of the qualifying events we held here, the major qualifying event, in fact, for Rotax will be at this very venue later on this year. I think it's August sometime there. As Sagadak, he crosses the line, leading the way at the end of lap number four. A new quickest lap for him, a 46.403 for Bailey. Jay Cool in second position still. Then it's Cam McLeod. There's Howard there on screen at the moment. I'll tell you what, the number 14 Soddy card of Scotty Cleveland has caught right up to him. He hasn't been able to hold much of a candle to Howard throughout the course of the day. Cleveland, the president of the club here at Ipswich. Howard, the former president. And it's been very much an initiative of Scott Cleveland that allows you to watch all of the action here today. He's been working toward it for a couple of years now and finally brought it to fruition. Unprecedented in Club Day Racing in Australia. And it's great to have the team from Calling All Sports Brisbane stitching it all together and adding pitches to my voice. Pitch is probably outrating my voice at the moment, I'd have to think. As they go through, can Cleveland throw a challenge here? 
to Howard. What's a bet he's paid Howard off here to have a bit of a race. I'll take it to the line. Try and show himself off to the camera, Scott Cleveland. I'm only joking, guys. Adam Wood having a good run in third spot out there as well. Sagadak opened his lead at the top out to 1.7 seconds out of Jay Cool. Cool getting some valuable laps in before we head to Pakapanyul for the second round of the SP Tools Championships in just a couple of weeks' time, April 19 to 21. Certainly looking forward to that one. Hopefully it's not as cold the last time I was at Pakapanyul for an Australian Championship round. <clears throat> so the top two and Deddy two. Howard and Cleveland go across the line. Only four tenths of a second split those two at the moment. Howard's responded. There's Bailey Sagadak, the cosmic number 25. He crosses the line. He's doing it comfortably. Didn't get the first heat in the books. John Target down there cheering on his charges. He's been in the corner for Bailey Sagadak this year. And really starting to show the dividends. Looking very solid out there. As you can see, Bailey go up to the Autobahn corner. That's the advantage that he's got over Jay Cool. Further back in DD2, Howard has <coughs> decided to pull clear in that one. But this machine, the Cosmic, out of the OTK stable, which built so many of those kart brands, including the Lando Norris kart, the team from OTK Australia. Had a wonderful day a couple of weeks down ago down in Melbourne with Lando Norris out on circuit at Oakley. <clears throat> Very much rubbing it in to Lando's teammate, Oscar Piastri, on his home circuit. It was a bit cheeky. Sagadak again goes faster. He's down to 46.022. The latter stages of today. The grip levels on the circuit wouldn't be that fantastic due to the overnight rain, but there is some nice black lines that are being laid down on this track. <clears throat> Sagadak will come to the line. He'll only have one lap to go when he gets there. Still in DD2. The gap's actually down 0.392 between Howard and Cleveland. Wood in third jet. Johnson still there in fourth position. Sagadak's through. He's on the final lap. There's your DD2 leaders through the left hand up and going up to the top part of the race circuit. And there's your third place man, Adam Wood. You can see the totem pole on the left hand side with the scores. Adam Wood's been instrumental in getting that together for our team and bringing that to you throughout the course of the day. It's been all hands on deck to make this a reality here today and something that we hope that we are able to do more of throughout the course of the season. Meantime, we're just waiting now for Bailey Sagadak to come around in that number 25 machine to come to the line. And there he is, he crosses the line to get the checkered flag. So a comfortable win there and a confidence boosting win, it must be said. His first of 2024 for Bailey Sagadak in the IKD Cosmic 25. He gets a win by 3.3 seconds over for the Patrizic Horse Bureau Art for Jay Cool, and it's a double podium for Patrizzi Horse with Troy Losco coming home third. The PCR of Cam McLeod home fourth. Hokuto Ide in this spot. Then Hampus Varis in the DR cart. Our visitor from Sweden, the 15-year-old. Then it's Dan Hutchison followed by Finlay Derry. Scotty Howard gets the best of his good mate, Scott Cleveland, in DD2 with Adam Wood completing that podium. Jeff Johnson. Coming home in fourth, good hit out for Jet here this weekend, making a return to karting. Then Steph Duthie and Angus Mathers rounding out your finishers. Lachlan Murphy, a non-finisher out there. So that's that for open performance and DD2 done and dusted. Tag restricted medium coming up with 12 laps on the board. <clears throat>
So back on circuit now. We have tag restricted medium, one of our feature classes here. Of course, tag restricted titles this weekend. And it's Geordie Marcon. He has been the pace all weekend long in the Will Power Cart, the WPK machine. There he is. Man from Bundaberg. Can they catch him here? Trent Hart is the 93. What can he do <clears throat> about that man alongside him? Andrew Torty, he's been solid. The number 55, Tony Cart. Gav Whitmore out of row two. Can he make a silk purse out of a sow's ear that was qualifying this morning? He's out of four. David Vogel, the 66 out of five. Samuel Misson out of six in the eight. Luke Jacobson, the 22. On the fourth row is Zach King in the 97. Bradley Cox, the 54. Julian Beaumont Walsh in the 23. And out of row six is Alan Chislowski, Justin Voigt. Jonathan Lillis, Ryan Silcock, Pete Sattler out of 15. Out of 16, Scott Jordan, the 41. Sebastian DeSalvo from Cairns. Daniel Vellacott, Dennis Scott Highland, Dakota Daniels, Nathan Miller and Carl Wegner. Good field here of restricted mediums. We're away. Down to turn one they go. And it's Marcon who does get the best of it. Down into the first turn. Hart is in the 93 in the second, as you can see. Oh, Mark on. He was very aggressive through there. I thought he might have just got a little bit unsettled, but no, it hasn't cost him any ground whatsoever. tordy has got a good run in third spot going there. In fourth spot is Whitmore. And through the left hander, I think that might be uh, missing. It's got himself into the next position. Up to the top turn they go. <clears throat> Mark on trying to build. A gap here as they go down the back straight away. Big move coming for second. Up the inside they go. That's Torty who's got his way up into P2. That's the highest that he's been all day long. Onto the front straight away they come. What about this battle between second, third and fourth? It's Torty followed by Harders and Whitmore. Missing up to fifth, then Vogel. King into seven. Then Chislowski. Look at this freight train. Marcon's just gone. That's exactly what he's done all day long here on lap number two. But it is not over and done with yet for the minor placings. This is going to be an absolute cracker as they head up to Video Pro Corner. Torty right there holding on to second place at the moment. Then Harder's in the 93 with more. He's always a force to be reckoned with. <clears throat> Down toward the hairpin they run. Oh, big move coming. That was Zach King making a move on Vogel from downtown at the hairpin in the 97. He's moved up a spot. Then he just caught that. Zach King. Certainly not shy in the 97 as Zach King, that's for sure. He gets himself up into P6. Tordy's got a slight breath over Harders at the moment. That breath being all of two cart lengths. And Whitmore. Right there, Whitmore on attack now. When well, no, actually it was Whitmore attacking hard, as I should say. With Misson on his tail in the KR. Then King. No shortage of speed out of King. Just positioning the cart for him. There's your leader, Jordy Mark on. It'd be a welcome return to the front of the pack for Geordie as they come out. Or oh, who was that? That was missing and had a problem onto the front straight away. And he's dropped all sorts of positions. He's, he's in all sorts errors missing. He had nothing doing onto the front stretch and he's lost a heap of spots. Marcon's lead is 1.8 seconds. Exactly. Over Tordy. Then it's uh, Harder still in third. Whitmore pushing on behind him. Then King is right behind Whitmore there. There's King in the black helmet. Chasing down the orange and yellow lid of Gavin Whitmore. Just those colours that have just become synonymous over the years. Up through the auto barn turn they go. And on to the back stretch you can see how the field has fanned out. 
in the early stages of this as we're on lap number four. There's Torty. He'll be happy with a second place if he can hold on to that. But we are a long way before we can guarantee him that position as we've seen so far today. Plenty plays out certainly towards the back end of these races. 12 laps for the feature classes, of course. There's a fair bit going on down towards the back. My goodness. <laughs> now, Hart is under attack from both Whitmore and King. King's pushing Whitmore here, and Whitmore's going to have to try and push on to get through on Harders because King, he has no filter, and he'll just have a go as they go up to the top turn. There's Torty, the green and white Tony Cart. One of the most famous brands in world kart racing over the years. Of course, Michael Schumacher is synonymous with Tony Kart throughout his kart racing career. Which continued right through his Formula One career, in fact. So it's still Mark on, followed by Torty Harders, then Whitmore, King Misson, Cox, Shislowski, Vogel and Lillis is your top ten. <clears throat> You're watching the battle for third spot at the moment. King's just nip, nip, nipping away, trying to get into fourth spot. Harders has got just a cart length and a half on Whitmore at the moment. <clears throat> now Whitmore, gee, he thought about it on Harders, just wasn't in position. He won't make a rash move here, Gavin Whitmore. Oh, no, oh, there, very interesting. So, Harders... Just tap the rear of the cart and just let him through. You could graphically see that. So he opened the door for Gavin Whitmore to go through. Just tapped and said, right, you go. Let's start working together to see if we can close the gap to Andrew Torty. <clears throat> just give himself a bit of a breather. Let Whitmore be the one that cuts through the air. But what he's done, he's opened himself up to King as hard as there. So... It's going to be interesting to see what happens here. Whitmore, did he have the pace there? Yes, he did. So he had a little bit more pace there, did Gavin Whitmore. So onto the back straight away they go. Whitmore starting to pull away. King, he's starting to sniff a fourth placing here. And now goes up the inside. He just dive bombs and goes past Trent Harders up into the fourth position. <clears throat> So just past the halfway mark, Jordi Marcon has just done the quickest lap of the race. We've had a couple of shuffles. Marcon leads by 3.1 seconds. He took another three tenths out of Torty, who just did his personal best. Then it's Whitmore, followed by King. Hart is missing. Shislowski got past Cox. Then Vogel, it's Lillis, Beaumont, Walsh, Jordan, Velikot, then Jacobson. Sattler up to 15th now in front of Voigt. Then DeSalvo, then Daniels, Highland, Miller, and Vegna. That is your order as they sit from top to bottom after seven of our 12 laps here as afternoon turns in tonight. There's Whitmore aiming to get yet another podium position here. Working their way through on lap number eight. Marcon crosses the line. That's eight laps in the books for Geordie. He's not going to make it a perfect weekend. That's a huge gap that he's got. On Geordie Marker, I'm just having a look from my commentary position to see the physical size of the gap, and it's massive. Here's Gav Whitmore looking for yet another podium. Zach King's going to push it all the way to the finish to try and close in on Gav. They're lapping at similar pace at the moment. Youth versus experience. Experience being the man on screen at the moment in that orange and yellow helmet of Whitmore. He's raced at the highest level back in the Pro Tour days of road tax and so on. Very much a stalwart of those categories. Across the line. Gee, that's a good little battle coming. Oh, geez. One actually pulled out of the line. I think that was Chislowski, but it was quite dramatic the way that it all happened because it was in the middle of a three-card battle. Not necessarily the way that you want to just pull out We're working lap number 10 now. There goes Mark on. He's got basically three quarters of that shoot up to the Autobahn corner in the lead over Torty now. 
Whitmore comfortably in third, having been waved through by Harders a bit early up. Misson's now got in front of Harders into fifth spot. So I wonder if Harders had identified a slight problem with the number 93 machine or whether it was just done with tyres throughout the course of the day. Two laps to go for Geordie Mark on now. Yes, indeed, Harders has dropped down the order, continues to drop down the order, so there was obviously some sort of problem that was afflicting that machine. So the pace of the race has settled right down out there. So Mark on. I say the pace of the race has settled down. He's still doing high 50s. Hasn't really deviated too much, but doing it comfortably. Gee, it's on here for third. So this is for the final podium as we come to get the last lap board. So can Whitmore hold on? One to go. Just over a kilometre as they charge down into turn number one. There's your leader in Geordie Marcon. He just has to hold on for about 600 more metres and he'll become a race winner. But you'll see it coming towards you very shortly, the battle for third, and this is a prime position for King to try and have a go at Whitmore. Whitmore hunts, hugs the inside line to hold on to that third position. Can King get a run here? as Marcon hits the back straight away for the final time. Another passing opportunity expended there. Whitmore, he's holding on to it here. King's going to have to have a big dive. He thought about it but couldn't do it. But Marcon comes out of the final turn and gets the job done. So Geordie Marcon, he takes the win. Andrew Tordy, a well-deserved second spot. And Gavin Whitmore, he just holds on in front of Zach King. Then it's missing. Followed by Chisowski, then Brad Cox, David Vogels. Then just waiting on now the back end of the top ten. Julian Beaumont Walsh in ninth. Jonathan Lillis in tenth spot. Then Scott Jordan, Daniel Vallecott, Justin Voigt, Sebastian DeSalvo, Dakota Daniels, Luke Jacobson, Scott Highland, Pete Sattler home in 18th spot. Then waiting on now for Nathan Miller and Carl Wegner to finish off our tag restricted medium feature class final we're going to take a break and ka3 senior is on track shortly And back here, as the lights start to take effect, there's the man they're trying to beat, Declan Matthews, the number 55. He'll start on the pole. Dominic Penman, 70 on the outside front row. Brian Moyes, the 75, and Jake Czeslowski, the 15, the next row of the grid. Matty Feather starting from five for Empire Card Sport. Lucas Lesmes for Jess Golding Motorsport, the 95 out of six. Next row of the grid is the second of the JGMs. Ian Hamilton, Ray the 82, and Byron Phillips in the 46. Then out of nine is the 43 of Kai Brennan and Matthew Price, the 86. Row number six, the 85 of Talia Kittle and Liam Thompson, the 69. Emily Chicardo, the 54. Ronan Finn, the 28. Georgie Aiden, the 7. And Paige Yarwood, that is your KA3 senior field here tonight. <clears throat> Matthews, Penman. Can Penman get the start here and take it to his teammate, team boss in Declan? See what the team orders look like there. Brian, hasn't she been on form today in the 75? Maybe she can upset them. 
Set for a start. We're away. Ten on the clock. Oh, gee, I'll tell you what, Matthews didn't get the best of the start. Penman took it to him, but he was unsettled, and Matthews it is who leads away. Moyes into third spot to kick things off. Penman will be a little bit annoyed with that. I think he had designs on taking the lead into that first turn. However, Matthews was having absolutely none of it. They might pit out of the same area, but you're not going to take a first-place trophy away from the boss, up to the top turn at Autobahn they go. <coughs> Down the back straight away, there's Matthews, the green and gold livery this weekend, the Team Australia machine for CXR. It's CXR one and two at the moment as they come to the line. Make that three with Chislowski up to third. Lesmes has got up into fourth spot in front of Moyes and then Feather in six. Phillips, Thompson, Brennan and Price is your ten. So it's CXR, one, two and three. Chislowski, he was able to force his way through into third placing. Can they get the trifecta? Or can Lesmes close the gap here? Up through the top corner they run. Lesmes is in fact under attack from Moyes as they go down the back stretch. So it's Matthews who leads. Half a second back to Penman, the same back to Chislowski. Then it's 1.1 back to Lesmes, with, who's got Brian Moyes within two tenths of him. That's the battle for fourth and fifth spot you can see at the bottom of the screen. That's where the main battle is at the moment. Through the left-hander. There's Lesmes, the number 95. Brian, right behind him in a 74. She's been supreme. Here today, Lesmes, he's had to work up to it a little bit. Youngster out of the sunny coast. Bit of a star last year in the junior categories. And right behind them, you got Maddie Feather in the green and black Empire cart sport machine with Liam Thompson on her tail in the 69. So they're trying to make it a nice little battle for fourth spot between four carts. <clears throat> Chizowski in third just does the quickest lap of the race as he tries to close in on Penman, his CXR teammate. There's the CXRs, one, two, and three at the moment. So Lesmes has opened a slight gap on Moyes in the last lap there. Lesmes in the white helmet. Well, in fact, they're both in white helmets, but the predominantly white sticky kit on the card is that of the JGM driver. <clears throat> now, Moyes has picked up the pace here. She's right with him as they go down into turn number one. Oh, geez, just off screen, she absolutely gave him one to go on with. Into turn number one did Brian Moyes. He's not taking any prisoners here tonight to try and work her way up a spot. Maddie Feathers dropped back a spot behind Liam Thompson in the last lap. And indeed, Moyes missed that. I was watching that. And she's got through on Les Mez. So, they look very similar as darkness starts to descend here. So, Moyes up to P at number four now. Up the front, Matthews has got this one very much under control. <clears throat> as you can see, as they come to the line, the end of lap number five. So, we're past the halfway point. Driver to watch is Chislowski in third. However, Penman just responded to Chislowski's challenge by setting a new quickest lap of 49.727 and taking the best part of half a tenth out of Chislowski in third. But Chislowski's responding already. There's only six tenths of a second from Matthews back to Penman. That's Penman in the purple helmet that you were watching there as we cross back to keep an eye on what Brian and Lucas are up to. Brianna here in fourth. She's the first cart you can see there. And Liam Thompson in a 69. He's actually throwing the big ones here to try and close that gap to make it a battle in three for fourth spot as we work lap number six. 
getting toward the back end of our event here this afternoon. We've only got five finals to go after this one. Six laps in the books, a new fastest lap for Shizlowski in third spot. He's got that gap down to 0.169. You don't need me to tell you that. You can see it on screen now. There's Penman in second spot. Look at Chislowski in the white helmet. He's throwing everything here at his CXR teammate. He wants to advance himself up into second spot at the podium. And if something should happen to our race leader, he will inherit the lead. But it's very rare that something happens to Declan Matthews. So Moyes pulling away from Les Mez, as you can see. Thompson trying to close in on the back of Lucas. But there we go, the battle for our top three. Oh, gee, that sounded terrible. Something went horribly wrong on the front straightaway with the exhaust on one of our competitors there. That sounded disgraceful. So officials will be keeping an eye on that. I'm not sure which one it was. <clears throat> Certainly one of our top three. Still Matthews leading by six tenths. <clears throat> Through the top turn, Penman under attack now. Chislowski, he's right on his hammer. Up the inside he goes. Suspected it might have been Penman that did have the issue, but we'll try and pick it up as they come past us this time. It's not Matthews. Definitely Penman. <clears throat> so there's only two laps to go in this one. We've got eight in the books as they cross the line. Thing sounds terrible of Penman's. Actually, my interpretation was that would be a mechanical default flag, but that doesn't seem to have been the case. <clears throat> Matthews works his way up to the top part of the race circuit. And he's got it very comfortably there at the moment, has Declan Matthews. He'll get the last lap board when they come to the start-finish line. Further back, not much has changed, although Thompson has closed down on the back of Lesmes as they cross the line. So Matthews crosses. Penman is costing him all sorts of pace, if not hearing as well, because Brian Moyes is on his tail as we're on the last lap. So Brian, could she grab herself a podium here? You're watching Matthews is on the last lap, but we're also keeping an eye on the battle just off screen. You can see it at the bottom there. Four third. Brian's going to have a crack here. There's Matthews. <clears throat> he goes down the back straight away. Brian will have a look around the outside. Penman tries to hold on to it. She'll open the door here. Oh, Lesmes has got momentum. Lesmes has got momentum on the back straight away. Brian gets into there and Lesmes, he gives a one to go back from earlier on. And Lesmes gets into third spot as they come to the line. Matthews takes the win. Second spot goes to Chislowski. And in third spot, it is Lucas Lesmes. He opened the door and gets through into third position. There was a similar move that came earlier on in the race from Moyes down into turn number one on Lesmes Penman. With that ailing number seven, he crosses the line in fourth. Brian drops back to fifth. Then it was Thompson, followed by Feather in seventh. Then Price, Kittle, then Brennan, Ray. Then it's Paige Jarwood, followed by Finn and Emily Chicato. Running out OK, three finishes. We're going for a break. You can see the zip switch at night as we go to a break. Our next race out fairly shortly. That, of course, being Tag Heavy.
<clears throat> so on track now is Tag Heavy Brent Redding. He has been a pace setter throughout the day. In fact, the two pace setters throughout the course of today, Redding and Houston. Uh, on the front row, Reading in the 58, Slam and Sam in the 6. Row number 2 is Brendan Nelson. He is the king of tag racing in Australia. Brendan Nelson over the years. Will Marshall, what a drive he's had. He's on the Jess Golding stable this weekend. He'll no doubt have uh, taken a great deal out of watching young Lucas get through for third position there. He'll line up fourth in the 17. Then it's Brock Plum out of five in the 15. Gee, that's a crackerjack top five out there. Riley Lagarde on the outside third row. Nine and after an issue in the previous heat will start seventh in the 18. Chris Williams out of eight in the 31. Harrison Fox and Jumpe Marita on the next row of the grid. Then it's Andrew Gilliam, Josh Dagg, Daniel Brown, Brad McNaught and Rudy Farkas. The final over 10. Getting set for a start now. Reading and Houston lights out, and we're on the charge to turn one. Oh, gee, there's a bit of boxing going on through there. Who was it that got the best of it? In fact, it was the Empire Machine of the 58 of Reading. Different colours with it, green and black sticker kit for Brent that we're used to, but the orange and black helmet is always a staple of Brent Reading. Put the Vaseline over the camera lens there. Now we get them back and Reading leads away over Sam Houston in the sixth parallel. Marshall's got himself into third, it would appear, as they head down the back straight away for the first time. <coughs> Hard under the brakes at the hairpin. <coughs> Over recent time, Sam Houston's been a regular on the podium here at our Ipswich Club days. As they descend in tonight, the end of daylight saving if you are in the southern part of the country. I trust that you are enjoying what you've seen here through the Ipswich Cart Club YouTube channel or indeed on speedcafe.com. We've enjoyed bringing it to you throughout the course of the day. <clears throat> it's been some cracking racing right throughout everything that we've done. It's Reading leading from Houston and Marshall plumbing fourth. Nelson's dropped back to fifth in the Calicart, then it's Lagarde, followed by Williams, Ninet, then Gilliam, Fox, Marita, then Brown, Dag, McNaught and Farkas. That's the order as they sit at the moment. They're starting to bottle up here behind Sammy Houston for second spot. There's your leader, Redding. He's clear in front. There's Houston in second placing. Marshall doing a terrific job, trying to earn a second straight podium for JGM. But Brock Plum, he will do nothing well, rest at nothing to try and take over that third position. The man in the red suit, there he is in the middle of your screen there, the number 15. Plum's got Nelson on his tail. Nelson will throw everything at it as well. Certainly becoming one of the oldest statesmen of tag racing now is Brendan Nelson up the back straight away. Nelson on the hammer of Brock Plum. The true battles for second spot. Headed up by Sam Houston. <clears throat> Across the line they come to reel off lap number three. Down through turn number one they go again. Marshall pushing on here. A 49.327 for him. It was a 49.396 for Sam Houston and a 49.1 for Reading. So. Reading's head and shoulders above the rest in terms of lap times at the moment. Marshall punching on. Nelson still not doing anything about Plum at this point in time. <clears throat> the two veterans out there battling it out with each other. <clears throat> Marshall's got a good run here behind Houston. Gonna have to have a big crack to try and get past Sammy as they come to the line. Jim Marshall's got a run going. He was over a tenth quicker than Sam that time. And Nelson's under pressure now from Lagarde. So it's getting very interesting out there as we've got to the halfway point. Redding's leading comfortably over the man on screen, Sam Houston. Then it is Will Marshall. Behind them is Brock Plum, who's pulled away from Nelson now. 
Then Nelson's got Lagarde behind him, followed by Williams. Then it's Nynett, Gilliam, Fox, Marita, Brown, McNaught, Farkas and Dag. <clears throat> there goes Redding. There in screen is Sam Houston. Stretches the legs of the number six, Paralyn. Marshall holding on to third spot at the moment. Across the line they come. There you can see the gaps between our field as they cross the line with three laps left to go. <clears throat> Marita just outside the top ten, the Asahi Assassin. He would have earned them tonight. I can tell you what, I'm looking forward to something very similar myself. The voice wasn't in too great a condition coming into the day's play. Through the right-hander at the top of the circuit goes Sam Houston, the familiar red and white of the Paralin team. It's become a super force in Australian kart racing over the last couple of years as Paralin, but look out, Will Marshall in the arrow kart for JGM is starting to wind it up down there. You see the whole JGM team down at presentations. The beers will be flowing and certainly they can continue on and get another podium here tonight. Even if they can turn a third into second spot, that'll be well and truly celebrated. <clears throat> Reading's lead, 2.2 seconds. This will be great for Brent if he can hold on here. It's been a while since he's been on the top step. Just give him a little bit of confidence boost because he'll head off down to Seymour Puckapunyal in Victoria for the next round of the Aussie Champs. Nelson's caught back up onto the tail of Plum again in a battle for fourth position. They come to the line. This is the end of lap number seven. So three laps remaining in this one for Brent Redding. Marshall's just backed it off a little bit in terms of the pace. I think that's more so out of track position than anything else being behind Sam Houston at the moment. <coughs> just catch your breath for a lap and then have a crack within the last few. And that's exactly what Will Marshall's doing as they head up to the top part of the race circuit. Coming back around onto the start finish straight. There's Reading, your race leader. The real battle that we're trying to keep an eye on is the battle for second and third. With Houston and Marshall there. Nose to tail as they go down into turn number one with two laps left remaining. Houston doing a good job. But will Marshall mount a last minute challenge here? It's been a great day of racing right throughout all of our categories. I don't think there's one that hasn't been super entertaining, to be quite honest. And it's quite fitting that we've been able to bring those categories to you through our live stream. There's Redding. He'll come around to get the last lap board. We've still got the battle going on for second, though. To the line they come. Redding goes through. That's a gap that he's got over Sam Houston. I think Houston might have the measure of your man in third position, Will Marshall, after all of that. That'd be a very well-earned podium. It's been a while since he's seen a trophy, Will Marshall. So to be sitting in third, that'll be a just dessert. He's got to pull something big. Plum's held out. Nelson there in fourth spot. Two drivers with a huge amount of experience in this sport. And definitely now... It would seem like Houston's holding on as Redding's coming down to the last couple of corners and Redding is about to get the chequered flag. So your race leader becomes your race winner and Brent Redding gets it done. Sam Houston withstands the pressure and gets home in second. Will Marshall gets the second straight podium for JGM. Then it is Brock Plum over Nelson. Then Riley Lagarde. 
Chris Williams, then it's nine, it followed by Gilliam, then Brown, Fox, Marita, McNaught, and Farkas Josh Dag, the only non finisher in that one. Coming up soon will be KA3 Junior Light for their final, the biggest field that we've got in this one. There's four finals left to go tonight here at our tag restricted titles at Ipswich. So our biggest field here, KA3 Junior Light, under lights of course here tonight. Jai Flynn, God he's been fast today, the number 10, he'll start on the pole. Isaac McNeil, he's been very good as well, another one of the Empire drivers, can he make it 2 out of 2 for Empire and a 71 out of P2. Next row is the grid, Tyson McGill. He'll be pushing on in the 36. He's got Henry Stratford. He's aiming to claim a podium out of four. Annabelle Kennedy in the 16 from five with Charlotte Page. Having the girls stood up here tonight. Levi Dursell in the 11 has been involved in a bit of everything. Jackie Denson in the 97 out of eight. Row five is Seb Bennett and Seb Simonelli. So it's a on on row number five. Basilio McCarley just hasn't pushed his way forward how he would have liked Throughout the course of this one, he'll start 11th in the 27, and Brock Helm from 12th. Lana Flack from 13th with Charlie Cronin in the 79 alongside her. Row ace Chad Risman in the 5, and Jack Chusick in the 39. Row number 9 is Jackson DeWong, the 43, and Luke Nolan out of Townsville in the 94. Then it's Johnny Wright, Johnny the Jet, out of P19 in the 30, and Poppy Rule, the 19. Chloe Lane in the 21, Toman Hoskin, then it's Quade Powers, me, Yarwood, Ryan Reed. Ryan, a bit off the pace this weekend compared to where he was at the last event. Xavier Knight, Ashton Smith, Matt Clark, Dixon, Sito, Downs, Soward, Stratford, Saragi, Leo, Tender and McLaughlin. <clears throat> Ten on the board. We are set for a start down the back straight away. 40 carts or 39 carts on track for this one. Keep an eye down on turn number one. We'll catch all the action for you. From Calling All Sport Brisbane, bringing you the action live and exclusive here tonight. 
trust you're having a great night at home if you're watching us tuning in, trying to stay dry. Set for a start. We're away. Down to turn one they go. They all barrel into turn one. Oh, there's a couple that have come together, as you can see there. One gets spat out to the left-hand side. But the rest of them continue on. And it's frantic out there to get things underway. So your race leader is Flynn. McNeil on his tail, up the inside goes Isaac. Isaac been getting some tutelage in the open wheel side of things from Josh Hunt and Chris Papadopoulos as he's gone to his Formula 4 racing this year as part of the Formula Open Series and now he takes over the race lead in this one. He's got that slight gap over the number 10 of Flynn. He wants to try and pull away but Annabelle Kennedy, she wants to join the party as well. The Saturday night racing party down into turn number one. It's the girls in three and four. Look at Kennedy go in third. The number 16 she is punching on Deluxe and she is right on the tail of Flynn. He wants to try and go with Mick Neil, but he's also got to be quite cautious of Kennedy. Then Charlotte Page, she's in fourth. She will certainly push on to try and collect another podium win here. Sebastian Bennett right behind her. Then it's to sell in six. Followed by Simonelli, Jensen, Helm, Cronin rounding out your ten. Shuzik, he's a little bit off the pace this weekend. He's down in 11th spot. Down the back straight away they go. There's a big move coming back. Further back in that order. But look at Annabelle Kennedy. She's a form driver at the moment. On the tail of Jai Flynn, if you don't mind. Down to turn number one. She's actually pushing Jai Flynn forward to try and get onto the tail of your race leader McNeil Bennett, cricket lap of the race gets past Page at turn number one for fourth spot Annabelle Kennedy is the one that's dictating the story of this race at the moment <clears throat> she's right in the back of the CXR number 10, trying to close into the rear of the number 71 of Isaac McNeil Annabelle in the energy cart there. It's a terrific battle. KA3 Junior never disappoints. So Bennett with pace, he's in fourth. We're keeping an eye on our top three because that is the key battle on track at the moment. A capacity grid of these youngsters just going absolutely bunter out there at the moment. <clears throat> In second, he does the quickest lap of the race. Takes about half a second, half a tenth, I should say, out of Isaac McNeil up the front. This is a tenth little battle here. We're three laps into our ten. <laughs> Kennedy did a 50.337. So she was exactly a tenth of a second slower than McNeil up the front in that one. So McNeil's got to try and assert his authority on this. He's got to the lead. Can he pull away here? Flynn is just going to throw everything at it. He can guarantee that. He is not shy when it comes to having a hardcore race out there is Jai Flynn. And he has closed up. He took a tenth of a second, nearly a tenth of a second out of McNeil that time. It's down to point two four two, down through turn number one. Look at this. Flynn is rising. He's rising as we come to the halfway point. Young Isaac, he's always towards the front here. This is where he's got to put all of the race craft. He does so much racing in so many different tracks around the country, usually doing double duty. He's done a lot of racing overseas as Isaac McNeil as well. This is where he's got to start to apply it and execute when he's in the race lead. Where does he put the cart? How does he keep Flynn behind him? More importantly, how are they both going to stop Annabelle Kennedy? She is having the best race that I've seen her have in this one as they come across the start finish line. Nose to tail, the Cali Course team down on the fence. Key and Fothergill, the team principal down there. He is absolutely cheering her on. He will have that thing dialed in perfectly, which he has got dialed in perfectly. Have a look at it, a 50.000 that time for Kennedy. Indeed, Isaac McDill did a 50.49.988 to be the quickest out there. Flynn, a 49.996.
So two one thousandths of a second between those two as they go up through Autobahn corner. There's nothing in it. Kennedy's rising. Bennett's still in fourth spot. He's pulled well clear of Page. has got Simonelli closing in. But we have got this awesome battle. Flint goes for it. Flint goes to the lead in the 10. So we've got a new race leader, the CXR, number 10 of Jai Flynn. Then he went defensive straight away. That's compromised him. Oh, boy, look at this down to turn number one. This race in three, this is extraordinary. We're at the halfway point. We're past it, in fact. So Flynn leads away. McNeil, he was the leader. He's now the challenger rather than one being challenged. But look at Annabelle Kennedy. She hasn't shown her hand just yet. She has just been the quiet achiever. She's been the one that's been dictating what's going on in front of her, in fact, by just pushing them on in the Cali Course energy cart. Up towards the right-hander. McNeil doesn't go for a move there. Onto the back stretch. Who goes for it at the hairpin this time? Will McNeil fight back? He pulls out of the slipstream. Flynn lets him go through there. So McNeil reassumes the lead. He gets a bit of advantage to Isaac McNeil in the 71. He's got the blue plate. He's the current state champion. Three laps to go. Oh, Kennedy went for a move at the kink. Didn't pull it off. But watch out for Sebastian Bennett. He's just done the quickest lap of the race in fourth. He is now in screenshot as well as they work their way through. Sebastian Bennett using every piece of the LeConte tyres that he's got available to him or left to him. And that KA100 motor is absolutely screaming, manufactured by Iami. Oh, McNeil has got the biggest gap that he has had. Has, got, has Flynn got anything left? We are working lap number eight here. Down the back straight away. Kennedy hasn't shown a hand yet. Will she have a look? Yes. Kennedy goes to second. Big move there. She had to pull it up very, very tightly to avoid getting into the back of McNeil. So it's Empire versus Calicorse now. Across the start finish line. Two laps left remaining. McNeil's gap 0.465. So Annabelle Kennedy, now she's got herself into second. Can she do anything with a lap and three quarters left to go? Flynn's under attack from Bennett. In fact, he's more than under attack. While I was looking at the screen getting the times, Bennett's gone to third. So what has Annabelle Kennedy got? Well, can McNeil hold on here? McNeil, he did. He survived the pressure. He went back to second, saw what the opposition was doing, then went, I am going straight back to the lead and I'm going to lead from the front. And that's exactly what he's doing as they go down the back straight away. Last lap board on display. This is what it all comes down to. One lap to go. Can Kennedy get through and get the win? Or will McNeil hold on? It's got to be a big one. What's the gap? 0.442. Bennett gets a pass and the quickest lap of the race to get himself up onto the podium. Can you believe it? So through this flip-flop area they go. I think McNeil's got enough here. Unless Kennedy can pull something absolutely huge. But what about Bennett? Will he have a crack for second? There's only a few more corners, a few more opportunities. McNeil's got a huge lead by comparison in terms of the passing opportunities available to Annabelle Kennedy. But what a tremendous drive it's been. They're on to the back straight away. McNeil's got this one from here, unless he makes a mistake. Down the back stretch they go. Checkered flag being unfurled. What a drive. How well he structured that one. Isaac McNeil comes out of the final corner and he will appreciate that. He gets the wind under Isaac McNeil. Kennedy home in second. Bennett home in third. Fourth spot was Flynn. He was a leader at some stage. Then Page making it two goals inside the top five. Then it was Simonelli, Jensen, Dussel, Rissman, Brasilio, McCarley, Shuzik, then Reed, Helm, then Nolan up into 14th. Right. Then Duong, Powers, Hoskin. Then through it was Saragi Smith, Knight, then Flack, following through with Sito. In fact, Sito got in front of Flack, then Dixon Downs, Clark, McLaughlin, and Leo was soured. But what a drive from McNeil. He handled the pressure quite well. Didn't get flustered, got back through and got the win. Annabelle Kennedy, the race weekend of her career to come home in second spot. Oh, and gets a sneaky fastest lap of the race on the last lap, if you don't mind as well. Then Bennett, Flynn and Page. What a great race that was in KA3 Junior Light. Tag Light coming up next. We're going to take a break.
out on track for the tag light final. Internal judicial cams down there saw all of the machinations happening before they went out on track. Mike Preston down there with his son Jack. He'll start on the pole. Mika, John Lamazuria with Mika. He'll start at a P3. Jackie Wells will be on the outside front row in the 26. As I said, Lamazuria, the Brill Light, 29 out of 3. Ryan Allman, he's been fast in the 98 out of 4. Row number 3, it's Trent Newton, a 36 and Geordie Slater. Out of 7, it's a 25 of Bailey Sagadak. And a good evening to the Brains and the good looks of the IKD operation. Sylvia Black, who's tuning in from Sydney, no doubt, with wine in hand and cheese and bickies in front. Josh Frew out of P8 in the 22. Troy Losco out of 9 in the 12. Out of 10, it is Bryce Lane in the 45 with Jack Stimson, the 71, and the 33 of William Gallagher, the next row of the grid. Then it's Jet Kabelka, Jack Goodman, followed by Fraser Blight, Lachlan Cowie, Rowan McConnell, Geordie Costa, and Braden Vincent. Preston and Wells bring them around. Lemissouria, Ullman, row number two. We're green. Down at turn number one, they go. It's nice and tight through there. Looks like it was Preston that got the best of it in the FA card. Indeed it was. Wells goes with him. Then Ullman into third. The green and black machine. They work their way through. Lemissouria slotted himself into fourth spot. In the opening lap of our 10 on the board. <clears throat> Very nice and tightly run at the moment. Fifth place, that'll be Geordie Slater, I think. As they work their way up toward the Autobahn corner for the first time. Preston going defensive already in this one. Wells decides to take advantage of it. Preston having none of it. Oh, he gets straight into the side of him. Does Jack Preston go straight into the side of Wells there? Wasn't uh, quite happy with Wells deciding to go for the race lead and uh, tied him about it in fairly aggressive circumstances. Ullman leading the way. Michele Missouri in second. Then Slater, Lane, Frew, Newton, Gallagher, Sagadak. Dennis Losco and Stimson rounding out your top 10. Your leader now is Ryan Ullman. He inherited that between the collision of the top two through the bottom part of the race circuit. <coughs> Le Missouria in second position. What can he do? He's had a torrid start to his 2024 season as Mika Le Missouria. Through the left hander they go. In third spot there is Geordie Slater. He's been a quiet achiever throughout the day, Geordie Slater. He's just worked up to it, worked up to it, worked up to it. Now he's inside the top three, working their way through. They've got a slight gap then from fourth. I think that is back to Josh Frew. Here's the charge of the light brigade going on for fifth placing. That is Josh Frew holding down the fifth spot. They're banked up right behind him as they head down toward the video pro corner and the cork in the bottle had been popped right through there and he goes back a couple of spots as Ullman leads away down the back stretch on lap number three here it's a handful of races to go to complete our night's racing the tag restricted categories to come our feature races over 12 laps there is your leader Ryan Ullman the numbered 98 machine he comes across the line Le Missouri is still in second half, a second behind your race leader Slater. He's in third. Woman's opened up the gap here a little bit. Then in fourth spot is Bryce Lane. He's dropped off the back of this group. In fifth placing is Gallagher now in front of Newton. Frews dropped back to eighth to seventh spot. Troy Losco trying to make his way forward in the number 12 Ricardo cart. Speaking of Michael Patrizzi earlier on in the week and the single drive category is very much a focus for the Patrizzi course outfit in 2024. And certainly Mikola Missouri are doing a terrific job in second spot at the moment. As we referenced earlier, Ian Eichmann's the WSK Supermasters champion in OK will be making his way to Australia, the Belgian, for the next round of the SP Tools Championships, Paka Panyol. That actually raced in the Indianapolis 500 back in 2009. Uh, sorry, 1999, I should say. 
Back in the Indy Racing League days. Iron Allman now leading by six tenths of a second. Lemazuri are trying to close in. It was a 48 0 for Allman the last time by. A 48 1 for Lemazuri. Slater in third, then Lane, Gallagher, Newton, Frew. Roscoe in ninth is Kabelka and Lockie Cowie rounding out your top ten. So all pretty even Stevens out there at the moment. A bit going on further back in the pack. As you see them roll on through at the end of lap number five to complete the half race distance. Lemazuria, he's got to the halfway point. He's picked up the pace a bit here. He's just done a 47.880. That plays a 47.969 for Ullman. The gap is now 0.542. So Ullman, the man on your screen in the yellow, the green and black, I should say, number 98. He leads away. Lemazuria, he's starting to reel him in the youngster. Down the back straight away. Michele Lemazuria, 15 years of age he is. Look at this. You can see the visual of how much Le Missouri has closed in. The captain, Trent Mercer, and the team down there will have that dialed in for the late race run for Mika. He goes faster again. You don't need me to tell you that. He's right on the tail of your race leader here. He's got the Rock Vortex engine strapped on board has Mika Lemazuria chasing down Ryan Ullman through the left hander they go onto the back straight away can he use the power down the back straight away he's right over the wheel the little fella he's a massive cricket fan is Mika Lemazuria played a bit of plays a bit of cricket used to do a bit of motocross but worked out that broken arms weren't all that fun that's his word not mine that's why they decided to go kart racing. 0.283, the gap from Ullman back to Le Missouria. They've pulled well clear of Geordie Slater in a comfortable third spot now. He's 1.6 in front of Bryce Lane, who sits in fourth. This is the main battle, and it's for the race lead as we are on lap number eight here. <clears throat> Out of the video pro corner and up to Autobahn. Ullman driving a wheel perfect race out there in the number 98. He's worrying about himself and that's all he can do at this stage of proceedings. Down through the hairpin. Le Missouri, it's up to him to try and make the battle. We'll see what Geordie Slade has done this lap. Le Missouri goes faster than anyone. A 47.653. Only... Half a tenth out of the lead that Ullman holds, though. Half a tenth is still better than nothing, however. <clears throat> They're going at it. We're on lap number nine of our ten. So Le Missouri has got to set it up, but Ullman's driving a perfect race out there at the moment. He's just done it from when that problem afflicted Preston. And Wells at the end of lap number one. He's just got to the lead and held on to it. He, of course, is the leader. It is up to the young man in second spot to pull the move if he wants to win the race. We are on the last lap. So this is a money shot here. Is it going to be Ullman or is it Lemazuria? Who is going to hold on? Oh, Lemazuria! Straight across the grass. He just sent it through there. You get the feeling. I don't think he made a mistake. That was absolutely deliberate to try and displace Ryan Allman. But it didn't work because he's had to drop back to second. It cost him some momentum. And Allman holds on. But they're onto the back straight away for the final time. Lemazuria bouncing in the cart to try and get a move on Allman. But Allman, too smart, too strong. Out of the final set of turns, onto the front straight away. Check it flag at the ready. And a great drive. A brilliant effort there from Iron Ullman to pull that one off. Six tenths of a second win over Michael Amazuria. Slater, he completes the podium, followed by Lane. Then it's Newton, followed by Gallagher. And then it was Losco, then Frew, Sagadak, Kabelka, home in 10th spot, Blyton, then Wells. He recovers for 12th, wondering what may have been after an incident that 
certainly he didn't ask to be involved in. Stimson, then McConnell, then it's Cowie and Vincent rounding out your finishes. But Ryan Ullman, a pressure drive. He held it all together and got the win in the end. So that was Tag Light. We're going to take a break. Our tag restricted feature categories up next to round off our night. And we're back for Tag Restricted Light. Just had another note there. Res remiss of me not to wish the main man behind the IKD Race Department operation in John Target a happy birthday today. So happy birthday, JT. A P1 trophy for Bailey in open performance. So that's not a bad day out. You've probably got Jack Black to blame for that one. He's not here, so you'll have to chase him down later. Nathaniel Harrison, he'll line up on the pole in this tag-restricted light final. Robbie Mortensen, the 17. Has he dialed in anything into this machine between races? Jack Munro, the 18 out of three. Derek Jones in the two out of four. Row number three, it's Cody Scott, the three. And Billy James Whitaker in the 24. Row number four is Jack Chazowski and Caleb Mullins in the nine. Then it's Mark Lees, Emily Cowell, the 38. Row six is a 54 of DeSalle and Williams. Max Aquasanta, the 77. Then it's Jack Furlong, O'Reilly, Vandenbroek. Then Zimmerman, O'Reilly, Lanahan. Then Duncan, Zimmerman, Beaumont Walsh. Briggs, Lane, McDonald, McNeil, Musson, Yaden, Anderson, Tully and Wheeler. We're green in our second last race of the night. Down to turn number one, they charge. 12 on the board. And through there they go. Gee, it was nice and tight, but they're all through okay. Oh, one gets shuffled back in the order, but doesn't cause any problem. Through the flip-flop they go. Are they all cool through there? Yes, they are. <coughs> so working their way down to Video Pro here. Who's got the best of the start out there? That's Mortensen, is it? No, in fact, it is the 70 of Harrison with Mortensen slotting himself into second position as they go down the back straight away. Munro is there in third in the 18. Well, this could be turned into a fairly juicy fight. Mortensen had speed at the beginning of the previous heat race, but dropped off towards the end. So we'll see what he's got here. Scott's got himself up to fourth spot, and he's well and truly in this conversation. <clears throat> Mortensen going defensive on Munro already. Chazowski up to fifth in front of Jones. Then Mullins in seventh. Billy James Whitaker, Thomas Williams and Mark Lees rounding out your top ten. Working their way through the right-hander. Nathaniel Harrison wanting to already starting to build a gap. Munro, he just wants to try and get through on Mortensen to keep with the 70 up the front. Now he goes for a move. It's early for the 18 of Munro to go, but he's got it. So now he wants to try and close that gap. The tag restricted category is using 125cc water-cooled engines. A variety of them are four or five. I think we're up to in Australia now. An extensive parody session is undertaken by Karting Australia to work out how each one performs with a control driver. <clears throat> and then they're weighted accordingly to make sure that all of them show parity. Generally, it's pretty good. Then we throw a restrictor on it to reduce the power a bit. Certainly costs you a bit of speed compared to what we saw in the open category just previously the open tag category I should say it's a previous race out there so Harrison's lead it was just over half a second coming around to end lap number three Munro pushing on here 
to close that gap down. Chazowski up to fourth now. So he's got through on Scott. Further back, Williams in the 35 past Mullins. <clears throat> oh, that was a big move through turn number one. It was further back in the pack. I didn't pick up the numbers or the positions. All I saw was just a big downtown serve in at turn number one. All continue on. <clears throat> We're on lap number four. That'll bring us to one third race distance. Harrison did the quickest lap of the race the last time through. It was a 50.02, a 50.09 for Munro. So nothing in it. So we talk about this parody. Jim Munro's on a good lap here. He's closed the gap. It was 0.668. Let's see what it is this time. It's down to 0.3. So he's taken out half the lead. Chislowski's caught right up on the back of Mortensen as well. So it's on for the back end of the podium in at this one. Chislowski all over the back of Mortensen like a cheap suit at the moment. Looks like Harrison's responded. He must have felt the pressure coming from Jack Munro. Just trying to maintain his race lead as he works lap number five. Chislowski and Mortensen are about to come into view. Big move coming at the hairpin. Did it pay off? We'll pick that up as they come around. <clears throat> there goes your two leaders. Chislowski did get past Mortensen. And that's brought Katie Scott in fifth back into calculation for the podium. So Scott in fifth placing. Munro closed a bit more on Harrison, but it was only a few hundredths of a second. It's down to 0.314. So Munro looks closer visually this time down the back straightaway. Can he get another win for the CXR team here? Yeah. She's asking thirds pull clear of Mortens, and then there's a battle in four or five carts behind them starting to close up. <clears throat> Williams has got himself into six spot past Derek Jones. The gap at the front is 0.216 from Harrison to Munro. That's our key battle as we are at the halfway point. It's Harrison, Munro, followed by Chislowski, Mortensen, Scott, then Williams, Jones, Mullins, Lees and Decel, Zimmerman, Furlonger, then Briggs, Aquasana, Vanderbroek, Calwell, Lanahan, Yaden, O'Reilly and Zimmerman, your top 20. Now, Jack Munro starting to wind it up behind Harrison. Harrison's been pretty well supreme throughout the course of the day. Here comes young Munro. He's starting to mount his challenge here, the end of lap number seven. He's got time here, he's got pace. He's into the 49s again. Harrison, he was slow that lap, a 50.1, playing a 49.9. So Harrison, feeling the pressure out there with young Munro. Starting to close on in. So we go up to the Autobahn corner at the top of the race circuit. This is where you want to get a good exit if you're Jack Munro and get yourself into that slipstream, which he's in right now. Harrison taking a middle to inside line. Munro with the white wheels on the number 18 to setting him up. <clears throat> Doesn't want to go for the rash move at turn one. Wants to try and open himself up. Or position himself, I should say, to try and have a go at one of the more traditional breaking points. But Harrison will be awake to it. He's been around a long time. There's Nathaniel Harrison. He knows his way around the circuit. He knows a lot of the tricks and knows what Jack Munro can do. Got his skates on there, did Harrison, as they come out of the top turn. Down the back straight they go. This will be the end of lap number nine. There'll be three to go when they come to the line. Harrison going defensive again.
such is the pace that our top two have got. They're 1.4 seconds in front of Jake Chislowski. 74 one thousandths of a second with three laps to go was a gap. That's nothing. You couldn't put a cigarette paper between Nathaniel Harrison and Jack Munro with that gap. It's on for the race lead here. The majority of our categories tonight have been on for the race lead. <clears throat> Munro goes tight onto the back stretch. Lap starting to wind down. This will be the end of lap number 10. Harrison knows he's there, but Munro just fainting, just showing the nose. No doubt under the tutelage of the Matthews family. They've taught them many of their tricks of the book. But watch out for third. You can see the white helmet. That's Jake Chislowski. He was seven tenths of a second quicker than our top two. This is what's going on here. They're going defensive. Harrison and Munro, they're pa playing the Ducks and Drakes. But what's happened is that Chislowski was 1.6 seconds behind them. He is now under 0.8 of a second. When they come around the next time, it will be the last lap board. They're on lap number 11 now. So Munro's running out of time. Chislowski, he's closing in. Harrison, whatever he's going defensive and Munro can't open the door. Chislowski is just chip, 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 chipping away. And now they're on the last lap. So, down to turn one. Nothing doing at this stage, but let's go to the camera. Munro trying to open the door here as they go through the middle part of the race circuit. The race is on for the lead as they go up to the top part. There's Harrison. Munro, it's now or never for him. He's on the last lap. Chislowski is going to pickpocket him if they're not careful. Munro, will he have a look here? Not close enough. Watch the run like onto the back straight away. Oh, Chislowski's got pace. Chislowski in third's got pace. Munro goes deep. Tries to get a switch back. Not able to do it just there. But it's going to be out of the final turn and onto the front straight away. Harrison holding on. What a great race. What a great drive that was for Nathaniel Harrison. He was under the pump, but held on to it and got the win by 0.137 over Munro. Munro just didn't have enough to throw the nose up the inside of Harrison. Chislowski didn't he close in toward the end there. Morton's at home in fourth. Then Scott, Jones, Williams, Mullins and Dussel. Zimmerman, Lee, Zacrosana. Briggs, Furlonger, then Vanderbroek, Lenahan, Yaden, O'Reilly, Zimmerman, Duncan, Beaumont, Walsh. Then it was Lane. Following them through was Musson, McDonald and McNeil. We've got one to go here tonight. Tag restricted, Masters over 12 laps. We're going to take a break and be back with that one. So the last race of the night, thank you for staying with us right throughout the day. I trust that you've enjoyed all of the live stream action that the Ipswich Kart Club has been able to bring to you free through the YouTube channel. And of course, thanks to the team at speedcafe.com for running it as well. Gavin Soward will line up on the poll. The question is, has anybody got an answer for the number 28 here tonight? 
Alan Mays. Has he got the answer in the six? What have they done between races? Scott Gray, the 74, off row two with Michael Robinson. The 23, Anthony Murphy and at Ben Spalding, row three. Darcy and Bolton, row four. Brogan and Godfrey, row five. Robinson and Ferguson, then Davison Board. Campbell, Broughton, Hisco. Then it's Johns, Rab Jones, Garrity, Fletcher, Linus Brown and Field. Then it's Briggs, Lemon, Meyer and Donnelly. Good field. Soward's been supreme today. 12 on the board to bring it home at our tag-restricted Masters. The Masters are on track. It's been our tag-restricted titles. Every category has been fascinating throughout the course of the day. Some terrific racing. We trust you've enjoyed it, whether you're here with us at the track or tuning in live. Set for a start, Soward and Mays. Who's going to get the jump? Can Mays jump Soward on the way into turn number one? Looking for the lights out on the gantry here. Racing. Pretty even and slow start down at turn number one. Mays has thrown it up the inside and Mays takes the lead into turn one. So Soward drops back to second. They come out of there. Mays did exactly what he had to do and that was to shut turn number one off for Soward to assume the lead in this one. Gray's got himself into third placing. Through video pro corner they charge. <clears throat> For the first time today, the pressure is on Gavin Soward. He's got himself into second position, but it's Alan Mays who leads away. And geez, Soward's under attack for second spot now at the end of the back straightaway. <clears throat> to the line they come. Drill off lap number one, it's May Soward, Gray, followed by Murphy, Darcy, Dennis Spalding, Robinson, Bolton, Robinson, Godfrey, Davison, Brogan, Board, Campbell, and Hisco rounding out your top 15. Gray having a quick look at the tennis ball coloured 28 helmet of Soward as we work lap number two here of our 12. It's all pretty even between our top 10 out there at the moment. <coughs> Mays had two tenths over Gav at the end of the first lap. Corsair's won all the heats, but this is the one that matters. This is where the championship points are for the club championship. Darcy moving into fourth spot. Darcy getting through on Murphy for that fourth placing. There's a fair gap from Gray back to Darcy between third and fourth. Darcy, sorry, Gray keeping Soward very honest there as they go up to the Autobahn corner. Down the back stretch, they run again. So we're just sitting there, keeping an eye on Alan Mays in front of him, just working out what's going on. I don't think Sal would be too perturbed at the moment by the fact that he is sitting in second spot. He'll just be monitoring what's happening. Just trying to keep the 74 behind him. In fact, Gray, he doesn't want to worry about sitting in third spot. He wants to get on with it. He just set fastest lap of the race at 51. 995. He took three tenths out of Soward and four tenths out of Alan Mays up the front. So Gray, he's keen to get on with it as we're working lap number four. <clears throat> So Mays really can't get away from Soward here. It's like he's on a piece of elastic out there. With the third piece of elastic being Scott Gray back there in third position. There's lap number four in the books. Your fourth place man is still Mark Darcy. Anthony Murphy under attack from Spalding in sixth place. And Michael Robinson Bolton, Mark Robinson in ninth spot. 
Chris Board on the charge in 11th spot now. Made up a place and just does a 51.893. Well, everyone's playing Ducks and Drakes up the front. Chris Board is just setting up some purple lights on our timing screen here. So, it's been soured all day, but Alan Mays, he's decided he went for it up the inside at turn one. He's leading the way. He's opened up a small gap on this being our fifth lap. Gray still can't do anything about soured for the time being. Gavin's experienced. He knows what's going on. He'll just keep an eye on his surrounds. He knows exactly where they are. He's had their measure all day. There's nothing to say that he won't have their measure tonight as Scott Gray reassumes the fastest lap of the race mantle. It's a longer race, 12 laps. Fascinating race, in fact, for the older drivers. Masters meaning they are over, I think it's 35 these days, or it could be 32. I'll go with 35 and leave it at that. Someone will correct me, no doubt. It's been great to have so many people travel to be with us. We've got drivers from Victoria, New South Wales, from way up north here in Queensland. Oh, big move there. There goes Gray. So Gray to second. So the move came. So Gray had been telegraphing that one for a couple of laps. It presented itself and he took it. So he moves up to P2 at the halfway point. At the halfway, the new order is Mays, Gray, Sauer, Darcy, Murphy, Dennis Spalding, Robinson, the man on the move is Chris Board, up to P8. And a new quickest lap for the 43 DR cart. Bolton in ninth and Robinson in 10th spot. Then it's Godfrey, Hisco, Rap Jones, Davison and Broughton your top 15. So as we are at the halfway point, Gray made one of the biggest moves that we've seen through the course of this race. Can he now close that gap to Alan Mays? We know that of our top three, Gray is the one that has had the pace. <clears throat> Through the right hander they go. Gray has certainly closed that gap. So now it's just holding on to the coattails of the crash bar as it is. Of Gray. Another new fastest lap for him. Because three tenths of a second quicker than Mays, with the gap being, guess what? Three tenths of a second. We're on lap number eight now. Alan Mays, all he sees is the night sky of Willowbank. We thank all of our track sponsors and industry sponsors for being with us here yet again throughout season 2024. Without your support, we cannot continue to bring you this incredible club racing. It's a club that gets more entries than any other club in Australian karting here at Ipswich. Down the back stretch they go. Oh, do you look at Gray here? Mays didn't necessarily get through the hairpin in the best way. Gray went deep, probably a bit too deep, but it's on again because Sauer's on his tail. Sauer does a personal best, so too Mays up the front. This one's not over and done with yet, folks. We are on lap number nine. <coughs> Three and a half left to go. Gray's picked up the pace again. And as we saw in our last race, catching's one thing, passing's yet another. Certainly in these conditions, at this stage of the night. It's been a long, long day. First card on track at 8 o'clock this morning. Down the back stretch. Mays down over the steering wheel. Gray goes deep. He loves going deep there under brakes. That's where he tries to close the ground. <clears throat> Across the line, three to go now. They are absolutely nose to tail for the race lead and the race win. G. Gray's put together a nice race. Sitting there in third, then picked off Soward. Soward will be absolutely filthy. He's been the class of the field all day. Mays led the way. So Gray is the one. He's just playing the professor game. The strategy that he's put forth, oh, is there a problem for Sauer? He lost all sorts of ground there, but he'd just get a bad run. He's just disappeared off the back of this top two. I think he got a bad run out of the RHQ corner. Now, look at this two. Down the back stretch they go. Mays over the steering wheel. Gray, right in behind him. He's not going to go for a move just yet. When he comes to the line, there's two to go. 
Gray will know that he has got the speed. There'll be the crew down on the fence indicating to him exactly what's going on. You can see the field coming on through. <coughs> Chris Board's got himself up into the top five. That's been a storming drive for Chris, as you can see on a totem on the left-hand side. DR cart sort of had a bit of an up and down day as Chris Board, but they've certainly got a right for the final. Now we start to get into the championship minutes. In this case, the championship minutes. So go down the back stretch. I tell you what, Alan Mays, he stretched the legs here. Oh, geez, I tell you, Scott Gray, didn't he go deep there? They'll come to the line. There'll be only one to go. So just over a kilometre remaining. I think that Alan Mays might have this one. He's just done his personal best and opened a gap to four tenths. He's played an absolute blinder here. As Alan Mays, Gray was starting to throw the challenge, but Mays has gone, no, nah, nah, you don't. But Gray, he hasn't given up. He's going to throw everything at him. They've got a lapper in front of them. I'm not sure they're going to catch him before the end of the lap, so I don't think it's going to be a problem of being a master. Certainly you think that there would be a bit of intelligence going behind the driving here. Down the back stretch for the final time. Gray's going to have to pull a big one on the hairpin. He's right in the back there. They get through on the lapper. Gray's still there. Through the second to last corner. Onto the front straight away. And it is going to be Alan Mays who gets it done by the narrowest of margins. 71 one thousandths of a second. That was well put together there by Scott Gray. Gavin Sow at home in third spot. Then it was Board. He got up to fourth in the end there in front of Darcy. Ben Spaulding, Anthony Murphy, Michael Robinson, Jeff Bolton, Aaron Rapp Jones, and Mark Robinson. Scott Hisco, Evan Broughton, home in 13th spot. Then 14th position is Davison. Then it's Adrian Ferguson. Brogan home in 16th spot. Then Garrity. Then it's Johns. Next one through will be Fletcher, followed by Field, Brown, then Briggs, Matt Meyer, and Tim Lemon. Well, that completes our on-track component here for tonight. On behalf of the Ipswich Kart Club, we'd like to thank all of our volunteer officials who travelled to be with us throughout today and have given up their time, our competitors and supporters who are here with us, and thank you to the team of Calling All Sports Brisbane for putting together our live stream that has gone out through Australia and indeed the world. As I said, that completes our on-track component. My name is Matt Payne. We will have our presentations coming up. Until then, safe travels home. Farewell and good night.